right now. Oh my god, everyone's here, we're alive! Oh Hello. fuck, I'm not prepared, no! Hello chat, <laughs> we're not prepared. Like, I like the idea that we invited them on a day before, and then they all get here and they're like, I have nothing to say, I, I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> What's an inhibitor chip? Well, it's the you put it in inhibitor dip, and then you eat it. It's delicious. Alright, I suppose now that we're live, I can send the invite link for StreamYard and pin it to the chat. Yes, so, um, hello chat. Before before we invite uh, anyone on, uh, we thought it'd be good to lay out like a little, a few like nice groundwork, groundwork? Ground rules, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I have the ground rules for what's going to happen here today. So, with your permission, Chief, I would like to do that. Yeah, go for <clears> it. <throat> so, the first thing is just like, don't spam the chats if you want to get on, um, whether that's here or in StreamYard, right? Just like, just everyone be chill and we'll we'll pick out people um who who want to talk uh, as and when we can get to them right there's no rush uh second thing is like obviously like just don't be rude when you're on stream if we think you're being like hostile or or you know aggressive um or like constantly talking over us or anything like that like we're just gonna like or something yeah we're gonna politely move you on like th th no disrespect but like we have a limited amount of time and there are people who want to actually talk um and we'd like mm. to get to them and actually address these points so rudeness is just gonna get in the way of that um yeah in the same kind of vein, we're going to give everyone who comes on like roughly 20 minutes each to, to say what they want to say. Like, we're not going to be like super strict with that. Strict, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you've got, if you've got like, if you're in the middle of a role about something really interesting and we think it's worth pursuing, we'll give you more time. But in general, just like try and keep it concise if you can. Uh, and, then, and yes, Space Whale, you do have to disagree to be in the call. Um, we, yes. Again, we, we only have a certain amount of time. So, like, if you just want to shoot the shit with us, like, sorry, we're, that's not what the stream is. Um, you have yeah. to disagree and like present arguments for why you disagree. Yeah, and then like the final point is like, yeah, don't if you're going to come on, uh, you have to bring something new to the discussion, right? Don't just repeat what's been said before. Like either have new new arguments, or if you think that someone made a bad, you like know, made a point but made it badly, and you think you can do it better, come on and and do that. Or if you think that one of our rebuttals didn't work but was went unaddressed, you know, address that. But basically, just bring something new to the discussion because, again, there's only a limited amount of time and we want to address these as thoroughly as we can. So if you start repeating stuff we've already satisfactorily answered, we're going to politely move you on. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, so that's the rules. Well, have, have you already... Be... Nice. So I, don't, I don't know if you already said this, but, like, um, we are... We, in order to try to keep things as um, organized as possible, like, if you come on and you're presenting an argument, you have to stick to that argument until it's, you know, reached this natural conclusion. Like, you can't jump around to uh different things like you know um yeah unless it's related unless it's related obviously but like if it's just something else completely that you want to go over but we haven't finished talking about the thing that you started like bringing up then you know because again you only have a certain amount of time we're, we're only going to give you around 20 minutes ish to uh lay out your discussion so um you know we want to yeah. make sure that this is as, as efficient and organized as possible um you kind of, you, Jolly, you kind of jumped uh, into the rules immediately. I was going to give a bit of preamble, but basically, like, what we're here for is obviously, if you couldn't tell by the title, is we're going to go over the inhibitor chips. I'm, I'm still very pro inhibitor chip. Jolly is still very pro inhibitor chip. But of course, I released my Clone Wars video a couple days ago, and <laughs> I've received a lot of comments uh, in disagreement with me. So I, I don't expect this stream to be like the final word or anything. Um, but it's the last that I'm going to say on the subject, um, no matter what conclusions uh, any of us end up walking away with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, just because I, James64 in chat, who's like, oh, other comments have already detailed the 65, 66 contingency stuff. Well, they have, yeah, like, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Don't. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I guess I just want to make this clear, right? Like, just because something was mentioned in the comment section on your video, like, doesn't mean that we don't want to address it here. Because part of the reason we're doing this is we don't think the comment sections did a very good job of making those points. And, like, <laughs> Not that, not that that's because those people didn't have necessarily good points to make, but just it's hard to argue thoroughly in the span of a YouTube comment. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. We want you to be able to do that in a debate format. Um, it's just easier this way. You know, like we could go back and forth debating on YouTube all, all the live long day, but it's not going to get us anywhere, I think. Yeah. Um, um, so I love how everyone, everyone we've had join in so far just like hasn't, um like modified their icons in any way so they all just have like the the generic user that's fine you're allowed to do that but like it's it might be a little hard to differentiate um who you know if someone's like trying to skip around the live streams you know what i mean yeah she's a she's an online racist they all look the same to him they just... <laughs> 
I, I remember there was like a way to uh, like have display names on, but I, I don't want to remember how to do that. So like, if you're going to join, which the, the link has been pinned above to uh, jump into the stream yard, um, try to like have some kind of unique uh, signifier of who you are, as opposed to whoever it comes before or after you. Yeah, they don't have to, but it just, it just makes our lives easier. So we'll probably pick people who do have that um, ahead just because it's, it, it makes things easier to differentiate. Well, my idea was I was going to do first come, first serve. So, like, whoever jumps in first. and um... oh, All right, that's fine. Completely undermine what I was saying, Sheep. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. fuck you, Jolly. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> your stream, man. Do, do whatever you yeah. want. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think that's the fairest way we possibly can, um, you know, do this. Um, but with that out of the way, that would bring us to our first... Uh, we got a few people joining in who who are saying device is not connected. So you're, you guys are going to have to figure that out yourselves because I won't be able to add you in. Um, Spider and LOL32. But um, Fox Elite is our first person. So hello. You are you are now hello. on the stream with us, Fox. Hello. Hello. You might have to like uh, change your settings so that your microphone is... Because uh, it might not be registering it. He's left. Well, that was productive. I, well, I'll try again. Hang on. Oh, oh, hello. Are you there? Hey, hey, hello, hi. Hey, we can hear you now. Uh, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, man, I don't want to be a fanboy, man, but hey, Steve, you are intriguing, man. I love your opinions. You are very unique at what you do, man. And I want to say, man, just continue being you. You are, you're an amazing. Uh, yeah, you're an amazing critique, man. I love, uh, I watch a lot of Star Wars. I watch a lot of Star Wars YouTubers. I think when I first had met you or I met, introduced your videos, I had seen Kenobi and I'm like, dude, I am not going to watch a two hour video. And I, I can't believe I watched part one and part two. And your points were, uh, man, they were different, but they made sense. And ever since then, man, I've been subscribed. I fell in love with your, uh, channel and even the live talks that you and Jolly and those, other gentlemen that you have, that's how I found Jolly. Jolly, you are also someone that I very, uh, I always listen to you, man, because of the way you speak and the way you, uh, the way you mean in your sentences. Like, it's very, it's very high IQ, man. So uh, I just want to tell y'all gentlemen, I appreciate y'all letting me in and I appreciate y'all. And please continue to do good work. Jolly, we're waiting on videos, man, from you, but. Yeah, that's, not... that's fair. <laughs> I'm going to, I think what I might do at the end of the stream is explain why i'm also gonna i'm also gonna try and upload like a two little a two minute little video to my own channel to explain where the videos are at because there's they are on the way but there's, there's there's explanations for all that but um yeah it's nice to have you on man thanks for the kind words uh what's your what's yeah. your what's your beef with the chips do you have a do you have an argument to present us with i've uh, i've started up a timer so you have oh, roughly 20 minutes to make your point got got you got you well to be honest man uh uh shiva i had just finished watching clone wars to your video this morning and i really have no I, I really don't have no uh, pros and cons about the chips, man. Uh, right now, I'm watching the Bad Batch as well, so I got to see how that plays out as well. You know that, uh, but other than that, like I have no problem with the chips. Other than you know, I guess Palpatine being a, a s weird smart Sith Lord, but at the same time, I watch I watch what you said about that Fies review arc, and it's just like these motherfuckers were definitely had their head up their ass, man. These Jedi <sighs> were. Um, well, uh, in that case, um, thanks, man. Um, like, thanks very much for coming on, man. But like, uh, as we said before, we're going to try and just keep it to people who, who actually disagree with the chips and have uh, have an argument they want to put to us. Not just not mm. to shut you down or make you feel like we're kicking you like super quick. It's just that, uh, and we appreciate all the kind of words. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the point of the stream is to try and address those things. So uh, we might we might move on then to the next person. That's all right, man. But thanks for thanks for all your kind words. Understood, guys. Y'all gentlemen, keep up the good work. I'm gonna be listening. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for all coming right. on. All right, man. All right. All right then. Uh, I might just for like organization sake, sake I'm uh, kick him from studio. Um, hope he doesn't take offense to that. And <laughs> add Arrowkin. Hello, you are on our stream, and he's muted. <laughs> he's left. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Jalorn. Hello. Hey. Um, hello. So I guess I'll I'll just toss out first of all that uh, I acknowledge my position as being anti-chip is largely emotionally based to the fact that I loved the way that story was told in Battlefront Two, the original Battlefront Two, um, where we actually get to play. I mean, you're playing, you're you're, you're fighting 
you know, but the, the storyline there is, is from the perspective of the clones. And we get wonderful moments like the clones learning that they can deceive the Jedi or the clones feeling shame specifically with Aayla Sakura only. And it really paints a picture that for me was really believable that most of the clones knew they were going to betray the Jedi and didn't care because that's what they were for, you know? And I just loved that as a, as a story. Yeah, I can understand that. Like, uh, I love Battlefront too. Like, I love the um the the, the five hundred first diaries. Like, cause I guess that's what you're referring to, right? The five hundred first yeah. diary stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was that's really great. And Timur Morrison smashed that out of the park. So I I totally get why why you'd have an emotional attachment there. Um. So so I acknowledge that that's largely the reason why I'm anti chip. Um. But at the same time, I have to I have to ask. Um. When we're discussing this, are we talking about uh comparing the stories that exist and which one feels better, or are we comparing the the like maximum potential of what Star Wars could have been because I'll be honest as a Star Wars fan the longer I'm a Star Wars fan the more invested I am in the potential of the story rather than the stories we're actually getting um well in terms of just like potential I I would say that either one has enormous potential um like one of the arguments against the chips has been that like they take away the nuance of the story and we're, I mean we'll we'll get into that more if anyone wants to present that argument, but I just fundamentally don't agree with that. And, um, and, and Jolly and I have talked about this before, especially with like the bad batch. Um, the, the execution has been poor, but like in concept, there's a lot of really interesting things you could do with the inhibitor chips and what they mean for the characters. Um, so we're, we're kind of looking at this more from just like, do they make sense? And uh, like, do they work better or worse or are, does it really matter? Um, okay. Are they, are they it's, fine? Um, it's, the concept? Less, it's less to do with the execution because I mean, like wh whether or not the EU executed the non-chips thing versus how well Clone Wars and ca Canon executed the chips isn't really uh, what we're getting at. What, what we're getting at is that as a concept, the chips hmm. are make more sense for the story than than the the not having them. How well, they, how well executed they were is different. I absolutely I absolutely disagree with you. I think the chips um, are just. I think the chips exist because they are convenient. Um, so I left a I left a comment on Sheev's last video, um, wherein I sort of rambled through some thoughts. Um, one of which was that having the chips emphasizes the tragedy of the clones and then them being forced to turn on their friends and allies, whereas not having the chips emphasizes the tragedy of the Jedi and the fact that they were blind to the machinations of Palpatine and also the tragedy of the failure of the Republic. And I think that those are stronger themes for Star Wars at that in that time period, that it makes Palpatine a bigger bad guy, that he can take this risk, that he can arrange things such that, yeah, the clones do have the the free will to resist him, but they don't because he's that good at political machinations. Um, so, now, uh, I do think I do think Order sixty six is the problem here, right? So that was one of the com one of the things I said was that's all. This is almost more a criticism of uh, Revenge of the Sith than it is of the Clone Wars. That all he has to do is say execute Order sixty six, and instantly this happens. I think that that's a bit of a uh, a convenience for the sake of limited time in a movie. But uh, yeah, basically my, my, my position is Palpatine being able to set things up uh, makes, him, makes him a bigger villain and it puts more emphasis on the themes of the failure of the Republic. Okay, in that case, Shiv, shall we break this down so we each answer one of them? Do you want to, which one do you want to take? Do you want to take the themes discussion or do you want to take the Palpatine as a, as a master planner bit? I wanted to I wanted to address the Palpatine one because if I'm understanding you correctly, you're just saying that the fact that he was able to get all of the clones uh, who have like the ability to choose whether or not to go through with this order to obey him regardless, like speaks to his abilities as a um, like as a Machiavellian sort of uh, yeah basically. mastermind. Yeah. So I I guess I, I'd wonder like in what way do you mean because like at the end of the day, what has he actually done to manipulate the clones in the way that he has? So it, it's it's all about um, basically running running probabilities and setting things up just so that the right clones are in the, so like the march on the temple would absolutely have to be planned in advance. It would have to be every single one of those soldiers was handpicked to be soldiers who were okay with a slaughter. Whereas with the vast majority of the clones, it's a matter of propaganda. It's a matter of well. You know, my commanding officer told me to do it, and I obey my commanding officer. You know, my brothers are already shooting at the Jedi. The Jedi is now attacking us. 
and even there's a there's a case to be made that he could have said, you know, okay, the clones on Coruscant are going to march on the temple. They just, they just have orders to kill everybody. But everywhere else, the orders are arrest the Jedi simultaneous with the slaughter of the Jedi in the temple. The Jedi across the galaxy sense that they resist arrest as Palpatine expects them to, right? Um, but well, yeah, but we don't, that's not what we're shown though, right? Like no, no, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm again, I'm talking potential here. The point being that that if it was if it was if it was told right, Palpatine becomes more menacing because he plays the Jedi with all their wisdom and foresight. They 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 are blind to his manipulations. Okay, do you mind if I or maybe offer like a rebuttal to this, like or, or to take okay. what you said and like maybe like put it in a different perspective, right? Yep. Which is the argument, as I understand it, is um, because there's so much like because without the chips, there's so much that Palpatine would have to be like cleverly controlled to make sure it all goes the way he wants whereas the chips make it much more likely that he can get what he wants with more with less, well, you know with less effort mm -hmm. um that therefore because he's having to do more that that escalates his threat as a villain and makes him more badass and that's that that yeah. makes him more of a threat to the story and that makes the story better yeah so i understand that the question i have is whether or not the sheer scale of improbabilities we're now that without the chips we're having to assign to palpatine's you know ephemeral ability to control things uh, to explain away is just so great now that it is it not only is it just not believable but it actually might make palpatine stupider in as much as, as you're now saying that he's, he's willing to risk any one of these millions of tiny things going wrong that are outside of his control even slightly that could bring his whole plan down rather than taking a more expedient option that would actually be uh, far more certain to get his success only in the case where the chips are assumed to be something that exists in the setting so if, if we're looking at a case of the chips exist in the setting, does Palpatine use them? Of course he does. Absolutely. But if we're talking from the perspective of the story that's being told, if the if he doesn't use the chips, it's because they don't exist. It's They're, they're not an option. Right, but, but then we yeah, have a believability fair. problem. Sorry. Not, not to cut across you, but like, that's that's why I was like, I raised the believability thing here, which is like, <laughs> let's let's forget the chips are even an option and just go, Palpatine, if Palpatine was going to pull this off, he had to do it via these subtle manipulations over millions of different potential well how many right? how many people found uh revenge of the sith unbelievable because we didn't know that the chips existed well that's, that's I, not the point i'm making here right like that's the the, the point i'm simply making because well no because like again we're now talking about the execution of revenge of the sith because again she and i are in agreement on this and i'm sure lots of other people are as well that when we saw revenge of the sith a lot of us went mm, that seems a bit convenient that's okay. that seems quite contrived okay um, well, well okay let me let, let me put this to you like this because like the, what you're arguing right now it almost feels in the same vein as when people criticize the Dark Knight Rises for Bruce getting back to, to Gotham, uh, despite all the impossibilities that would impede his ability to do that. Uh, and like people defend that by just saying, well, he's Batman and Batman is very resourceful. And so, of course, he'd be able to do so. Like um, it feels it feels like you're at the same exact type of argument where you're saying like, well, yeah, but he's Palpatine and he knows everything and he's really like really smart and meticulous and knows how to well, it's, manipulate it's, it's and maneuver so it's that's the thing that is I'm, I'm, it, I'm not saying that every single clone follows his orders um in fact that's 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 also part of the point is um having the clones have that choice means that in some places they can make a different choice and then we have those stories of the jedi who survived because their clones refused to kill them um well hang on then but but so i, I guess this is so the so the thing point is well hang on hang on hang on hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Hang on so because because you're like, oh, well, let's pretend the chips don't exist. I'm like, okay, but you know what does exist in the universe where there's no chips? There's battle droids who have to follow programmed commands. So mm -hmm. if you're Palpatine and you're like, I want to give the Jedi control of an army that at any moment <laughs> could execute a hidden subroutine that would kill all the Jedi on the, the spot. Well, the point is use droids. Yeah. The clones can't kill the Jedi. They're not good enough. Or not the clones, sorry, the droids... Droids are not strong. Enough. Oh, uh, but droids, but but droids do kill Jedi routinely. Yeah, in this world well, they, for the waste of numbers. No, no, hang on. Because <laughs> droids are droids are like obviously inferior in combat to clones. Right. But like they they make up for that in sheer brute, like in, in sheer numbers. Like that's what makes them such a threat to the Republic army. And because they're way cheaper, if Palpatine wanted to supply the Republic with a droid army, he could do that with with a much larger mass quantity than he could with clones. Um, so the result would essentially be the same in that respect. I want to yeah, use Order right. 66 with droids um, and like, you know, with the amount of droids that are going to be with each respective Jedi when the order goes out, like they will be able to overwhelm them with sheer force of, of numbers. Yeah, not not to mention that a large part of Order 66's success was nothing to do with whether the clones were superior fighters to droids, but just, just taking your generals by surprise in the back from close range. Mm -hmm. um, 
I suppose you like, might argue the Jedi would never trust the droids the same way then. Um, Jedi, have, Jedi have consistently not. shown to have uh, prejudice against droid, droids. They don't like and, droids. And clones. Well, but they also uh, like routinely consider them more like <laughs> utility, you know, kind of like with the clones. They are they are tools that are disposable That's, that we can use yeah. to our ends. So, of course, we're going to trust them. Like, because we've programmed them to be like combative in the in these battlefields like they are going to be because we can trust that they will follow their programming because they're robots like well, i think they would trust like, them with that task you have the example of people like anakin and, and r2d2 which shows that like, jedi can very much learn to trust droids implicitly like droids aren't even in the movies that we get yeah. like, even the battle droids have personalities to them like i don't know how how much i like that idea but that is what the films tell us <laughs> that, like, these droids have a degree of personality and therefore like can potentially be like any droid that, that can say like excuse me I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel good, nice. Like, yeah, yeah, I like them. He's cute. I might trust him. Just, he seems nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I guess, I guess, as I'm a world builder, and I look at the the kinds of things that that leaders and politicians are able to do to shape the way that people think, um, and I don't think it makes Palpatine unbelievable that he can roll the dice. And I do think, I do think, in, my, in sort of the my my vision of that, it is still a roll of the dice. It is still him taking a chance. It's not the sure thing that the that the chips are. Um, right, but it's not just that it's not a sure thing. It's that it's so improbable that he would be able to pull off this without the chips that I would actually say that he would be actively stupid to try that. Well, I it's mean, like, because you... Run down the, I guess I don't see on. that. I guess I don't, I don't agree with that that it's, assessment of the risk. You baked into the hypothetical that the chips don't exist, so the only alternative is the clones. But we that's not true even then because the droids are also a possibility and they are mu a okay. much safer bet. Okay, I see, I see. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess at that point, yeah, you have to, you, you have to do some work to justify why didn't he use, why didn't he use droids then, who would just guarantee follow that order rather than take the risk. Um, and I, yeah, my only, my only really argument for that would be that he has some reason to believe that clones are more likely to get the job done than droids. Um, I think there's a case to be made that yeah, sure, if you can force the Jedi to fight droids, they're going to get overwhelmed. But if the Jedi know that there's not a chance to win they're just going to extricate themselves but hang on one of, the things, one of the points you made there was that like palpatine <clears throat> would be would be willing to accept that not everything's going to go his way and i'm like with the clones even if we want to do you know because i mean chief you said this in your video right let's say the clones mostly did follow the order and and it could be reliably trusted to do mostly do that you still have a very high number of Jedi who make it out of there because some clones just don't accept the order because they think it's a trick or because right. they're unwilling to right, shoot right, down right. a commander no, but you don't get that problem with droids yes. Palpatine has to, well, you maybe you do. Um, Palpatine just has to mm. believe that the clones are superior for the task at hand. Um, and it's also possible that he needs them for, that he wants them for after the Jedi are dealt with, or he wants them for propaganda purposes be, to not make it look like droids fighting droids. Who knows? Well, you could supply um, the, the separatists with the clones. Certainly, army. certainly, I will. I will agree that there are there are other problems with that. Um, I'm also interested, though, in the in the um, the thematic element of the of the story, the idea that um, that the the that the fascistic elements of the empire existing in the clones obeying the uh, the order, despite having the freedom to choose otherwise, feeds the themes of Star Wars. Okay, but my <laughs> sorry, this is the and again, I'm not saying you're this kind of person, but like this is exactly the kind of stuff I hear from TLJ defenders. And the thing I always say here is like, you cannot use themes to justify things happening in the story. The the things in your story have to justify the themes you're trying to talk about, right? The things in your story have to carry your themes. If you're asking for people's meta awareness of your themes to carry what's going on in your plot, you've 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 goofed. No, 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 no. So so my case isn't this is a good story because it has themes. Uh, my case is. We have a problem. Shouldn't we have a solution that better serves those themes? Yep, I agree with that. Yeah. So my so question, my case, my question my would case be is why, that um, why do the chips take away from those themes? So um, the chips definitely feed into a uh, dehumanizing, authoritarian. The state wants to control you. Theme. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. Um, that the state wants you to be an obedient drone. But I think that at least the the class, classic Star Wars. Um, isn't that much of a sci-fi. And so that's more of a sci-fi authoritarianism uh, concept. Whereas Star Wars is more fantasy 
And in that case, it's also more mm -hmm. World War II. It's more talking about the failures of the human soul. Um, it's talking more about the responsibility we have to to uh, stand in defiance of that kind of fascism because we have that freedom. So um, would you argue then that Star Wars, like there's a certain box that Star Wars sort of has, like, con like is confined to and that it can't, it can't really deviate beyond it is a fantasy sort of fairy tale esque story. It can't be, you know, a more Orwellian spy thriller type or. Oh anything no, like absolutely that. not. I think one of the wonders of Star Wars is that it has the freedom to to it. It, it is this massively uh, wonderful world, right? Like I think that uh, George Lucas is really good at the big picture. He's good at world building. He's good at plotting, uh, and he's good at themes. He's not so good at dialogue. That's a different story. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, so, so like, can you tell these stories in Star Wars? Absolutely. Can you tell them while without, uh, uh, for my preference, the stories that I want from Star Wars and more specifically, the, the, the main story of Star Wars, um, is it that story? No. So my take isn't, Star Wars is incapable of telling these stories. My take is rather that's not what the Star Wars is. Okay, mm. no, I get that. Um, may I, may I again offer, offer an alternative perspective on this, which is I think you're allowed to have a lot of different sub themes that all add up to a single greater theme. In fact, I think most good stories do that, like Lord of the Rings or Arcane or anything sure. like that. And I think you'd agree that Star Wars, certainly the original Star Wars, does that. Um, so okay, I see where I, you're going I, with I, this. I, I like it. <laughs> I completely agree with you that I think one of the themes we need to have in the prequel trilogy is the the flaws of, of not necessarily humanity, but like sentience, right? The flaws of sentient right. people to give up their rights in favor of convenience or security, right? Um, what's that quote from uh, Benjamin Franklin? Like, he who would give up a little uh, a little freedom for some, some for security deserves neither freedom nor security. It's mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But you, yep. don't you already have that with the Jedi and the Jedi's failure to really see what's going on and the blindness and the they have as an institution? Yeah, and the Senate as well. Yeah. And in which case, yeah, you could I then could say that, that the, the chips, again, to give another interpretation for the chips, I could say, well, the chips are a metaphor. They're a metaphor for the the lurking evil within all, within all of human souls and the ways in which uh, systemic fascism and systemic authoritarianism uh, plays upon those parts of ourselves that are intrinsic to all of us that can be brought out at a moment's notice without us even necessarily realizing, um, or that are systemically lurking within the structures of our organizations and our, and our, and our militaries and our politics and our you know, economies um, that can be just weaponized at, at the drop of a hat um, because we weren't paying attention. Absolutely, yeah, no, I, I see where you're going there. And also with the sense of the, of the, of the, the dehumanization of the clones, although that's already an aspect that sort of exists without the chips. Um, but I guess all I can really say to that is, I don't know, I don't find that as satisfying as that being something more insidious, let something less, you can point to it and say, this is the problem and more, well, we have all of these struggle, we, we have all of that going on, but we don't have an easy answer of where it comes from. Um, and I acknowledge that's a purely like my preference take. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I can get, I can fun. get behind that. Like I, my stance on the inhibitor chips uh, was for a long time is, and it essentially still is, is like, it can it can basically boil down to a preference and like you know you can prefer non chips i can prefer th like with chips but like if we if we were to agree that like they both work in different ways um and that neither is intrinsically like better than the other oh yeah absolutely yeah um i i mean i have my preference uh, <laughs> you know and i'm going to argue for it that's you know why i came here sure. um but like it's it's a story, and if we think that this version of the story is uh, serves our purposes better, then that's that's what matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah fair absolutely. enough. I, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, thank you uh, very much for, for coming on. Yeah. Actually, can I, also, can I just say thank you so much for being like just a pleasure to talk to, just being like a polite, <laughs> reasonable person. It's seen, I know that's such a small bar, but like it's really rare at the moment on the internet. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Y'all have a good it, day. Yeah. I actually got to run. I got a sort of interview thing. <laughs> Y'all oh, have fun. Well, good luck. Yeah. Well, I uh, hope to see you around. Uh, that actually just was just under twenty minutes. Uh, so Sweet. Perfect. Before we move on to our next guest, though, I did get a couple super chats that I want to address. I, yeah, I figure yeah, the best way to do this is like save them till after we so that, so that we don't cut into people's time. You know, save them yeah, till tables. after each guest. So we got one from Sam Montgomery for five five pounds rather. 
Uh, hey guys, just came back from Big Worm Movie and it was good. I have a possible criticism of the chips, though with some tweaking it wouldn't. Um, well, yeah, Sam, you're welcome to come on and talk to us about it. Um, also, uh, Dune, I'm seeing it tonight. When are you seeing it, Jolly? Uh, I'm probably going to see it with my sister next week if when she's got a free day. Nice. Um, well, I'll let you know if it's if it's so egregiously bad that you should just skip it, which is likely because, <laughs> you know, movies suck and all that. But there are worms and worms are good. Um, thank you for the super chat, Sam. Um, the next one we have is for four ninety nine from Snazzy Studs. Uh, they had to add the chips because they humanized uh, more of the clones in the Clone Wars. So, do we want to address this now, or did we want to wait for someone to present it? Let's let's wait for someone to present it. If no one does, we can always circle back to it. Yeah, I mean, we have we have arguments uh, about this too, but essentially, yes. And and thank you for the super chat. One that just came in, for a very generous one from Wisdom. Oh, wow, fifty dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, really enjoyed these clone video, uh, these Clone Wars videos. She v. Jolly eagerly awaiting your videos when you start publishing on your channel. I don't like the chips, but it's it's most because of Star Wars Battlefront 2's story, uh, which I think is going to be something that we just see often uh, as an argument. Because yeah. I mean, Battlefront 2 is good. I like that game. Uh, Sheev, what's the what's the next Star Wars video topic? Um, I haven't fully decided yet, but I'm looking to either start going after the prequels or revisiting the Mandalorian season two and one. I love how I say going after, like I'm going to, I'm going to obviously cover the prequels like w w and be fair, you know, <laughs> lies. You're, you're I'm, full of lies. You're just I'm going to, I'm going to rip answer. them apart in bad faith. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I, I want to focus on the prequels next or Mandalorian seasons one and two. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do first though. Thank you for the super chat. And uh, oh, yeah. that is all we have so far for that. So we can add our next person in. Uh, Orc Destroyer One, you are on. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, was, that was quick. Um, so <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, cool. So uh, I remember in the super chat, you did uh, just mention about how uh, the chips are needed because the clones are more humanized in the Clone Wars, um, which was actually a point I was going to make. Um, but for my argument, I'd like to present the both sides are kind of bad they don't really do the full job that they're supposed to like i personally prefer the chips but the chips have a criticism that can't be ignored okay whereas with um you know the eu where it's like you know orders are orders again as as she said in this video it doesn't really make sense when you think about it so I'd like to start, obviously, with criticizing the chips, because that's what I'm here for. So um, as the <clears throat> person with the Super Chat said, um, the chips were a necessity because the clones were more humanized in the Clone Wars. Um, OK, yeah, but I mean, I see, I, I don't really understand this argument because, like, yes, that's true. But I don't see why that is, a, is, is like an issue with the chips as a concept. Well, I guess, I guess um, the thing there is like, I don't, I don't understand why it's an issue to humanize the clones. Yeah. Um, I think it's more of like a, a criticism of like the writing. So if you take the, take the chips out, so you have, um, and go with pure EU for this, which obviously, unfortunately includes the Clone Wars seasons one to five because George Lucas decided so. Don't know why. <laughs> you have obviously, say the Embora arc, you have, um, What's it? Yeah, Tup, Dogma, Fives, and he like Fives even says like you know soldiers shouldn't uh, go out this way, and we should be able to make our own decisions. You have yeah, we're not a bunch of unthinking droids. We're men, and we should be trusted to make the right decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have clones acting like this, and then go okay, EU Palpatine says them execute Order Six Six, and they're like okay, does that? It's completely contradictory. So I feel that the chips were an absolute necessity because, um, well, I think the first criticism is really Karen Travis because she wrote the orders and what they were in the EU. So the whole details of how what Order 66 is, the details of what Order 65 is. How is this, um, sorry, I don't want to cut across you, but like, how is this, a, I, I get what you're saying that like, you know, if, if you take the EU as like in, in canon for the, you know, for the purposes of discussion, if you're like, I grew up with the EU and the EU was canon and then I got series one to five and series one to five were originally included in the EU, but it couldn't possibly fit because they obviously contradicted in terms of the humanity of the clones and therefore the chips were a, a lazy get out of jail free card to escape that contradiction. I've, if that's the argument, I kind of follow. 
but we're not really concerned with uh, well, yeah. With so whether like, or not things reconcile with the EU. We're just concerned with whether or not the chips with the movies make sense. Right? Is it? Are you arguing that it's it's contradictory to the EU? Because yes, the Clone Wars is in a lot of different ways. Oh, and I'm oh not yeah, denying it, that. It, it definitely is. I have no idea why Disney haven't just come out and said Clone Wars isn't um, canon to the EU anymore. Yeah, I like I the, the, to to clarify to everyone who's listening, like. I'm treating this as an adaptation of the source material. So it's like, it's canon to the movies and that's it. Um, the EU and whether or not it contradicts that doesn't really matter. If you want to discuss the merits of the EU in terms of how it was executed there and compare that to the, the chips, then you absolutely can. But like, th you, no, we're not, we're not treating them as part of the same continuity because the show also didn't treat them as the same <laughs> continuity. Yeah, so anyway, back back to the point. So um, a lot of arguments I've seen for people criticizing the chips is they feel it makes the clones too tragic and makes them, you know, essentially good boys. And that we, because of the chips, it means essentially they haven't done anything wrong. And people with who like the EU are very much, we don't like this, we prefer how they were not so humanized, but, you know, written in the EU. They were written in a very different way. So they criticize the chips because they feel that the chips essentially contradict everything that they know. Mm. Okay. But I mean, I, so in terms of people having a subjective preference for the clones being evil versus good boys who then get absolved by, by a plot device, I'm fine for people to have that. And I mean, this is the last caller, right? We, we're fine for people to have their own subjective preferences. We're not here, nor would we want to be here to tell people like, you must or mustn't like a certain thing. That's never what we're trying to do. Yeah. We're just saying that like, I don't accept the argument that one of those ideas is intrinsically better than the other, and that would, therefore, well, because Canon went down the route of having chips, that therefore it's worse. I would also argue that, like with the chips uh, as the uh, the way things are, like that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, all the clones are good boys who are who, who are like now tragically like forced to do something they don't want to do. You know, we saw oh, yeah, it with Slick, slick and there, I'm sure there are going to be plenty of other clones. Who would have been more than happy to do the to do the deed even without the chips, given the way that they were uh, treated by the Jedi? And of course, we've talked before about how like execution is where we differ because uh, the Clone Wars did not depict the relationship between the clones and the Jedi in the way that I think Jolly and I would prefer. Um, that would speak to what I'm saying now. But like the point is, you you can have the chips and still have plenty of clones who would have been willing to do it even without the chips. You know. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because um, I've seen people make the argument that the kind of rank and file clones, because they're not really near the Jedi, they'd very much go with the Order because they've been told. Whereas the more you know superior officers, you know your captains and your arc troopers would think about it. Mm. So in the context, like if we completely obviously ignore the Clone Wars in the context of the EU, I think that the rank and file clones would do it because they don't have the relationship that the commanding officers do but then obviously that contradicts the movie because then as soon as cody gets his order he's like yeah i'm gonna go kill obi-wan just instantly yeah and, and cody and him clearly and you know forget the eu or the clone wars cody and obi-wan have repartee and witty banter and they clearly like each other just on revenge of the sith yeah, they're they're um, clearly he's there's clearly not like animosity underneath what Co like every you know Cody's not just like putting on a front and pretending to like Obi Wan for as long as he has to. I I have heard people say that, and I I just don't believe that's the case. Yeah, because at that point, are we also adding into the idea that all the clones are fantastic actors who never drop character? Because <laughs> at that point, I'm a little incredulous. Yeah. So um, the. So yeah, obviously with the chips, um, a lot of people, well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, a lot of EU fans um, criticize them. They have the various points. They think that orders are orders is a better theme because it fits more in how Palpatine is evil and how at the time, obviously the clones kind of became the stormtroopers, obviously in canon they haven't because of you know, how Bad Batch works. And they feel that, you know, if the stormtroopers are, you know, these loyal soldiers to an evil empire, the clones kind of should be as well. If you, if you get what I mean? Mm. Sure. But I would say that I don't think the original trilogy ever presented the stormtroopers as being the clones. Like, I know a lot of people, like, you know, after those movies came out, I mean, like, obviously, I wasn't alive at the time, but I, people who I know who were, who went to see these movies in cinema, there was lots of discussion about who exactly the stormtroopers were and, and so on, but people were mostly agreed that they weren't the clones that Obi-Wan mentioned in briefly in A New Hope. 
um, just because it wouldn't then make sense with the kind of context of everything that goes around it. Um, and, if, and if that's the case, if they're not the clones, then you have to explain how we went from clones to, to stormtroopers in a 15 year time period. Um, of which, the good thing is that there's a TV show that explains that. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad the Bad Batch exists. What a great show. <laughs> what, a, what a rich and well-developed narrative that is. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I like it. I mean, it's, you know, I, I will say this about season three. I've been, I've been um, not offended by it so far. It's fine. Yeah. Season two it, and it, season three review when? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, is there anything else you wanted to, to argue? Um, it's mostly uh, points that I've seen. Uh, let me find another one. <clears throat> um, uh, I asked in like a Star Wars thread earlier. I, I pretty much just posted a thing about your your video saying that you know it's a three hour long video, and you argue in favor of the chips. And because the thread is filled with people who love the EU, they love to argue against it. Yeah. So there's there's just this massive argument where uh, let's do the first one. So here we go. Uh, just trying to, trying to find one that I haven't gone over yet. Um, obviously, that someone someone said I like the clones being traitorous murderers, which uh, yeah. I mean that's personal preference. But um, yeah, I'm just here to argue that both sides are bad. Like I do want to add um, to anyone who wants to argue in favour of the. Uh, in favor of the EU, that Karen Travis, who wrote the orders, made a very big blunder in the fact that when Commander Cody answers the call from Palpatine, he says, yes, my lord. He doesn't say yes, sir, or mm -hmm. yes, Chancellor. Mm, yeah. How would Pal how would Cody, A, know that Palpatine's a Sith Lord, and uh, B... John, and do, you B want to, do you want to go over this now? Yeah, because I, I think I think there's two like because I, I think this is an example it doesn't work either way. I think this is just a line that shouldn't exist. Yeah, because because um, we're we're against it even with the chips. Like like Rex uh, referring to him as Darth Sidious doesn't work either. It's dumb. Yeah. So let's just let's take the non-chip example because the non-chip example then means like we have to be in a situation of every single clone trooper was in on the plan from the beginning and knew that and not, uh, was a Sith Lord and yeah, and none of them ever spilled the beans or, or told the superior yeah. officer. Not one of them liked Anakin enough, well enough to maybe give him a heads up on that was being a possibility. Like that's yeah. that's yeah. I, I'm not I'm not enough. <clears throat> yeah, then, that doesn't work. <laughs> and then the other side yeah. of things is that with the with the chips, I just don't understand how you program that knowledge. Like programming a behavior is one thing right of like making them super obedient to an order or giving them a prescribed like set of actions that's one thing but like how do you genetically implant a memory of someone being darth sidious into someone's head i don't know how that's possible and why yeah. would you even bother like why yeah. why would why would uh, why would palpatine like like how did that work like palpatine was with the cloners and was like okay i when when i throw the kill switch uh, I want everyone to address me by my real name because I'm so bored of being <laughs> of being called Palpatine. It's really depressing. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't make um, sense for either one. I, I do want to bring up a quick point with the chips, um, but I don't think anyone really points out is when um, Tup has the uh, you know the brain parasite, which causes him to go go nuts. You notice that he only gets aggressive uh, towards the um, the Jedi that's there. What's her name? Like Tiplar, Tiply. It's one Tipley, of those. Two. One of them. Yeah. Yeah. He never gets aggressive towards Anakin. Uh, so are you arguing that um, it's it doesn't make sense for the uh, chips that Anakin has made an exception? That too, yeah. I feel that is very weird that Anakin is made the exception. So like you're telling me that, you know, Palpatine told Dooku to go, hey, go to these cloners, tell them to install this chip to you um, know, secret, secret Sith order to execute all the Jedi, but leave Anakin out of it. And so, it's just like, yeah, I mean, cool. For the top I example, remember. I don't think that Anakin was like ruled out as much as the first Jedi he saw as the one he targeted, and it happened to be Tipley, um, because obviously there were there was another Jedi there as well that he didn't yeah, target. Yeah, yeah, uh, Tipla. No, no, because he executes um, the first one, the yellow one. Yeah, and then when he's um, detained by fives and stuff, um, Anakin and the other one, uh, Tipley, I believe it is the red one, go um, and you know wondering what the hell is going on. And Tup only gets aggressive towards the other Jedi, even though Anakin's in the same room. He never gets angry at him. He only uh, gets angry at the other other Jedi. I mean, I don't 
I don't remember the episode well enough to, to comment on the specifics, but I will. Let's just, I'm going to take what you're saying as like true because I'm, I'm sure it is. That would be an execution problem. That would be the same kind of issue I have with them saying like, yes, Lord Sidious, where I'm like, it's not that the concept of the chips is bad. It's just that the Dave Filoni and team are bad at writing their own concepts. I yeah, don't it, think anyone really disagrees with that as yeah, an idea. In the concept, yeah, yeah. yeah, in the context of the Tup uh, incident, like it wouldn't make sense for him to rule out Anakin. However, most people have argued this on the basis of when Order 66 was actually going down. They somehow like agreed to follow Anakin and uh, not shoot him on sight, even though he's also a Jedi, which is just a very dumb argument that I don't understand why people keep making because the the clones are shown to be willing to make exceptions um, when Palpatine, when, gives, when Palpatine them gives them the order. For example, they went after Ahsoka and Maul despite the fact that neither of them are Jedi. Yeah, yeah and, and the explicit the explicit explanation we're given for that is Jesse says that oh you know Sidious specifically asked us to kill these two as well. Mm-hmm. So I see no reason why when Palpatine hands down the order to storm the temple, he couldn't have just told the 501st, yeah, Anakin's on our side. He, he doesn't count under this order. Yeah. But yeah, with Tup, it doesn't make sense. If if what you're saying is uh, accurate and that he avoided going after Anakin. I'll, I'll say yeah. I believe it's accurate. Um, As in, I remember watching the scene. I watched it last week because I was re-watching the episodes because I knew you were going to bring it up in your video because you uh, mentioned it. Yeah. Um, and as far as my memory recalls that is that is true obviously i'm not going to 100 percent confirm it and then well, if it I, turns I, out I mean he really... was also in a haze like he wasn't really uh, all the way there as well so yeah. like you could argue sure. maybe that i would say that's a bit of a weak source excuse though like I, sure I, I, what, I'll, what, what i'll say is that if that is the case and like if it isn't the case then obviously it doesn't matter and if it is the case then the only thing i'd say is that that's a bad execution of the idea that's not the idea itself being bad right like the chips don't mm. suffer as a concept from that it's just that dave filoni and team are not very good at writing yeah um because because they come up with great concepts it's just the execution is you know bad sometimes yeah there's a few concepts they come up with that are good and there are some that are <laughs> less good like mortis um but that's a that's a whole different that's a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> We're oh, gonna man. have to cover at some other point. I, I, I'm, I fir- I'm firmly in the camp of Mortis is neither good nor bad. It's just okay. Oh, it's shit. Well, it's boy, terrible. Boy, are you gonna boy are you gonna like my video? <laughs> I, I I didn't want to overlook this wonderful comment from Punkle. None of this is correct. Thank you. That was that added a lot to the discussion. <laughs> none of this, like none, none, literally, literally none of this. You're not Sheev. I'm not Jolly. This isn't the stream. This isn't YouTube. Nothing is correct. <laughs> I am actually high. George Lucas himself. Oh my God! We are yeah. not worthy. <laughs> we are worms. 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 <laughs> it fits so well. Yeah. Any, um, anyway, as, as, as I said, I was going to be criticizing both sides. Um, so we've um, the EU example, and obviously Karen. Karen, I'm going to kill off Mara Jade, uh, Travis. Um, mm. <laughs> she doesn't. She hasn't written that the fact that you know, um, with the EU. And Cody says, you know, yes, Lord Sidious, how she's written it and stuff is very much the clones are following orders rather than, oh, the clones are actually MK ultra brainwashed. And that's that's a you know trigger word, you know, yeah. like. Um, well, yeah, uh, if you're if you're arguing from the perspective of the EU, like it's it's pretty clear that the clones are not aware that Palpatine is a Sith Lord and that there's some kind of ultimate order uh, that will be enacted eventually at the end of the Clone Wars to kill all the Jedi. Like, that's just not something that the clones... Yeah, um, I want to bring up, actually, a... It's a comment from Sam Witwer uh, from a podcast. And okay. he wrote... Uh, let me find it. He says, um, he says, you know, Karen Travis, she didn't get everything right. Sorry, but she just didn't. And then he's saying hmm. that um, it's very clear if you watch Revenge of the Sith that it's not an order on the books. It's simply from this one detail that Karen Travis ignored... But that detail is when Sidious shows up as a hologram and says, execute order 66, the clones say it will be done, my lord. Not yes, sir. Not yes, chancellor. It will be done, my lord. Dude, Commander Cody has never seen a Sith Lord. He doesn't know what a Sith Lord is. He's never seen Darth Sidious unless a, this is a Maturian candidate situation. Unless they have been programmed on a deep level to just the brainwashing kicks in the moment they hear the words order 66. And they look at that hologram and they see God. This is this man who is responsible for their creation, Darth Sidious. And that's what it is. And by the way, I have it on authority from George Lucas and Dave Filoni. That is exactly what it is. Now, Karen Travis didn't watch. She missed that aspect of Revenge of the Sith. She didn't pay attention to that. It will be done, my lord. And she wrote what I thought was a cool version of Order 6. Great, that's awesome. You know, it's very conflicted. The soldiers don't know how they feel about it. And they're all conflicted. That's awesome. I love that. 
But that's not what happened in the movie, and that's not what the Clone Wars implements. It's not that kind of thing. So Whitwer is both right and wrong because, like, it it doesn't make sense that Order sixty six was on the books, and that's something that Jolly and I are going to go over in a bit. But we'll probably wait for someone else to bring that up. Yes, um, because in, but he's wrong um, in a lot of different ways as well with that quote. Yeah, one thing I'll say as well because I, I I respect the hell out of Sam Whitwer, and actually I respect the hell out of George Lucas as well to a certain extent, and even Dave Filoni to a certain extent. But what I will say is I I always get a little uh, not anxious, but like a little on edge when people invoke George as like some god of uh, of canon that like what he <sighs> says is just intrinsically a good idea. And I'm like, there's lots of ideas that George has had that are both yeah, completely like he... out of whack with the OT, um, mm. but also and, and show that he didn't understand a lot of the OT, but are also just, just bad on their face. So yeah, I mean, he's the guy who invented a guy named like, you know, Ellen Sleaze Bagano, like, <laughs> yeah, or, or Jar Jar. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what Jolly's getting at is something a lot more fundamental and intrinsic to the themes of the, of the whole saga. But yeah, yeah, like there were also little things that were just like, why did you write this, George? Why did you do this? <laughs> just, just stop saying odd oh, shit, George. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but to also to uh, Whitmer's point, not only is he appealing to authority, which is something that we just don't accept on this channel. Yeah. Uh, he's um, also, of course, appealing to the whole "it will be done, my lord," which we've already gone over. It's just, yeah, it's we, just we, we think that's just a bad line. Yeah, um, I can uh, link what I quoted if uh, it's an image. If you want to read it. Well, I, I mean, think the best thing to do would be like, it. I don't know if you're on Sheev's Discord, which I am, I am. in favor of pr pr yeah, promoting the Discord. You never promote Sheev. It's linked <laughs> in this guy. It's it's linked in the description, <laughs> man. Um, but obviously, like, yeah, there's a Star Wars channel, lots of Star Wars channels on, on that Discord. So uh, actually, a good <laughs> yeah. thing to do would be like post maybe that Reddit thread if that's allowed in your server, Sheev. I'm not sure if you're allowed yeah. to post links, but if you are, yeah. post it there so everyone can, can have a look at it and discuss it because it's a great jumping off point for people to, to chat about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, I will uh, just conclude with. Um, a bit of an off-topic point, and Sheev, uh, I am mad. You did not give Ventress her own segment in part two. It's totally Jova <laughs> for me. Hey, I, I talked about her a lot in both the Dooku and Maul segment. I think I think I covered everything that needed to be said. Besides, you get to talk about her now in the Bad Batch 3 sections. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, um, yes, but with that, we've uh, we've reached 20 minutes, so I'm afraid I'm going to yep. have to kick you. Yep, but that's all good. Um, it was a pleasure to yep, have you. Uh, I will uh, link it in like the Star Wars discussion channel in your server, the uh, image, and uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, awesome thanks props. for coming on. Uh, thanks very much, man. Yeah, I'm liking how uh, how cordial a lot of these people have been so far. Hopefully, that keeps yeah. up. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really I'm really happy with that. I think I got two more super chats uh, before we. So another one from Sam just asking how to come on. So one thing that I didn't account for necessarily is that. The uh, the limit to how many people can be like in the in the room with us right now is ten, and that's including me and Jolly. So only eight people can be like in the waiting room, so to speak. Um, I do apologize for that because that will sometimes mean that if you try to click the link that's pinned to join, it might just not let you in. And I and I'm sorry for that, but that's like the best I can do really. Um, yeah, just, at the just moment, keep clicking and hope that you can get in. Basically, five, six. Seven at the moment, we have seven people waiting. So anyone who wants to click that link, they might just have a chance of uh, of, of jumping right in. Because you know, I you know, Sam's our friend. I'd like to have him in. Oh no, Punkle's joined. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we'll get to you, Punkle, uh, but you're pretty pretty low down the list there. Uh, and then I got another one from Punkle for ten dollars. There's a lot of clear and entirely sensible explanation, more than sufficient for Order sixty six, which hasn't been presented at all. Uh, Chips tear out the narrative, tear out the narrative heart of the prequel trilogy. Uh, wish I could be present. Best. Well, he's he's joined, so he'll be able to lay out those arguments for us when he gets in. But, but... also, uh, yeah, thank you for the very generous super chat. Yeah, thank so you. Much appreciated. I do, I do appreciate that. Yes. Um, with that, let's see. The next person we have is Day Quan. You are now in. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. We can indeed. Um, nice job, Sheev. Uh, just congratulations on an absolute feat of a video that you made there. It was really awesome to see both parts back to back. Why, thank you. Um, I think the thing that your video did that I thought was really good, it definitely convinced me that the chips in concept are completely fine. And I will absolutely give you that point. Um, I haven't experienced a ton of the EU um, so I can't really say whether or not the EU explanation is all that good, but my issue with the chips comes down to being a biochip and how that works mechanically, or as I think a computer chip would make a lot more sense and just kind of giving mm -hmm. 
some of the sci-fi stuff to the computer chip. Okay. Um, um, I, I guess you're in luck then, because one of us on the school is a neuroscientist, so I'll be intrigued to hear this. <laughs> yeah, I'm the um, guy that left that really long comment. Mm -hmm. I'm not I a neuroscientist, but I'm a I read teacher, it. and therefore I have a quite a background in child development, or else I wouldn't be able to do my job properly. A lot of this is probably going to be you and Jolly going back and forth, but I will listen <laughs> intently. Oh, that's okay, fine. I, I guess Jolly, I guess are you a neuroscientist? <laughs> I am, I am a cognitive neuroscientist, yes. All right, so um, how about you kind of go first? Because you would actually have a better background in this than I do. You probably right, read my... So yeah. I did, yeah, I, I read the comment. So I, I guess the the idea of a mechanical chip being inherently superior to a neurological chip is absolutely true if we're talking about the current standards of technology today. Like, I mean, that being said, like, don't sign up for Elon Musk's stupid Neuralink thing. You will get <laughs> killed. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, or be left with permanent brain damage. Um, but yeah, no, thank yes, you. we are, we, we do not know enough about how the brain works currently to be able to accurately map out like some kind of genetic implant that would cause a growth in your brain that forces certain behaviors upon a code command, right? That's beyond our capabilities. However, um, there are numbers, uh, like the brain is obviously a very sophisticated and complicated thing. And there are lots of ways that you can fiddle with it to change people's behaviors. Like obviously like people with brain tumors or people with brain damage routinely change behaviors and change personalities and, and become more or less compliant or whatever. That's a that's a big factor in something like Thorazine, for example. Uh, you know, when you give Thorazine to psychiatric patients, um, it makes them very pliable. If you give them a high dose, they basically become zombies. Um, and there's things like Capgras syndrome, where like you know, the, 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 for those who don't know, that's the syndrome where you think everyone in your life has been replaced by an identical double, and it's the result of um, certain connections in your brain to do with um, linking visual stimuli to feelings of recognition get severed. So you see the thing, and you know that you know you know the person but you don't feel like you know them, so you, you feel like they're off, so your brain goes, they're not real, or like they're a copy, they're a clone, they're a, they're a fake. Um, so in terms of sci-fi concepts, having very advanced geneticists in the future develop um, the science to a degree where they can implant some extra scaffolding of neural, neural tissue into the brain's development or you know some kind of section of the brain, dormant section of the brain that can be activated upon specific stimuli that would then alter behavior, I think is entirely reasonable, particularly because given that we're talking about a universe where you can have, you know, laser pl like plasma swords and hyperspace travel and, and all sorts of other uh, incredibly out there concepts. Um, I don't know necessarily that mechanical chip would do you any better. In fact, I'd actually argue the mechanical chip is worse because then I would argue how the hell did that never get discovered? Mm -hmm. um, but during, during, you know, up until order 66, how did you hide that? Yeah. The thing about the mechanical chips is that like, that's what people, that's what a lot of anti-chip people think it is. And then they criticize it for being that when it's not, because if it was mechanical, then yeah, it would not make sense that it doesn't get picked up by brain scans, like typical, uh, just basic brain scans. Or even it has to be, well, yeah, that too. It has to be organic. Otherwise it would not possibly have been kept a secret for all those years. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think the chip should be discoverable. Um, I also put in the comments, like, in war, you're going to have brain damage. You're going to have all kinds of head trauma. You're going to have infections getting into the brain. So why would you want the chip to be hidden, especially if the chip gets damaged in the case of TUP? I don't think this should be limited to TUP. This should be this should have happened as early as the first battle of Geonosis um, with whatever splitting being strong enough to somehow split a helmet open, split your head open, um, infect the brain and kind of make the clone go off. Um, clone doctors should absolutely be aware of that. Other people should absolutely be aware of that. Um, I also, I'm okay if like there's a protocol, oh, if the clone has brain damage, just put them down too expensive to rebuild. But we don't have that at all. Um, I think it'd be a really neat way to go to introduce some ethics nuance within the Republic. But unfortunately with that not being in the show um we have to just accept that clones just aren't getting infected clones are not getting as much brain damage and those that are getting brain damage are not surviving okay so i guess my pushback here would be twofold right so i don't understand why a mechanical chip would be less susceptible to damage than say neural tissue in as much as any sufficient force to split your head open is or like rattle your brain inside your skull to give you severe concussive brain damage is going to also damage a, a very fine computer chip. And it would have to be fine because otherwise the amount of you know intracranial pressure uh, you're causing and damage to the brain you're causing if from having a foreign object implanted in your skull is going to be really dangerous for you and probably kill you outright. Um, 
And as far as the kind of second supposition that went into that, which was like, oh, brain damage just equals the chip should activate. Um, I, I don't know. I, maybe we I'm don't missing know what caused types, I, yeah. uh, malfunctions. We don't know if it was brain I, damage induced or something else. I, I don't know that it's, in fact, I would actually go so far as to say, I don't think it's fair to argue that any clone who has head trauma or gets an infection in their brain should just have their chip activated. I th we don't know enough about how this chip is integrated into the brain. Hell, we don't know enough about how brains work in real life to make those kinds of assertions. Um, I, I think there's a lot of, when I say bad faith, I don't mean that you are acting in bad faith. I just mean like there is a kind of implicitly unfair assumption, I think, that goes into that about how how damage to a person's cranium should or shouldn't affect the chip. I'm not arguing that in every case it would. I'm arguing that it would be more often than once. Why? Well, if it happened in it happened in Tup and uh, Sheev, you've argued a couple times that we don't know exactly what caused it. Um, Palpatine tells us that... Uh, yeah, that's a cover story. That was a lie. Yeah. His explanation isn't true. Okay. Do we have any other things to go on? And ex I, uh, my memory is a little fuzzy. Why exactly is it a lie? Well, um, because, because the, the whole he, point is they want to avoid the Jedi looking into it. Well, he assigns it to uh, have happened to Tup as well, like to explain why he went or not Tup, sorry, Fives, to explain like why Fives went crazy. Well, he's, then he's trying to prevent the Jedi from looking into it, so he made up a story. Well, then wouldn't Anakin and uh, forgot it was a Tipler or Tiplar who survived? Wouldn't they matter. know who? Wouldn't they know that their uh, troops are all getting the antidote in that case? Well, yeah, but the antidote is a placebo, right? It's just there to, to provide a cover yeah. story. So, like, they're, they're, I'm sure they're fully aware that well, these guys are getting a, 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 because, a vaccine. Because what Palpatine, they don't know what's in the vaccine. What Palpatine told them is that, like, the reason Tup went crazy and killed uh, the Jedi was because of something he drank in the water, which we know, as, like, we as the audience know for a fact that is objectively incorrect. That's not true. Um, so I don't know why we would, we would assume anything that Palpatine says has anything to do with why his chip activated. All right. Like, yeah. I'm, okay with, I'm okay with What's that, it? but... I, I think it's a stretch to say that Tup is a completely isolated incident in war. I think this would happen at least like at least more than once. Well, no, so, so actually I agree with you on this, but I think that doesn't actually make it more likely that this would be found out. So here's the thing. There are I can't it's like 200,000 units of clones, which is, has to be more than 200,000 clones. We've had this discussion before. There's like, there's yeah, a lot of clones sense, is my yeah. point. Yeah, that's and there's only 200,000 is absurd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's let, let's let's be like very conservative and say there's like 200 million clones in active uh, service, which I still think would be like yeah. a massive under. I think the, let's just say that's how many there are. If I'm right, oh goodness, well, I think on. the EU says that there's three million, and they, I think that's absurd. I yeah, would that's bullshit. That would never make any that's, sense. That yeah, would no, never. Well, like, your, your 200 million makes a lot more sense there. Let's just well, hell, this, this still works with three million. So let's be really conservative and just go with the EU's number of three million clones. Right, three million clones. 10,000 Jedi total, about 7,000 to 8,000 of whom are old enough to be in active service and fighting in combat. Yes. Um, so that's 8,000 people split across 3 million troops. Um, the chances of one of those troops being injured in a way that both awakens their chip and for them to be in close enough proximity to a Jedi for lot, you know, and active without being killed or restrained or treated for, you know, for sudden madness unrelated to being a, going manic about Jedi. Um, to attack a Jedi and give the game away is really unlikely. Um, I think that would be a, like if uh, to the point that like, if the clone was was said like oh we've had six hundred reports of different clones attacking their Jedi I'd be like my God the the sheer unlikeliness of every single of, of those of having six hundred clones who not only have their chip awakened prematurely but are close enough to a Jedi to attack one to give the game away would be absurd. Um, most like most clones other than Tup who who have their chips awakened if there are any. I presume are either going to be killed in combat very shortly because they're acting in a haze and not paying attention to their surroundings properly in the midst of battle, which is presumably when they receive the most of their traumas. Well, um, Jolly, or... so would you argue that Tup was actually like a very astronomically unlikely incident? Yes, actually, I would argue that Tup is a huge contrivance. Like, I, I wouldn't say that Tup is a contrivance insofar as like having one clone go nuts in proximity to a Jedi is 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 isn't necessarily a huge contrivance through sheer probability. But the fact that he happens to be stood right next to Anakin, who's our main character, when it all goes down, well, yeah, is kind of <laughs> is kind of absurd. But that's like a general problem with the Clone Wars is that like everything that it, like happens in the show that's in any way important seems it's to always it. center around Anakin and or like his immediate friends. Yeah. Like anything political, like it's always going to be like Padme's at the center of it somehow, you know? 
Yeah, if it was a bottle episode and like Anakin and Obi Wan were nothing to do with the siege of Rengavara and and Tup was just one of Tipley's um, clones and he killed Tipley, I would be like, okay, that I can, I can accept that in the course of this war, at least one clone may have received uh, a trauma that awakened their chip prematurely and be close enough to their Jedi to take action, and then we get the whole shark T plot, and then you can bring Anakin in just in terms of having Rex involved. Let's let's let's, let's say Fives isn't a member of the five hundred first, but he he blabs to Kix, who is a member of the five hundred first, in the bar. And then you can bring in Anakin. Like that's still a contrivance, but at least it's not nearly as bad as having Anakin just standing there when it happens by sheer well, yeah, coincidence. That's all. That's all a tangent. We should we yeah. should stay focused on the on the main point. Yeah, I think all that is fair. Um, one thing I just kind of wanted to ask uh, your take, Jolly. Um, one of the points I brought up is as far as we kind of understand, uh, with the brain, in order to have a mental schema of something, there has to be some sort of experience tied to that. Um, I'm not totally against the idea that in the future there's the technology to be able to bombard some I I would assume that this chip kind of acts as like a memory storage you can sort of bombard it with that schema um but these schemas haven't happened yet uh we don't have I mean you could sort of cr construct it into a computer but the com the clones are completely unaware as, as far as we understand um if you were to implant the chip you'd have to have um within that you'd have to have some sort of um understanding of what everything is 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 that something that we chalk up to science fiction or is that like kind of stretching well, it, do you think I, i'm not quite sure what mental schemas you think the the, the the neuro chip would have to have to make the border 66 work because really all you need for it to work right is you'd have, have to have jedi you'd have to have kill and all the operations of the weaponry it's a very complex schema system you'd have to have and then you'd have to have order 66 and you'd have to program exactly which the, you know, you'd have to program within those words, um, pulling Jedi, pulling uh, kill and all the weaponry and all the stuff like that. And then focus all that complex behavior into that single okay. task. Well, I, I don't want to derail the stream into a discussion of mental philosophy, but like I will, what I will say is like, there are a number of neuroscientists and philosophers who don't even think that we have mental schema. So that's an open discussion, <laughs> but, but um, like representationalism is, is very much like I'm on board with that, but a lot of neuroscientists are not. But putting that to one side, I am perfectly willing to accept the idea that you can create a chip, a bioorganic chip that uh, is designed in such a way as to link up to regions of the brain that you already know are going to be architecturally use, used for those kind of concepts, right? Like if the chip is in between certain regions of the brain, you're like, well, this region of the brain is going to be where mental schema for, you know, co abstract concepts like, you know, relational concepts like kill or murder or surrender or whatever will be stored. And this is going to be the, like the hippocampus and the long-term memory stuff where they're going to have concepts of like Jedi or whatever. I can I can see ways to link that. And also, again, like at this point, we're asking for a level of specificity from a sci-fi that I think is unreasonable. Like at that point, do we then turn around and go, well, how does the lightsaber work? How does it, you know, where's its energy supply coming from to, to fuel a 28,000 degrees Celsius beam of plasma uninterrupted? How do we punch holes in space magnetic? that allow us to go into a different yeah. dimension and like a higher plane that takes us like, like, like bends space in a way that it's shorter and, and easier to traverse, you know? I don't need the specifics of the mechanics. I just need the story to, if a story gives me a premise that like this is the case in the story, all I need is that the, is for that premise not to contradict anything else in the story, yeah. and 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 for it to be believable within the setting. I, I mean, that's what we do like, with like time travel stories, yeah. right? Because like no, like if 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 time travel were to be scientifically accurate in every story, there'd have to be so many different like. Uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to go back. Yeah, it, it, you know, as long as it tells you this is the rule of time travel, you know, like this is the way it works, and then remains consistent with that, like that's fine. And I think it's the same with basically any any sci fi concept. Oh, if you want to go into time travel, that is a different discussion entirely. <laughs> like, I, I'm a huge fan of the Back to the Future trilogy, but every time I watch part two, man, there's one massive plot hole in there that is, it's a grandfather paradox, but I get completely pulled out for that mm -hmm. scene once I discover it. Um, Fair. That happens. There's, I, I, don't, there's sorry, I, just, I don't want to derail it from... Yeah. yeah, I just don't want us yeah. to realize into a time travel discussion. But yeah, like the, the, I would, <laughs> the, the the simple thing I'll say there is like the the level of specificity I think you're asking of the chips there might be <sighs> unreasonable. Again, might be the wrong word, but I would just I would just ask you to to quietly ponder whether or not you need to have that level of granularity for the story to make sense. I think unreasonable is pretty much the right word there. I mean, that's not it's not a you know wrong criticism of what I'm bringing up, um, at least that I think. 
Um, I, I know, guess. I just, to, I just want to be careful with the language so that people don't take offense, right? Because I'm not trying to say that you are an unreasonable person. So I'm just trying to phrase things as neutrally as possible. No, like, unreasonable is a perfectly, new, at least in my opinion, I think it's perfectly fair to uh, call that unreasonable. Um, at least just well, I think as you're unreasonable for saying that. Ah! Nerd. <laughs> Nerd, you're short. Ah. I don't know how tall you are, but I'm just going to call you short because I think it's funny. He is well, three am, foot seven. Uh, I'm three inches and two centimeters because I am an imp. That's like you can see from my avatar. I'm tiny. Of the perverse. Oh. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> well, in that case, you will probably not want to meet me in real life. Well, you have no idea how powerful I am in real life. I am a demon after all. No. <laughs> Bring it, fool. All right. Uh, yeah. If, if, is there if... is there anything else you've got for us on the chips? I'm oh, sorry. Just I no. want to give other people their opportunity to talk as well. If they're if yeah, they're... no, I'm pretty much okay right there. Um. I think you guys did a good job, and I'm pretty much I'm pretty much okay with all the stuff we talked about. Okay, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, no, thank you guys, and uh, once again, nice job on the video, Chief. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, see you around. Alrighty then. Any super chats uh, to cover before we jump right in? I don't believe so. Nope. So we can just go right to Sauron. You are on. I feel. Uh, well, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, hi, Dark Lord of Mordor. What's, I, what's I, feel, I, I feel like I'm fanboying right now. Like, I may be Emperor Palpatine, but, like, you're Sauron, you know? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm such a fan well, of your job scheme in Mordor, getting all those orcs. A, me, a like, meeting of the minds, if you will. Indeed. What do you think Palpatine um, would do with the One Ring? Actually, we can shelf that, because that's not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked that question a few times. Um, okay, so it's kind of difficult for me to say my point, because I feel like a lot of my points have kind of already been brought up in a lot of different people and from what you even said in the video first of all i do want to say i really like the videos i like that i don't hate the 3d show but i am glad to see people finally kind of like challenging the idea of it being not being peak star wars because that was something that always um yeah you know on the back of my mind kind of thing um i will give the pretext of like i grew up with the eu um i didn't grow up with the original trilogy. I grew up as the prequel trilogy came out. Hmm. And I've I do remember um coming up, I was always more in the mindset of like Order 66 is just simply the order rather than the biochip. I'm not opposed to the idea of the biochip. I know I put it in one of my um comments that I do think it mostly comes down to a preference on like at least on the fan side as to whether or not like you accept it or not, where it works or not in terms of just like individual fandom. But for me, I always saw the ch the whole Order 66 as a mental mental conditioning for the um, clothes where as they're like being trained or whatever, because I don't, at least I don't remember if they ever go too in depth as to like how exactly the clones are brought up. I'm talking about like the early stages of their life, like before they leave um, Camino. But I always saw it as like Order 66 was this conditioned um, order of like if the Jedi were to go rogue, which. Well, I mean, um, yeah, that's what I mean. That's the excuse that the Kaminoans are given by Tyrannus for what the what right. the order is. Yeah, it's meant for rogue yeah. Jedi. Yeah, yeah, but I always thought of that as like that was like a training that they went under. That 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 was well, literally guess... just something they were aware of as an order that exists, but. You know, okay. it, you, it isn't you just... I, um, pick up on that because like, I just have been, I, I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this. Um, because I like yeah. you, I, I I grew up with the prequels. I'm I'm a nine, early '90s kid, Same so I grew up and and saw those Same. movies as they came out. Um, and I didn't have the EU just because I I wasn't that. As much as I liked Star Wars, I wasn't super into it until later in my life, uh, until well after Revenge of the Sith came out. But if if we take the EU explanation just on its face, right, and like it's, if this is a, an order they've been trained with uh, on Camino. How do you hide that training from the Jedi? Um, yeah, because like I mean, obviously Clone Wars has Shock T going to oversee the training, but and I, and I have no idea what the EU does. But I I would be very surprised if once the Jedi are leading the war efforts, they don't send someone to Kamino to at least train with the clones because they're going to be what who they're working with. You'd think that would right. be like just standard thing that would happen. And at that point, I don't know how the Kaminoans are somehow hiding the kill the Jedi order training from whoever's overseeing the training as a Jedi, like. We, we, uh, Sheev and I kind of joked about this earlier. We're like, did they just like wait till Sh did Shakti only get up at eleven o'clock in the morning? And <laughs> so they did the training at eight o'clock to make sure she never saw it. Like, how did this work? So, 
I feel like because that makes total sense, and it's also one of the reasons why I've never because like like the other guy said previously, I really do think both explanations don't really work as well as they should. Um, because that is a thing. Because it's like, oh, once the Jedi find out that it's going on, you would think they would have someone oversee it and not just leave it to the um, Kamino. Uh, however you say their names, um, the Kamino. Kamino. Yeah, the tall, tall, like tall neck guys. The toothpicks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, someone <laughs> would be overseeing. Not my like Q-tips. No. <laughs> yeah, but it's like they would have someone oversee it. But I don't know, at least I don't recall from the EU per se, because I've read some EU stuff. I've ex- like, you know, grew up with that media. I don't know all of it, but I don't ever recall them going into specifics as to how they are brought up. Because it's like if they're literally growing these guys from like vats, like there, there's, there's so many things that they could be doing to them in that process where there could be a moment where the Jedi aren't aware of a certain process because it's it's so controlled by the Sith and like the separatists, however you want to um, look at it. But it's like, it's so manipulated by outside factors. It's like, could there theoretically exist a point where the Jedi aren't aware of this conditioning, but at the same time, it's like that, that's a convenience kind of thing. Like that, that, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily. Well, I mean, I would, I would even say like it, in order for this to be instilled in their training, it would have to be when they're already born. So it can't be like right. when they're being developed in their, in their vats, it has to be when they're kids. Pr- yeah, presumably. exactly. Oh, yeah, they're, they're handing out like, you know, like, you know, it's like A is for Apple books. They're handing those out <laughs> for like the little clothings and it's like K well, is it, for kill, kill your Jedi. T is for well, traitor it, and it just shows like <laughs> Adi Gallia. Well, because the thing is, is like, that is a thing that could technically be a part of it where it's like, it's an early life conditioning of like, and this, this is again, me personally. So I don't want to like south this as this is what it should be, or this is how it is meant to be interpreted. But my interpretation was always simply that like, for the clones, your loyalty is to the Republic, not to the Jedi. Like, y- y- like what do you, what do you call it? Like, however close you may think you are to the Jedi, ultimately your loyalty is to the state. And so, sure. if but they are point, they basically as- just at that point, aren't they basically just because this seems to be the same kind of argument of like, well, you know, the the chips remove the nuance because like now the, it absolves them of you know all this kind of stuff. Like the, the the chips turn them into zombies, basically. Right. And my question is, if they're so compliant and so brainwashed from from birth, essentially throughout their training, to think like this and be totally loyal to the Republic and have no you know be willing to turn on the Jedi on a dime, isn't that just the same thing? I don't understand yeah. functionally the difference. I mean, like that's okay. what I said in my video. It's like you're either saying that they are so conditioned to obey the order without question that they just there's no chance that they won't, or they have a chip in their brain that makes it so that there's no chance that they won't. And like that's it's the same thing. Yeah, that that's why I always go back to the whole. It comes down to a preference, in my opinion, because I do feel like either or can work because ultimately at the end of the day, it still is achieving the same thing. Um, for me personally, um, not to go too personal, but I was in the military for some time, but I've had family members who were in the military and obviously it's not to the same degree. So I, I, let me just put that preference out there. Um, but there, there is a certain thing when it comes to like conditioning of like the people you have on your service where it's like, they teach you that at the end of the day, you follow orders. Obviously those orders have to be lawful. Like you, you can't just be like, um, go shoot up this place for no questions, but take that from like everyday people where it's like, sometimes you might have moments where the order and like lawfulness of an order is kind of muddied. Take that to like a sci-fi setting where they're literally fat grown soldiers fighting against a, a faceless army against like between, between a war that's also between a bunch of ancient wizards. Like I always saw it as like just an extreme of that, an extreme of, I'm here grown to fight this war. I am loyal to the Republic. If the Republic deems the Jedi as the enemy, then they are the enemy. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, I get the first thing, not to sound like a teleprompter, but thank you for your service as a soldier. Um, <laughs> um, but the, no, genuinely, like, thank, thank you. And then secondly, no the, the thing I would say there is, is yeah, ultimately that comes down to like, it, it becomes a preference. and that comes down to what we were saying earlier which is like if you say it's not chips there's a whole bunch of things that you really need to explain for that to make sense that haven't been explained and which i would actually argue you can't really explain satisfactorily but like maybe you can maybe i'm wrong about that 
um, or you have the chips, in which case there are still things you need to explain for the chips to make sense that I don't think the Clone Wars necessarily does a good job of explaining. So it really comes down to just what you think is conceptually tighter, essentially. And obviously we think it's the chips, but you yeah, could. It's... It is feasible to have a world where uh, without the chips, which all made sense. I, I feel like neither, well, I'll say neither, but for me personally, because I, I, I just want to stress, I'm not trying to paint this as like, you're absolutely wrong, I'm right, or vice versa. But to me, it's just like, neither one is really explained the best way it could be and part of me kind of thinks that like because i remember you said in the video where it's like a lot of what feloni does is like leave things to interpretation and i feel like for a long time the order 66 was kind of left to interpretation it was left to kind of like was it a like a trigger word was it like something more ingrained like on a biological sense or was it just a secret order they all knew and so for at least back when I was younger growing up with this, it kind of felt like that was kind of like the consensus discussion of was like debates between people. Oh, was it like something deeper? Was it just a simple order? And then with the EU, at least from the material I kind of ran with, and I noticed, I think it's Battlefront 2 originally has it where it's like it, it kind of just pre it just presented as just an order that is to be followed. And I also think this also goes back to the whole humanization of the clones, which isn't a bad thing. I'm all for that. Um, however, I do think because the three show humanizes it so much and so personally, it kind of gets to that point where it's like, okay, there's no way these guys would realistically follow an order to turn on these people who they've been so friendly with. Because even those ones who like, um, e even though even like the lower. Uh, clones some of them when they have interactions with the jedi it's usually like at least from what we see in the show it's usually pleasant so it, it, it's just like what do you call it? it it just it just feels like either ex either explanation isn't explored enough to really make them work 100 but like th there's there's always some room for the other to work um, I would agree because like Jolly and I keep saying that like the execution is a different thing and like that the way that the chips are executed has been lacking. It's been um, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, disappointing overall. Like there's a lot more they could have done with it uh, that they just haven't. And yes, they could have even explained it a lot better because um, because again, there, there, there are little, there are little things like the whole uh, yes, Lord Sidious and Tup not targeting Anakin um, when he's right in front of him that like those are execution problems. I agree. Um, both both have their issues. Is essentially like I'm agreeing with that. Um, right. Yeah. And just to, just to add to that, it would just be, I I just I think that the, the chips. I think the, the difference is like with the chips explanation, there's a lot less left to chance that you as a writer have to explain because the, whenever you're appealing to vagueness as a writer, like whenever you're appealing to like some, off, we kind of referred to this, you know, earlier with the Batman example. Whenever you as a writer, you make an appeal to something off screen and just go like, well, that just sort of happened. A large part about whether or not an audience is going to believe that is how relevant it is to the plot, like how how crucial that information is for us to understand what the hell is going on. Mm. Um, with something like right, Order sixty six yeah. um, or the lack of like some, you know Order sixty six without the chips, you really have to explain how that's possible because there's just so much that is intuitively wrong with that idea. That if it's just left to an audience and you and you give it any serious consideration for any length of time, you're just going to go, mm, I don't really buy this actually. Um, and actually, you can make the same statement about the chips to a lesser degree with how they were executed. But at least with the chips, it's conceptually a tighter concept that it's easier to explain well. Um, I wish I would say opens up um, possibilities to humanize the clones in ways that are story narratively interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like that's. I, I guess we, we've kind of discussed uh, all this stuff before. So I, I, I don't want to. Sorry, I don't want to kick you, man. But like, if we, if we, if if we have a, a point, and you know, if you have a point that hasn't been brought up, then, then please. Yeah, we're, we're trying to yeah. avoid redundancies if we can. Yeah, I know that that that's kind of my issue because like a lot of what was um, said was just kind of things that like I kind of already agreed with. Which even I was kind of like, oh, maybe I should just leave because there was a lot of points I even like agreed with. Yeah, and stuff it's, like um, that. it's always but, valuable to have a contribution, man. That's so. Thank you for for yeah, doing it. I do appreciate the opportunity to do it. Um, one thing I will kind of say is that like. I keep going back because it, it does I does ultimately just kind of feel like a preference thing because it's like even with the chips, it's like it makes total sense that City is Palpatine, whatever, um, would not leave such a thing up to chance. He would not leave such a um mm -hmm. crucial point to his plan 
up to the possibility that these soldiers he's had created could just say no to the order. But then, at least for me, that could still apply to like constant like mental conditioning throughout their life. Which again, yeah, it is kind of like less surefire than the chip. But at the same time, it's like if you have someone who's basically the child soldiers, like that, that's essentially what the clones are. They are child soldiers. And I have a, like, at least for me, I feel like that is a very powerful thing in terms of like, conv- at least for me, convincing that like, yeah, they were child soldiers all throughout life. All they know is war. All they know is combat. All they know is following orders. So if they get the order, a lot of them are just going to be like, well, that sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. But as, as it's, a writer, still, though, it's still a flimsy is, thing. Yeah. This is this is where I draw the distinction, right? Like imagine where all the writers in that room on, on the Clone Wars, all Star Wars, and we're deciding how it's supposed to be going. What storylines are you getting out of uh, or what nuances are you getting out of a, a no chip scenario that you're not getting with a chip scenario? Because I, I, I honestly can't see any because things like you know, oh, you know, if, if we're just sitting there like, oh, how do we make Palpatine's plan make sense? And someone's like, Well, we could have a, a chip that you know he activates that turns them all into kill bots. Or we could have them be kill bots from birth, um, but in ways where there are like loads of like little loopholes where one of them could slip up and, and spill the beans, or uh, they all know who Sidious is and they're just pretending not to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go I, as a, you know if I was in that writers room, I'm like, let's go with the kill chip because that makes a lot more sense and doesn't require nearly as much to explain to make sense. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the kill chip is definitely like the easier route to go of just simply, especially if you're not gonna go into the harsher, finer details of it it's just like, okay they just have a chip that tells them to do it um I, yeah. I i still i still think that like the conditioning could work but that requires a lot more what work into explaining it as opposed to what they were probably in that room of just being like well what's the best way to do about go about this yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know as a writer what trade-offs are we getting from this this I, this version of the plot versus this other version that we wouldn't get here and i just i just don't see what you lose from the chips that you, you know, I, I just don't see what is lost from going from non-chips to chips. I, every storyline you want with without the chips, you can have with the chips. I just think the chips get you the same result, but more efficiently and without nearly so many loose ends that, that are either hard to explain or in some cases, I actually would argue impossible to explain satisfyingly. Yeah, and like I think- while I would say that like both have their issues, like when we talk about the issues with the chips, it's like, oh, well, why didn't top target Anakin or you know, like, why did they refer to him as Lord Sidious? That doesn't make sense. With Without the chips, like, the issues are things like, why did none of them question it? How did this order get passed without the Jedi knowing about it and obviously strongly opposing it? Um, like, did all the clones know about it from birth? And, like, how did they keep it a secret if so? Um, what does that mean about the clones? And what does that tell us about their characters? Like, there's it's just much larger issues, I think, with the other one. So, like... Yes, it's a preference, and yes, they both have issues, but I, I would still maintain that no chips presents much larger gaps, like gaping wounds, basically. Yeah, I, I still kind of stand by my thing where it's like I feel like the conditioning can be a very effective tool, but I will also concede that it's like that's something that needs to be explained rather than just simply stated because it's like people break conditioning for stuff all the time. Like, well, I'll say all the time, but you know, that is a common thing where it's just like, I mean, freaking Darth Vader kind of goes through it with like braces like the conditioning he's had with palpatine like grooming him since he was a boy so um uh, sure but again it's, it's just that thing of like if that's the level of conditioning you're arguing for as, as a, like oh we could have this level of conditioning to explain things i'm like how is that functionally different from the chips yeah it because that, that, that does yeah it, it just kind of goes back to like i i just I, I just have a strong feeling when it comes to star wars because i love star wars but i do feel like there's a lot of things in it that aren't like as well written out like a lot of the things work better as ideas rather than the actual execution and i do feel like the order 66 in general like chip or no chip is kind of one of those things because it does kind of have like because even with the chips it's like because i always think it's like because i know they explain in the show and i know you talk about too where it's like how come no one ever like found the chips which it's like you know, if they're designed to not be found so easily, though, of course, that's the easier explanation. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, if there's anything specific. But, yeah, it's hard for me to make my point without just defaulting back to just the preference of it. And it also, like, because I think a lot of the my favorite stories with that, because I know Battlefront 2 is kind of like the one 
constantly looked at where it's like they're all I, I, maybe it's from Battlefront 2 I can't remember exactly where it's from where it's it's like the clones are sitting in the transport and they're all they're having like that thought of like oh who who's got the traitor stop but it's like none of them are brave enough to like step forward and do something about it kind of thing which I think that in isolation is a compelling thing but that doesn't necessarily like you couldn't necessarily take that and apply it to every single clone that was ever made. Like, surely some of them would have just been like, no, we're not going to do this. Yeah. Um, well, cool. And in that case, um, thanks very much for coming on, man. And it's been a pleasure, a real pleasure talking to you. Uh, uh, no, so no, I hope you have a, a, really, a really good day. And um, I'm glad you enjoy Chief's videos, and Chief will have more videos coming. And I, I hope I will have, not I hope, I will have more videos, <laughs> more videos coming yes. soon. I will explain that towards the end of the stream, guys. I promise you it's coming. But uh, no, please, please do tune into that. Thank you for coming, right. man. Thank thanks, you for man. having me. Later. Dude, I can't believe we met Sauron. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't want to criticize his battle strategies too much because you know that whole siege of Gondor. There's there's some there's some iffy iffy decisions going on there. But you're just anyway. a hater. Uh, there I'm were a, a few super chats though. Um, All right, let's deal with them. Let's see what we got. Got another from uh, another one from Wisdom for five dollars. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, could they hide the training under the guys confronting? I'm sorry, the guys confronting or defending against Dooku or Grievous? Uh, how to deal against a lightsaber or a Sith? Uh, so I guess what he's asking is like, could you say Order sixty six is just generally execute, uh, execute like people lightsaber with lightsabers? Because like, I don't. Well, I, at that point, I would say like, given that there's only one Dooku and one Grievous, and even like, like you know, even including Asajj Ventress, there's only three lightsaber wielders at the start of this war. Um, I would question, and we didn't even know that they would; these guys would be fighting lightsaber wielders when they were when they were designed and born right. Because as far as everyone's concerned, Dooku started that war ten years later. Uh -huh. I would have serious questions about why they have a fight lightsaber people protocol, and even if it's specifically to address Dooku and Grievous, surely there's questions over like how much of a waste of a time that is to train every single clone um, and the cost of training every single clone just on the off chance they run into one of these three chuckle chuckle. If if it were not canonically established that Sifo DS died before episode one, which it now is because of Tales, but ignoring that, could we say that maybe Sifo, like the argument would be Sifo DS uh, added that in as a factor because he knew that the Sith were back because of, you know, Darth Maul being a thing in episode one? I mean, you could write that in, but then I still have our questions that we always have of like, and the Jedi are cool with this, of taking command of an army that's been trying yeah, to kill like, them. <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I still wouldn't accept that. Um, but it, I mean, maybe I don't know. Especially um, after Dooku said, "Like, hey, so the set, you know, like it's like, oh, there's a kill order on this army you're leading," and the Jedi are like, "Oh, really? Who who gets to throw that to throw that kill switch? Where does the order get from them?" And they're like, "Well, it's either the Chancellor or the Senate as a whole." And you're like, "You mean the Senate mm. and the Chancellor that like, we've just been told by Dooku was compromised by the Sith who want to kill us all?" Um, yeah, no, we're good. Thanks. It's a no from me. <laughs> it's a no from me, pal. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sit this one out. Actually, you guys have fun with your war. <laughs> Uh, and then we got this. This is not a super chat, but Daft Tony donated 99 cents. So thank you for that. He then super chatted. No chip equal equals Palpatine doing massive mind trick. Easy. Unironically, <laughs> that's not even the worst. Uh, like, that's not even the worst anti argument, uh, anti chip argument I've heard. Like, um, honest, honestly, if Palpatine can just resurrect himself from the dead now, then sh and yeah, throw, sure, lightning, maybe, throw enough lightning to destroy a whole super fleet of ships, then may, sure, maybe not? maybe Palpatine can just mass mind trick uh, all of the cl my my soda bottle just fell out of the trash can. Um, it's yeah, maybe. Possessed. No, it's just my trash can is full, and I need to take it out. I'll do it after the stream. Well I guess I have a question though. If you can mind control everyone to that extent, why bother with the war at all? Just mind control everyone into declaring you emperor straight away. Yeah, I think I think so. Um, I don't know who it was, but I remember that someone argued that Palpatine is able to mind trick all the Senate into uh, like agreeing to let him be emperor, and it's like that's so fucking stupid. That um, no, like that's I'm, not true, but like that'd be so that. fucking dumb if it was. <laughs> Um, That's like, anyway. like the whole like Jar Jar was secretly mind tricking people because his hands <laughs> wave whenever he's like talking. <laughs> his mouth moves jolly, and he vaguely says the thing that the person is saying. Anyway, uh, we have Devil's Advocate on. Hello. Hi. That's my job. Hi, Devil's Advocate. <laughs> no, 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 no. It 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 we uh, it, uh, I who would advocate devils today. 
So uh, <laughs> when I started to listen to this translation, I was pro cheap, but um, I decided to find some arguments uh, against cheap. Uh, uh, Excuse me, English is not my native language, so if you okay. no, no worries, no. understand something, you can ask freely. Uh, but uh, when I start to listen to this uh, translation, I become uh, to uh, to thought that maybe there is no chip. Um, as I saw, there is some problem with logic uh, of uh, Shiv. Uh, he uh, decided to throw away main uh, logical principle, which called comes blade. If you uh, can explain something simpler, you should use this explanation. He add a new entity chip to explanation. Uh, so let's start uh, to explain this more thoroughly. Uh, can we explain all that happens uh, without uh, relying on this biochip uh, thing? I think that uh, I can. Let's start about order 66. Uh, as uh, I understand what chief means, uh, order 66 is a trigger phrase uh, which uh, switch some biochip on and uh, order uh, for uh, troopers to kill uh, Jedi. I think it's not an order, it's a code phrase. I think that there is at least 65 more orders and even more, and they go on in pack, uh, like a uh, code words. Uh, order 34, uh, do something. Order 66, kill Jedi. How it can uh, pass through Senate and under Jedi order? It's a question of um, formulation. As we know, uh, Shiv, uh, not you, but Palpatine, is a good uh, and smooth speaker. So he can use some very um, uh, wide and broad uh, description, formulation about this order, which will uh, trigger pretty special uh, effects uh, on special conditions. Say, uh, as I see, order 66 means this uh, Jedi goes rogue, it's a traitor, kill him. Okay, it looks fine for Senate because there is history of rogue Jedi. It looks fine for uh, rogue troops, clone war, uh, clone troops. Uh, it looks fine for Jedi because they know that there are many, uh, pretty much, uh, rogue Jedi was in history. Uh, so, uh, what do you think about this point? Uh, so, I, can I address the Occam's Razor thing first? Because I think that's that's kind of interesting. Um, if, if you don't mind, Chief. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay, so with the Occam's Razor of like, well, the, the, having no chips is simpler than having chips, and therefore we should just go yep. with the simpler explanation. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that follows. So, the, the fact that you're adding the chips doesn't make it more complicated, because... You're, what you're actually doing is swapping out a bunch of unexplained factors that need explaining for the singular factor of the chip. So if anything, the chip is simplifying things quite drastically. Uh, which is um, honestly what some well, like what, what most people would argue and uh, like against yeah. the chips is that it makes it over oversimplified. Oversimplifies it if anything. That's what, what usually not not say. agree yeah. because you should have a chip technology uh, which can apply to clone troops. There is no points in main uh, Star Wars history which points that such technology indeed. So you invented invented uh, something to explain your point of view. Right, but hang on, but that. The nature of a writer inventing a, a a new plot device or a new thing in their plot to explain something isn't intrinsically bad just because they've invented something new that they didn't have in a previous you know a previous version of the story. Like if a sequel introduces, like when Empire Strikes Empire Strikes Back came out and was like, look, there are Force ghosts. Those Force ghosts weren't intrinsically stupid because they hadn't been in A New Hope. That's just not how it works. Um, point. I got yeah, it. Just, just I to, got it. Uh, invented a new plot device is not bad uh, itself, but uh, if we want to select uh, one hypothesis from two, we have chips or we have no chips, we should uh, try to explain the hypothesis we have no chips because it's more simpler. 
but it's not simpler. I mean, this is the thing we've just pushed back on. Like, there's so many factors. Like, without the chips, there are so many factors you have to account for in order for that to make uh, sense. Uh, that th having the chips as a point of my um, my arguments. Dark Lord, thanks for Sauron, uh, make very good points and explain part of my arguments about conditioning. Uh, think about it. Uh, all clone troopers are uh, conditioned in main uh, area without access to some external um, ex uh, to some external influence. So uh, main problem of conditioning to overcome what have uh, innate uh, on uh, this person and uh, the uh, influence which uh, exists because a person exists in outer world there is no such problems uh, you uh, you control uh, how uh, stormtroopers um, how clone troopers sorry it's not troopers yet how clone troopers rise from uh, the boss to their go, uh, going to our world, um, uh, Dark Lord Sauron. Uh, so uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna uh, go yeah. ahead and cut you off here. Um, so are you, are you just repeating uh, the points that the last person said? Uh, yep, I emphasis that this is the main um, thing. Okay, that, so, so uh, sorry, hang on, sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't want to cut you off. But we we did lay out the rules at the beginning of the stream, right? That if people okay. Repeat, repeat previous people's points without adding to it. That okay. we're going to just have to hurry, as a point, hurry along. As a point, uh, I don't understand how chip can pass uh, some control because we ha have uh, Boba Fett as our source of uh, clone troopers. Uh, so we have his brain scan, his uh, map of neurons, and it would be, it should be compared to uh, other clone troopers to see if they are uh, invalid or if there uh, the, the are any problems when we produce in this one. So well, no, because the clones aren't perfect copies of Django. This is established in, you know, in Attack of the Clones. They've been modified specifically oh. to make them more compliant. So I know okay. if you look at their brains and their brains are fundamental. Also, there's the other thing there of like the fact they've grown up with different experiences and different trainings means that their brain is going to be wired in ways that are fundamentally different from Django's because, you know, Good in the same point. way that identical twins have different brain wirings because they're not the same person. And they haven't got the same experiences. Good point. But we can't rely on uh, Clone Wars uh, when they uh, contradict main uh, trilogy and prequel trilogy because uh, this is uh, just an unre uh, unreliable so uh, narrator because but that's not from, that's not from the clone points... wars we, we we know this from attack of the clones attack of the clones is the film that introduced the idea that these the clones have been modified uh... it's, it's literally what um lama say says to to obi-wan is like um the, we modify their modify behavior them. to make them less independent and, yep uh... behavior but it not means that we modified that, that they modified uh clones brains they modified behavior yeah behavior but the brain controls behavior by, by, well, hang on, hang like on. But what do you think controls behavior if not a brain? Yeah, Addition. you have to modify the brain. And the, no, and the you can't modify no, someone's behavior without no, no, modifying no. their brains. Let's start that a source for, for clone troopers was selected Boba Fett, very specific uh, man which follow all orders for money, doesn't think about it. He can kill anyone. What uh, they make with Boba Fett in uh, his series, we, will, we, we don't discuss this. It's ugly. It's disgusting. So Boba Fett is a bounty hunter. He kills for money. He kills for uh, orders. So he will choose uh, because uh, his special behavior, so that it can be modified to be more obedient. Right. Right, but you have to modify the brains in order to make someone more obedient. That's like behavior is determined by the brain. That's, that's the brain there, is literally is the there, seat of all your neurological is there behaviors. Is a place where uh, directly said that they modified brain in uh, original on prequel trilogy? I didn't recall. Well, that. I, Maybe I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. I don't mean. I don't mean to sound a little mocking. But what do you think they changed, if not the brain, to modify their behaviors? Like was Beha it tendons in their feet? Just behavior. Same kids. Same. Th there is many. Um, Oh, stories about twins that uh, identical, uh, physically and genetically identical, but grows in different uh, families and grows to different peoples. Uh, so you yes, can modify brains behavior are different. No, hang on, because, touching... because their yes? brains are differently wired. Like identical twins do not have the same wiring of brain. That's not how brains work. Brains are flexible. Like 
I don't again. I don't want to get sidetracked too much into See, neuroscience, but like just, brains are are rewired constantly yes, all the time. Yes, They're very yes, plastic. I understand. They they re rewired. So you can rewire brain while uh, grow your child, while condition it, while grooming it, if you want. Right. Right. But again, so how is that functionally different from a writing perspective from the chips? And I, I feel like again, sorry, I don't I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but I feel like we're going around in circles, and these are points we've heard from previous speakers. So I'm. I'm a little reticent to carry on with this with this this particular discussion unless you have something new to add that hasn't already been addressed. Um, uh, I don't want to I don't want to okay. have time taken up from people who might be waiting in the wings. Right. Okay, you say that. Uh... Okay, I have. Uh... This is this was my main point. So if you think that it's lead nowhere, so okay, thank you for a chat. It was. Uh... A mild pleasure. Thank you. All right. Okay, yeah, thanks for coming on. Bye. All righty then. Okay. Uh, um, I don't know if we had any super chats in between in that. I'm going to check just real quick. Uh, nope. Okay. All right then. Um, yeah, I mean, goes without saying, we'll, 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 like, we'll repeat some of the points, uh, some of the, uh, the rules here. We are trying not to be redundant. So, like, please, if you've heard, arguments already made that you were going to make unless you have something else to add to that that wasn't gone over you know in the discussion please just don't bring it up again because you know yeah because because it, it just takes time away from people who might actually have something to add that hasn't been discussed before and we're trying to make this as as wide and varied as possible so that people can refer back to this video and like look at all the arguments if it was or at least as many arguments as we can possibly fit in well that plus if you're you know watching over the stream it can it'll get very frustrating uh, yeah. if, if we're just Repetitive talking about the same thing over and, over and over and over um you know i'm still a youtuber i'd like to have people continually engaged that's, you know that's a lie you're, you're a sith lord oh <laughs> um, but anyway, so the next person we have is Dark the Relentless, who is now in. Um, okay. I, I love your. I love how you call Dark the Relentless, but you've got the most cheerful, friendly like. <laughs> that's that's the contradiction. Anyway, you guys hearing me right? Uh, uh, you're a little you quiet. Need to the, might need to raise the volume there. Uh, yeah. Hold on a sec. Let me raise the green on my thing. All right. Uh, tell me if it is that better. There we go. Much better. That's yes. Better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So first you dealt with Sauron. Now you deal with a VTuber. <laughs> the whole... I can't decide which is more evil. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So what I want to explain first off, I know you said earlier that you're 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 trying to focus this more on like the argument with uh, just just focusing on like the media, like the uh, the movies and stuff like that, not focusing too much on the books and crap. But I'll say that the majority of the people that are going to argue why the chips are bad are going to take it from the books and stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. Sure, yeah. but we're not, we're not, we're not arguing that the books don't make sense necessarily. Because I mean, I haven't yeah. even read all the books, so I couldn't possibly make that statement. What all we're right, just simply so... saying is that, like, you can't, you can't dismiss the chips as in intrinsically bad just because it's not what the EU oh, shows. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. to me, I feel like the chips are unnecessary because I've read a lot of the books. That's my take on it, though. Um, out of curiosity, you've have you read the uh, the Republic Commando series? Uh, so I've read book one and a good portion of book two. I have okay. not watched. I've not read it all the way through. Okay. Uh, how about you, Jolly? You read that at all or no? Uh, I have. I've not read the, those books. No. Okay. Uh, through those books, they explain a lot, both like some of mm. the uh, flaws in the vagueness of the writing that is both canon and non-canon <laughs> and uh other things it's mainly comes down to uh really they explain how like the clones were trained by the kaminoans and like the differences between like the regulars and the arcs and the commandos. right the commandos yeah yes so first off if you if i'll, I'll just print this out uh flat and true the Kaminoans are freaking monsters, okay? <laughs> yes, okay. yes, yes. From what I've read, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the Kaminoans are freaking monsters, all right? The way, first off, I'll just say this. The Kaminoans didn't see the clones as people. They saw them as product. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so... I mean, to them, they were. They were livestock for to, 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 to sell, you know? Exactly. That's, that's the thing. And that's why they had, like, near-perfectionist standards... For these things they it took Django to convince um the the freaking 
Kaminoans to like make the ARC troopers and in, into an extension the commandos because he's just like, listen, we want these guys to actually have, you know, intelligence. <laughs> right. Because the Kaminoans, their standards were like, all right, we don't like free thinking. We don't like personality quirks. Okay. You are a good little basically wet droid trooper. You will do what you are commanded for the client that is paying us to make you. And if you don't like that, you get reconditioned or recycled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. And if you get reconditioned, you basically come back as a vegetable. Recycled is, clo is uh, code for killed, in case you didn't get that. <laughs> right. Well, so, yeah. okay, can, I, can I ask if, because um, I just want to try and simplify the argument, right? So, so we have a statement to work with. Are you basically saying that making the clones like essentially just people with a, but with a hidden chip is actually out of character for the Kaminoans because it, it detracts from their, them being pro like perfect products for sale? Yes, and yeah, in, a, in an extent, yes. Because, it, like I said, I feel like it's unnecessary because they're already freaking hard asses who try to drill the shit out of the majority of like these personalities and free thinking, with the exception, of course, again, for the ARCs. The clone commandos, and to an extent, like the clone. Officers. Well, yeah, but I mean, if we're going by the EU, we are also shown clones who are able to break free of that conditioning and still exactly, be like, like with that, agency and independency. Yes, and that's that's the thing too. They actually say that because the clones that caught on and they realize they it's it, it's it's talked in the Republic Commando book too. The the clones that actually could fucking think. <laughs> They, they realized, yeah, I kind of need to, like, hide my personality quirks and stuff like that because if I show them here when I'm getting trained by these guys, I'm probably going to get killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, yeah. I actually think that's kind of an interesting point, which, to be fair, I hadn't actually considered before, which is, is, is it out of character for the Kaminoans to, to give the clones that le the level of independence we see pre-chip activation? Well, well I, guess I guess what I'm arguing is that, like, I, it would be if it, if it, if it was that like they didn't try at all to uh, suppress them, but I don't think we can conclude that just based on the way that they are uh, yeah. characterized in the Clone Wars. I just I think what it is is they might have done that to an extent, but maybe there's only so much that you really can do. Well, yeah, uh, yeah I guess again, the, the thing is for that criticism to make to hold water, right? Is we have to know what the capabilities of like you know. In the EU, they're clearly writing a, a version of this fiction where the brainwashing techniques are a lot more advanced and effective and efficient than I think the Clone Wars wants to write it. And neither one of those yeah, is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. right? It's just different ways of doing the same effect uh, in order to produce different kinds of story that you want to tell. Um, and then we can come in down to talk about execution. I will say, though, that I think the Clone Wars does imply that there is at least some level of brainwashing going on or conditioning because people like Rex really struggle. Like, you know, when he meets Cutler Quain, for example, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, he just, he's like, you're a traitor. And like, I don't care that you wanted this for yourself. You shouldn't want these things for yourself. You're a traitor. Like, he doesn't even have any arguments. He's well, just I, like, you're a traitor, I, I, you're a traitor, you're a traitor. I even go further than that. Like, every time Cut presents him with a, like, a question, like, why do you care about the Republic? What has it done for you? Why, why do you owe them anything? And why do you want to stay? Like, he doesn't really have good answers other than, I mean, that's where my brothers are. And it's my duty. And I have to. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, he doesn't have, real reasons he just he just it's just the way that he's been conditioned to think yes. yeah even the i can't remember his name the clone it's the same episode that slick is in the clone who takes the the finger bones the fingers of um droids as trust oh, his, his name is actually chopper believe it or not oh wow wow people are, <laughs> people are called chopper just love their war crimes hey eh? um, <laughs> but like chopper the clone you know which he didn't really do anything like he's not stripping teeth from living people or from you know dead humans or whatever he's taking like bits of metal from scrap robots and yeah. His explanation is like, well, I just felt I was owed something. I, I needed this catharsis for my trauma. And everyone's like, no, nope, out of line, wildly out of line. You're defective. You're like, there's something really <laughs> wrong with you. And I'm like, that probably well, I mean, speaks to a level of like the, uh, conditioning and social the bad batch. Have. The Bad Batch are fucking social outcasts because of just how out of the norm they are. Yeah, but yeah. that one was established that they did that intentionally. <laughs> just because they're like, oh, true. all right, let's see what happens if we do this. <laughs> But it, but it, it doesn't change anything from the the way that, that you know from the implications that makes about how the rest of the clones are conditioned or like the fact that the Kaminoans made the Bad Batch deliberately um, doesn't doesn't change anything about how the way the Bad Batch are treated by the other clones implies certain things about how those clones well, yeah, are that, raised. That's what I'm getting at is that like the clones are so conditioned for this sort of form and order that like the Bad Batch just don't fit into, so they just immediately treat them like shit just because they're different. Uh, no, that, um, comes, that comes down to a thing too, because again, it's it's um, 
I mean, from from the clones' perspective, they're pretty much just like, all right, everyone is type of my family type thing, especially because. There's another thing, too. They're in a, in a closed uh, world. They've been raised for the equivalent of, what, like, ten, uh, like nine, ten years or something, but because accelerated growth, that translates to, like, 18 to 20. So all, all they really know is, like, the people that are in that facility, and the majority of them are, you know, clones that are brothers and stuff like that. So, like, even if you're a little weird, I consider you part of my family. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. What well, actually? One thing I would also say is that the the clones that we most often see in the show are Anakin's battalion, um, yeah. and of course, Anakin being sort of his own social outcast in his way, and a, a sort of a maverick and aloof Jedi, he would foster that that same type of uh, independence and creativity in his clones. Whereas when we're shown other battalions like uh, Plo Koon's battalion or the Coruscant Guard or like even Obi-Wan's clones, like you don't see that nearly as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's they're not nearly as much of independent. Like, you know, it's like, again, that joke with the robots of we're independent thinkers. <laughs> um, yeah. You just Rider, don't get Rider. that really with the clones. <laughs> Other than it's, Anakin's it's, clones, you don't really see uh, it. The outside Simlet thing too, which to a degree, the clones kind of, some of the clones had that too at Kamino when Jango Fett brought in like the, the 150 other trainers to help train mostly the commandos, but that kind of got like trickled down a little bit. And that was mostly Mandos and Corellians, I believe. Mm -hmm. And like, and like Mandalorians and, and like bounty hunters and, and those types of people. That's what that, yeah, that's what I meant with the Mandos. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, my brain don't yeah. ignore me. It's fine. He, he, has, a, he has a chip. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's twitching. Uh, I was gonna say blink three times. Are you okay, Shiv? <laughs> anyway, uh, what the fuck? Where did where was I? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's again. It's a number of like the repressive crap too, and it's a lot of between like the conditioning and the flash cloning and shit like that. Because how that works, they portray shit directly into your brain, and that's a thing too. But um, with all this mentality, they're also you know. The equivalent of 18 to 20 years taught all this. Okay. Okay. Stat sticks. <laughs> okay. Especially especially when that's like a from birth thing. But um, essentially, like in order of like chain of command, stuff like that, because I'll bring that up too. The clones are taught like, okay, the Supreme Com uh, Chancellor, that's your number one. And they're also taught he's never wrong, which is a fucking lie, but that's what they're taught. <laughs> okay. Then it's the Jedi, then it's the regular chain of command from there, okay? They're also taught that the Jedi are basically like ideal beings, basically gods, and they can never do wrong, and then they get thrown out in the Geonosis, and we all know how that happened. <laughs> how that worked. Right, and then they, they sort of see the more human and mundane version of the Jedi that, like, like they deified them one way, and then they actually, they are just people with flaws yeah. who, who fail and fuck and, up. And that creates a bit of delusion, because, again, 18 to 20 years being told, yeah, they're gods, and you realize, wow, the majority of these people are idiots. <laughs> or they, they just don't know what they're doing, because they've never been taught how to lead soldiers into battle, yeah. Exactly, and that's what it is, because that's that's the perspective like i'm saying they're they don't know any better because they've just been on kaminoan all their life until now and then they get unleashed would, into the big scary galaxy <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that argument actually support the the clones uh, the, the chips being a better uh storytelling mechanic then because by your own admission you're like well they've been trained and brainwashed for 20 years to think the, the jedi are basically gods and then one battle happens and they're like oh actually these guys suck so the conditioning can't be that great if they can be broken that easily yes and no it's i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to that <laughs> There's there's more. There's more to it. Um, so now when they get unleashed and after all this crap and like I said, the way that the Clone Wars is portrayed is supposed to be like, you know, the grandest, widespread, most disastrous freaking uh, war ever. Like imagine, you know, a combination of, let's say, Vietnam and um, the Wilderness Campaign from the American Civil War and uh, Napoleon's and like every world war ever. Napoleon's Russian Campaign and all the other like shitty freaking conflicts, specific theaters and stuff like that you can think of all wrapped up into one. And then you're playing that on repeat for three years. Yeah, sure. But again, wouldn't that again be an argument for, you know, because these clones are going to go through, as you just pointed out, a lot of horrendous crap. Mm -hmm. So any conditioning you do in, 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 in training conditions is going to be a danger of being undone. And if that's the case, why would Palpatine trust to the conditioning to execute the kill orders? 
that's yeah. another element because he fact it's it's funny because they like i said the kaminoans viewed him as product but i think palpatine was counting a little bit on like the human element because they wanted a human clone army instead of droids but like i said i'm gonna get to that because there's there's two elements with that the first is again just to basically put them through the ringer and then you know again experience all this crap along with mostly superior officers that aren't clones that have no idea what the hell they're doing and make very dumb decisions and all this other crap but because they're goddamn conditioned to be professional soldiers for the most part they ain't gonna do much about that because again they're gonna obey the chain of chain of command even though they don't want to do that in some cases right so that implies that they they uh can choose not to even if they if they want to or even if they don't want to yes because again they're they're still human beings they can choose but they are heavily encouraged not to and that was their upbringing that's right, so, but the thing is, you're, tr oh. you're trying to have your cake and eat it almost here, because you're trying to say, like, oh, Palpatine, like, the, the conditioning works as an argument for why Palpatine can th throw a kill switch order and, and these guys carry it out, but you're also saying that Palpatine was counting on them overcoming that conditioning to come to hate their, their Jedi overlords for being, in, you know, incompetent battle commanders who didn't give a crap about them. And I'm like, okay, let's even, <laughs> I don't think that makes sense for Palpatine, but let's, let's say that he did both those things and was trying to play both sides and somehow not have that clash horribly. Um, you're still then arguing that Palpatine is, is hoping that enough of the clones are going to obey the order, none of them are going to question it, or at least, you know, so few of them will question it that, like, it's not significant, and then just hope that you wrap up the murder of 10,000 Jedi in one day without it going horribly wrong. And bear in mind, there's other factors here as well, like the simultaneity of it. Like, you need to make sure these clones don't all decide to attack their Jedi at different times, or they're going to sense the intentions to strike and, and, and maybe, maybe, you know, get out of it. And you really, as Palpatine, do not want like 10% of the Jedi, which is like a thousand Jedi, running around your galaxy, causing shit in your new empire. Like, isn't that, I mean, again, I know it's, it's from a non-canon source, but there's that bit in, um, it's not, sorry, that's not non-canon, it's Revenge of the Sith, right? Where like, um, Palpatine literally says, if even a single Jedi survives, it'll be civil war without end. Mm -hmm. well, if they're not all destroyed is what he said. So like, yeah. I think if, if a single Jedi survived, he would, he would have been fine. But like, I take your meaning. He yeah, sorry, he, he wants them all to die. I match as much my as possible. Yeah, I'm yeah. matching my sources because it's like if they're not all destroyed, it's the Revenge of the Sith one, and then in Force Unleashed, he's like, if, it, if even a single Jedi survives this rebellion, we've unwittingly created, will be our undoing. Mm. Hmm. Um, Which I, like, I think is kind of dumb, but like mm, that's yeah, a different sure. thing. Yeah, the, yeah. Po the point still stands, though. Like, you do not want a number of Jedi running around after your new order has been declared. If you're Palpatine, that's really bad because, mm -hmm. particularly in those early days of the Empire, where you do not have a firm grip on the galaxy. And people are, are, you know, maybe not going to be so willing to just be like, wait, Palpatine declared himself emperor. He can just do that. What the hell? Okay, so hang on. Especially Before we continue this, um, first of all, Lord Wahoo is spamming. Uh, don't spam. Please stop spamming. <laughs> but also he's uh, he's uh, as like arguing a point that's already been made that they didn't target Anakin. And yeah, why did they target Maul and, and Ahsoka and not Anakin? We literally we've, already we've addressed ad that. Yeah, we've addressed that. Yeah, you could tell he just joined. <laughs> yeah, probably. But don't spam. I, don't know. I well, will put you in timeout if you do that. There, there is, there is a little bit of a counter move that was done to like negate that point that you're making, Jolly. A little bit, it doesn't remove it completely, and it does happen because in either case, they're Jedi that did survive, regardless. But oh, sure, there's... but then that's a problem of execution, right? Because like yeah, I hear that a lot exactly. where people go, well, even with the chips, like you know, an argument I've seen is like, oh, well, with the chips, we seem to have even more Jedi surviving, and I'm like, yeah, that's because the writers don't know how to write their own concepts. Uh, yeah, that's not because I mean... the chips are a bad idea. I mean, you can, I mean, I think people just didn't understand how big the Jedi Order was. But anyway, that's a different point. Um, there's, there's a thing that Palpatine did, like, about, I don't know, two years into the war, I believe. He just, he was playing around, because the Kaminoans are not, like, the only people that do cloning in the galaxy. It's just, they're the ones that produce the most efficient, if you want them to do complex things. You're going to, are you going to bring up the, the Sparty the cylinder? Sparta, yeah. Sparta, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's that because he did that it was a little bit of a counter it was just like a, a uh what's the word uh a placeholder until he got certain things uh, established but he made like an entire different uh, secret clone army he hid them on the freaking uh uh moon one of the moons of freaking uh course 
That's how I... Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. He, made, he made at least two million of them, as far as I know. But the thing with the Sparadai clones is that they're basically wet droids. They are well, but, very, very simplistic. You can make my them question. In hang on, my, my, my question here would be like, if you're having, if you're, if we're admitting that like the non-chip version of canon is so flimsy that it requires a whole other clone army to be spawned into existence in the canon to explain the discrepancy, then I might just turn around and be like, well, then clearly that's not a good idea to be using the non-chip version of events. That if you're having to plug such a large writing gap by inventing a whole new clone army, whole you know, an entire clone army, second clone army to cover that gap then maybe we should think of a different idea for the story. Well, yeah, but that also, again, comes to the whole, these people like to write with, um, as you said, interpretations and shit like that. So the people who did the AU have to do crap like that good to explain Yeah, the, the sp <laughs> RD cylinders, if I understand them correctly, were only introduced, not only to connect to the Thrawn trilogy, but like to explain why uh, the, the, you know, there was, there weren't so, because, you know, Attack of the Clones established very few clones um in terms it, of how the quantity of them. No, so they, it's, it's so they had to like create the these to units. add to the to the uh yeah, to the yeah, army mm -hmm. yeah well even if, if if a unit is like i don't know a, a million clones so that's 200 million that are ready that's still yeah. not a well, lot that'd be two hundred thousand times a million yeah exactly which is again an interpretation freaking problem and again that's just the writing Sure, but then my point then, as a writer, like, so, like, again, let's do the hypothetical. Like, you and I, we're in the writer's room. We've only got the movies to work with. And someone's like, how do we, you know, we haven't got a lot for Order 66. So how do we, how do we flesh that, flesh that out in a way that makes sense? And someone's like, well, why don't we write it so that there's only, like, 2 million clones? Like, the 200,000 is literally just 200,000. And then we're going to invent this whole other army to, to cover the discrepancy that obviously causes. And uh, they're going to be, like, wet droids. And then, like, to cover the discrepancy that that creates, we're going to add this thing. And I'm just sitting there as a writer being like, why don't we just have a kill switch? <laughs> why doesn't Palpatine just have a kill switch installed? Wouldn't that make more sense? Like, and, like, and, and if that's not a possibility with clones, then use droids like we went over earlier. But also, like, we're the writers. We decide what's possible. <laughs> You know, unless it contradicts the movies outright, mm. we can have whatever we want. So I don't, I don't get why we're doing the more, like obviously internally inconsistent and flimsy version of events rather than just go yeah chip, which functionally does exactly the same thing, but has a lot less plot problems in terms of inconsistencies we need to explain. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's just I feel like they're unnecessary given certain elements that I've been familiar. <laughs> I've been interacted with oh sure but, but, but if i might then i get what you're saying it's 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 better in like a writing standpoint to explain a lot of inconsistencies but also you know the people that are writing this and you oh no inconsistencies are going to be a thing regardless <laughs> oh yeah that, that's well that's so <laughs> true so i mean i don't know i mean if we're talking in concept that's not necessarily true they could write it and they could write it well and that's what you would, you would hope from any writer writing anything. That's sure is the know. point. If they wrote it well, half the arguments wouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, sure. I, I mean, I, I still think that people were, that... were against them just in concept when, like, yeah. that first dropped. And... I mean, like, yeah. again, I just, I just view it as unnecessary because I'm like, you already have all this crap, which let me, let me say this other point that may or may not come up because this is like the Order 66 argument. Um, it's been, it's been established in a few different EU sources and stuff like that, that Order 66 was like a pair of like uh, 150 contingency orders for any number of things that could happen. And it was just a key phrase that the clones instantly know what to do because they're all required to memorize all these things. And it was both in, uh, approved by the Senate and the Jedi Council. Right, but isn't that intrinsically a problem? Like imagine you're the Jedi, again, we, we kind of cover this already, but like imagine you're the Jedi Council and the Senate's like, okay, we've got a bill that's going to be like formalizing the army that the grand, you know, the the, the, the chancellor's just instituted with his wartime powers. And here's the here's the military manual where there are 150 orders that you guys, the Jedi, who are going to be the generals, need to sign off on that you're okay with this. And the Jedi look them over and they're like, hang on, there's a kill order for us. What's that about? And so I was like, well, you know, it's in case we ever go rogue. And the Jedi are like, yeah, but we just got told that like the 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 Senate is controlled or at least being influenced by a Sith Lord who wants us all dead. And now you're saying that the Senate can control a kill switch for us. Yeah, we're not cool with that. Yeah, it's right. a no. It's a no from you me. Would, you yeah. would think if they had more intelligence than what they're normally shown. But there's, again, there's a, an excuse for that because the Jedi view that Town Dooku was lying for with that statement. Okay, okay but, but we're, we're also shown that some of them... Just... 
or no, hang on. We're also shown from Windu that some of them are still at least considering it. Like they're not, they're not ready to rule oh, it yeah, out. Just I mean, yet. They're all, yeah, I know. I know they're, 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 they view it as a lie, but they're also like, in case it's not. It's okay. But if, if I'm, if I'm told this um, about like what Dooku said to Obi-Wan um, and I'm, I'm still on the fence about whether or not it's true. And then I find out that the Senate has proposed a kill switch for the army that would like wipe us out immediately. Should they just decide to, I'd be like, Oh, okay. So he was probably you telling think the truth. It would a bunch of flood flags. Yeah, and normally it would, but the Jedi well, hang on, this is dogmatic well, this comes to, my... to the Republic. Well, no, hang on. So this comes to my other point, which is at that point, your defense of the Jedi accepting that is just the Jedi are not just like, not just the Jedi are stupid, but the Jedi are so chronically idiotic that at this point, I'm like, why do we, why do we even care if they get killed? Like, these people are not only yeah, like, that's this is moronic the... to the nth degree. That's kind of the the excuse that's coming up, and even I saw that when I read that. I'm just like, so you're just telling me the council was just dumb, and I'm like, yeah, okay. well, it's, it's, it's not just dumb. It's 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 I you mean, know, you're, suicidally I mean, you're, you're, stupid. Exactly, and like again, the whole with you with your video, Shiva, the whole them learning about the trips and, and uh, chips, and then learning that basically Dooku ordered the order too. Yep. Yeah. yeah again, the, the, the council. The council uh, yeah, the that's council all really smart. stupid. The, the council, council is isn't smart. The council is not smart. They are they are blindly dogmatic to the republic. They have like that like best buddy type situation where even if the, like the senate's basically raging, uh, rampaging their fucking fridge and eating all their food and leaving their shit everywhere, they're just gonna be like, yeah, no, we're best friends. See everything he does for me, guys. <laughs> well, okay, so I think uh, this is worth. Well, hang on, we're, we're there's... running out of time. Uh, actually, we've gone over for a few minutes, so let's try to wrap this up if we can. Okay, that's it. Okay, well, in that case, like, can I just make this last point? Because it's, it's it's a general point about this kind of defense that you you and I have made to some of our friends before who've, who've used it with other films, which is if you're going to play the well, he, this character or this group of characters would do X because they're stupid. Therefore, you don't. It doesn't have to make sense. They're just thick, right? That's the excuse. Mm -hmm. That's not good enough. As a writer, it's not enough to just be like this person is stupid. Therefore, they did something like contrived to make the plot happen the way I want it to happen. Mm -hmm. You have to explain why and how they are stupid in the ways required to allow for that to be plausible um, yeah, no, I mean, you can't I just like too. you can't I just hand wave like oh the jedi the jedi order just don't care that like they're so stupid they don't care that there's a kill order out on them i'm like well no <laughs> i'm sorry i don't buy that I, yeah no i mean it's a writing thing and i do agree with you on that it's just that the excuse is that a they hide it behind the fact that you know there have been dark jedi rogue jedi stuff like that and that's why the order is in place and shit like that that's the excuse too again the jedi are are pretty fucking blind no the, i'm that's not willing to say that that blind. it's not strong it's not a strong argument it's not a thing but that's that's how it's been written that's what i'm saying right but but that's bad <laughs> that's <laughs> bad yeah like we're, we're just saying that's like that doesn't work it though. is i do agree with you but that's just how it's been established before and that's what i'm saying <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the Riddler meme now. It's like, is he stupid? <laughs> yeah. The one in chat said, I blame it on Yoda's crippling ketamine addiction. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, but with that said, we uh, are going to go have to go ahead and call it for... Uh, nah, it's all good. I pretty much said what I what I wanted to get across. <laughs> all right. Well, thank, um, again, thank you for thank coming you for having, on. Yeah, thank you yeah, for coming that, on. Yeah, have fun, guys. And uh, may the rest be pleasant as us. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Um, now, before, hang on, what I'm going to do, so Punkle has been waiting for the longest out of everyone in this lineup, but he keeps getting moved down for whatever reason, so um, I apologize to the people that uh, are next in line, but I'm going to go ahead and add him first. Okay, so, okay. Hang on, let me go ahead and do that. I don't have any more super chats, okay. Going to add Punkle. Hello, you are on. Hello. It's this for Howdy. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I got moved down because I lost connection flight. Um, but uh, to get into it quickly, I do want to say it, I completely disagree with you that it's unbelievable that this would be conditioned. Just look into Korean Air Flight 801 for an example of what uh, what culture can see a person essentially kill themselves and a whole plane of people by refusing to criticize an authority. Um, well, hang on. We well, didn't say that the, the, the conditioning was unbelievable. What we said was if the conditioning, is, if you're going to make a, a fiction where the conditioning is that strong, we don't functionally see a difference between that and the choice. Right. It is incredibly dif distinct because the importance of choice is 
invaluable in terms of a narrative structure for um but you've just for, said they don't have choice the conditioning is so strong that they're going to do things without choice they have, like they're basically the winter soldier at that point okay. they have choice but they're not going to choose anything else it's well, a different choice, choice. <laughs> no they don't feel a choice like it okay you have the ability to choose you're just not going to well then you don't have the ability if you if you if you physically are so conditioned that you cannot literally mentally conceive of doing anything other than what you're going to do then you do not have a choice yeah like so i'm not going to choose to put my hand on a hot stove even though i do have the choice to do it because that would be <laughs> counter counter you know intuitive to what i want but if someone put a chip in my brain that said i'm going to activate this and it's going to force you not to touch the hot stove i'd be like okay it's like the same thing i i either way I mean, like i either i have a choice or i don't but I, i'm not going to do it I don't agree with that, and especially not in a narrative sense because of the themes and the concepts involved. But in addition to that, there's also the issues of, um, you know, th this, uh, again, this is a public order, and it's to kill one Jedi in the official orders. And that's in place well before they come into contact with the Republic, which establishes it as something benign, ultimately. It, in the context of the orders, it's ultimately benign. But to get into my main things on narrative, which is going to be lengthy, um, the big thing is that removing this um, removes a lot of the flaws of the Jedi Order's decisions. And if you remove the flaws of the Jedi Order's decisions and uh, in this way and remove um, the, the possibility of choice from the clones and, the, and all that, you incredibly damage the tragic aspects of it because a traditional tragedy well, so hang on. I, I need to explain that one then like how does how does this make uh, make the jedi like take away the jedi's mistakes okay so they're aware of the of the obedience of the clones at this time in the lore like they're aware and they are accepting what are essentially slave soldiers they are accepting in which in an essence betrays their own values and in would that the not name. be worse with the chip? Would that not be worse with the chip version? It's like uh, again, like so. Imagine you're the Jedi, right? And like you have the somehow have the choice between these two different kinds of armies. And someone's like, okay, you either have a slave army where like yeah, they're technically living creatures that have their own thoughts, but really they're so they're so conditioned, they're so thoughtless, they're basically almost battle droids just made of flesh. Or you're having to lead an army which are like basically thinking in normal people with emotions and desires and wants and fears and like you know individuality. Um, but they, but you're still going to lead them into battle against their will. You know they have no choice in that front. Uh, I'd actually argue that the second one is considerably more morally damaging to you than I choosing to lead what are essentially fleshbots. I would agree with that, but at the same time, I, I suppose if you actually focused on that, I'd agree. Um, but it's not re remotely even thought of, and it's sort of passed over, and it's sort of inferred that the Jedi didn't even think about it or. No, right, about. but we're not arguing for execution. We're arguing for the intrinsic, like, like the 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 value of the, well, not the value, the merits of the of the actual concept. If it was set up from the beginning, potentially, I can see that working. Um, if it was set up where the Jedi were aware of this from the beginning, uh, I can see that working. But if, if the Jedi aren't aware of it from the very beginning, that eliminates a lot of that tragic aspect because it removes that sort of flaw in choosing to accept the clones. It removes the f the fault of the Jedi in accepting the clones. Well, hang on, but they chose to accept uh, the clones regardless. Yes, later on when they're too far in um, is the thing. But if, if you have them accepting the clones, knowing that they are this sort of obedient force and will accept these orders, um, then you... Then you're at. Then it's your faults and uh, flaws. And a lot of the point of the original trilogy is that the Jedi lost by fighting the war. Um, a lot of the point. Well, hang is on. The original. The original trilogy doesn't say anything about what caused the flaw. Sorry, I, I, he meant yeah. the original trilogy. Oh, sorry. Trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just. I'm trying to speak fast because I don't have a lot that you know because limited time. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Sorry. I, in that case, I just misunderstood you. Yeah, it's okay though. Take your time. We Ugh. want to make sure you get your uh, your point across uh, the way that you want to. Yeah. So the important thing is, the prequel trilogy is a Greek tragedy, and the and 
having the Jedi choose actively to take a force that will obey any order, thinking themselves the master in an essence, and, or, and arguing for themselves to be the masters, which they do in the older lore, um, because they argue against the idea of the official admirals being the officers, which also is part of Palpatine's plan because it, disc it because it damages Jedi reputations among military officers because Jedi aren't actually that good of a commanders because they've been in <laughs> in peace for a thousand years and and further the clones are essentially already Imperials from the very start from the very moment they come into uh, being from the before they hit the ground of Geonosis they are Imperials in all but name. They think as Imperials, they act as Imperials, and they are they value Imperial ideals. Right, okay. but I don't and, understand how that reflects on the Jedi at all. And well, the Jedi accept that. They well, join... no, they're not accepting the ideals, they're just accepting control of the army. Yes, and that's the fault. They are accepting a slave army in the first place, and they are accepting a slave army that doesn't obey them. Uh, well, hang on. So, what, what, if anything, accepting a slave army that doesn't obey you is much more in line with Jedi ideals than the idea that the Jedi want to just like have control. Um, but like, um, putting you, they think themselves the master. Like, okay, the big tragic element is the accepting of, uh, and fault is the accepting of the these in order to continue to serve the Republic. You ex in order to continue to serve to be part of the Republic, which you, which the Jedi considered essentially what civilization is. They, they thought of, in this era, they thought of the Republic as civilization itself. Anything beside the Republic, it's not civilization, almost. That's sort of the sort of sense that Windu in particular had. Um, and so if you, if you, so they're unwilling to break away from the Republic, and that's a big failure on their part. And the big thing that really ties into this is when they accept the clones, because the clones are, are so obedient to the Republic and its structures as an empire, as a, they are villains from the very start. They are essentially, you know, they are villains in every essence from the moment they hit Geonosis, they're just in the heroic role at the moment. They're just working for the heroes at the moment. They are antagonists from the very beginning because they are so utterly imperialistic and militaristic and um, obedient in that sense and zealots of such and of militaristic ideals and of uh, imperialistic ideals. And you are accepting this as your force, a force that inherently disagrees with you on every single level, essentially, uh, in terms of tactics, politics, and um, general goals. So you're saying they're throwing away their the, the Jedi are throwing away their ideals by c taking control of an army that fundamentally disagrees with said ideals. In essence, yes, um, that's a big part of of this that they are taking control of something that so inherently disagrees with them that it is essentially narratively the opposite um, is, um so i don't necessarily I don't, I don't mean sure i I'll, I'll agree with that in essence but like the jedi don't impose their beliefs and their ideals on the people of the galaxy and so so like That's they're true. willing to work with like senators and, and and other diplomats that represent the republic who may or may not represent their ideals because they're like their whole philosophy is coexistence. Um, so like the, you know, obviously taking control of a slave army is unethical and you have that either way, but that the slave army is also imperialistic and that therefore their ideals are contradictory to the Jedi. I don't think that necessarily adds or detracts in any way. I think that's just also a factor. Mm. I wish well, I still had money. Uh, I had a comment on your like part two, but YouTube, of course, deleted it because YouTube is a censorious bitch. <laughs> but oh. uh, but um, so I don't have all of my notes anymore. Uh, but <laughs> it's not as organized as I'd like. Um, but basically, a big thing is like 
again, it's, it's that's right, man. So, you know, take, take, take your time. You don't, you don't oh, have to yeah. rush this. Yeah, sorry. <sighs> again, the possibility of choice is so, so important to that last aspect because it's that final nail in the coffin where the clones could, they have the ability to, they have the, you know, they're not in, and it's much more tragic because they're not going to. They, believe in it so much that they're never going to change their positions um well we've kind of already addressed why we don't think that means that they you know in, in effect then like they don't know, actually have a choice i know it, i just i disagree with you so much on the on how you would uh, conceive of that but um but why i'd like to hear that yeah at, at that point I'm, I'm just curious about what your definition of free will is at this point well if you ha you have the ability to choose you have like you could you can, you can conceive of it. You can understand that there is an option there, but you're not going to take that other option. Yes. Right, but the, the, the whole point of the conditioning is that they, they can't conceive of another option. Mm. Except, like, again, I reference, like, uh, the Korean flight. Um, you know, humans still have free choice, even in South Korea, when they're it, when you're so obedient to authority that you're never going to direct that you generally will never directly criticize someone um you okay, but to, to, to draw an analogy here what you're effectively saying is just the, the human biological equivalent if i said to you like i have a robot and i have programmed this robot singularly for the task of i don't know um passing me butter um <laughs> and like it, you know like it, it's mechanically able to do other things and i could Give it the programming to give it the the, 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 the ability to do that. Those are all possibilities. But right now, it only has the programming to pass me butter, so it can't conceive of anything but doing doing anything but passing me butter. If you were to argue to me then that that robot has free choice to do anything else, I don't even know what you mean by free choice at that point, because that's so fundamentally contradictory to any philosophical conception of free will that I've ever seen. That I I, I would really need you to explain your perspective there. Well, I don't agree that that's comparable to a human because a human. Still has the ability to think beyond pro immediate beyond immediate programming. Right. But humans aren't genetically modified from before they're even born to be, um, you know, as brainwashable as possible, and then can and then brainwash from the moment of birth to be unthinking flesh bots. And by the way, there are definitely examples of humans who are so stuck in their ways of thinking that even though they could theoretically, in like some abstract philosophical terms choose to do different they physically biologically can't like that's the nature of a lot of mental illness is that your brain is stuck in a kind of cognitive loop where you cannot fathom doing anything other than what you're doing mm. and like therefore you do not have the ability to do anything other than what you're doing that's a um, fair enough like to, to go back to I, I don't know if you were listening to the, to the earlier section when i brought up cap gross syndrome the, the thing where you think everyone in your life's been replaced by an identical double an mm. interesting thing about that syndrome is like i can take someone who has that that uh disorder and I can explain to them rationally that the person they're seeing is in fact really their wife or really their daughter or really their brother or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like consciously, like rationally, they'll understand me. They'll understand, they might even think I'm telling the truth rationally, but they will never believe it. They will never emotionally believe it. Like they physically can't. It's just not physically possible because that, mm -hmm. that brain is organized in such a way that they'll never really truly believe it. Um, so if you're gonna tell me that then they have the theoretical capacity to believe that it's true, I'm just going to turn around and be like, no, it isn't. They, they don't have that neurological capacity. I'm sorry, they just don't. Uh, do, you, do you need to take that? No, no, that's texts. Uh, sorry. Um, um, that, that's a pair of texts that came up. Um, I'm, yeah. Uh, if, um, if you wouldn't mind silencing that, just like if, if it goes off again, it doesn't, because it's really loud on our end. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Should uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um... it's not his phone. It's my vibrator. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I I do definitely see your point, but ultimately, as in, then what's the point of the chip at, in the same regard? 
Well, the point would be that they have free will up until the ship is activated, which gives us the ability to tell stories about their, you know, them from a human perspective of like, how do the clones think about this war? Do they break free of their social conditioning, which they clearly have at least some of for reasons we described earlier, to mm -hmm. reflect upon their status in the war? Do we get stories like Slicks or Rexes? Do we get stories like Cody's? Do, do or... we get the Umbara arc and the themes present there that, I mean, are yeah. contradicted by the twist, but that's a different story? Yeah, that's execution again, not not concept. Um, the problem with the kind of conditioning, we've been saying this all along, but the problem with the kind of conditioning that you want to propose is that you're essentially taking everything that you tell us that you hate about the chips and then retroactively putting it throughout their entire lives. So I don't really understand the logic here. Um, mm -hmm. And then to, to cycle back to the other thing you said, which is like the taking control of a slave army. Again, if the slave army in question actually has free will, then taking control of them is a lot more morally compromising than taking control of an army that doesn't really have free will at all. Um, well, they're both I, bad, I would, I would say wrong, that that's... one is worse. Taking control of a slave army that um, that like has the has the capacity to choose and doesn't necessarily want to be here is more unethical than taking control of a slave army that fundamentally disagrees with your ideals, because um, which I think is what you were arguing. Hmm. Well, it's more of that this is what directly leads to their deaths is, is the Jedi's deaths is that they choose an uh, an army that they know has the capacity to do this. Right, but could I not just turn around and be like, that theme is also present in a version of events where the Jedi who are supposed to be committed to non-violence and peace have decided to willingly become the generals in a galactic conflict and take control of armies at all. Like, I mean, again, as badly executed as it is, isn't that Barriss Offie's point? Hmm. Uh, like the Jedi have fundamentally lost, lost who they are by even signing up to the war in the first place? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think that, that parts to a degree that makes it uh, incrementally worse each aspect each time um and it's less powerful when you actually make it a chip because there's much less possibility of choice in there um even if it's biological program there's just no possibility of choice within the clones at that point and well, they're hang on because you were you were arguing about from what the, the perspective of what the jedi knew when they took control of this army right the jedi do not know this chip exists so as far as they're concerned, they're taking control of a uh, a slave army of free-thinking people who have no choice but to be there, which I would argue is a lot more morally compromising than the alternative you were suggesting. Um, well, and in so terms of, and again, it's, it's it's the same thing, right? Like, of, if you're going to propose that this conditioning is as strong as you seem to want it to be, then you are you're doing everything that you don't like about the chip, but just throughout their entire lives. See, again, I don't agree. That's the same concept. Mm -hmm. but, um, I'm just trying to move past that at this point. Um, I'd need to think about it and have some more time to argue the points and so forth. Um, but it was a really, it is a really good point that you brought up in the criticism of the of how we de debating on what is free will exactly. If you're if it's even possible to conceive of if you're if you're not willing to even con if you're not willing to go do anything beyond consider the possibility, then um is it free will which is a good uh, argument and one i would definitely consider but at the same time even within those who have just flat out choice their their values their ideals and their concepts are all that it should are all about well military or ar the army and uh about having this militaristic dominance and this sort of aggressive pursuit of that and so i think that's even more against the jedi code is that they have an army that is so is truly earnestly just wants to conquer because that is what the clones are they are people they are a group that want to conquer um and so you know, that's not just um, cooperating, that's not just coexistence, that's actively working against your own ideals to such an extent and such a degree um, that it's... Is it, um, sorry, because so, I, I, I see someone in the comment section I think is trying to uh, also like, illustrate your point, so I just want to know if, if this is correct, because it would be interesting to address if it is. Fernheim says, uh, I think his point is that the Jedi end up a lot more responsible for their own demise if they know the clones were conditioned to obey whatever the Republic says rather than anything moral. Which I guess, the, you know, to simplify that even more, is your argument that it's more tragic 
uh, for the Jedi to have chosen, you know, to have risked be, taking control of an army that they know could ultimately destroy them and then be destroyed, than to take control of an, on that army unknowingly of that risk and then be destroyed. Yes, essentially. Um, like, and, and it's it's the Jedi's faults that will play into that decision. Like, they know okay. that decision, and they that decision is what destroys them. Um, and that what what have I then said? Then I think it's more tragic that uh, the like that you know that if, either if the Jedi had willingly chosen to to take on ideals of people who were like fascistic and terrible, that the Jedi themselves are therefore more fascistic and terrible than than we originally thought, to the extent that they're not really the good guys, and therefore I'm less invested in whether or not they get killed. Like I find it personally less tragic than if they die, because as far as I'm concerned, they're just the bad guys. Well, uh, versus I... when they're innocent, good people you know, trying to do their best to then get turned on because they got sucked into a war they didn't understand because they're so dogmatic that they couldn't consider it. I think it's more, I think my position is more in between the two in that regard, but uh, my position also includes some of that in the dogmaticism in that they're dogmatically obeying the Republic in that they're dogmatically trying to protect the Republic. And in that protection, they are themselves garbage. But um, I do see your point. I don't agree because the, uh, well, eh, I don't agree that that makes them villains necessarily because, uh, or evil, because, you know, like... Well, just more, more uh, villainous uh, than the alternative is my point. Like, if you willingly choose to side, with, like, by your own argument, right, if you willingly choose to side with people you know are fish, sick, and terrible, then that is a, a not a great reflection on your own sense of morality. Yeah, you accept that out of a wish to survive in a war, seeing that, believing, you know, it's more complicated than just that. It's, you know, it's like, um, it's sort of like when the USA joined up with the Soviet Union, in a sense. You know that the Soviets are terrible. You know that they're incredibly destructive, but you're willing to accept that and join with them for the purposes of uh of a diff of another of the of a genuine threat and something that you consider almost a greater evil um sure and... but unlike the us say because like the us is, is acting as a world power in that regard yeah. if the jedi don't join the war the republic is still able to fight it like the, the republic can still fight this war without the jedi the jedi are not crucial to victory in this war as, uh, anyway. the jedi don't think of it that way necessarily because the jedi see sith there's a Sith there, and it's like the old wars to them. It's like World War, it's like the hyperspace war in the old lore, or in terms of our lore, it's like seeing, uh, I don't know, World War One, World War Two, just kind of going, that's that's something I need to destroy, and a threat right, to... Except, except in this scenario, the Jedi are looking around, and they're going, okay, so on one side we have... Uh, the Confederacy, which we don't like because they, they're they trying to destroy the Republic and we like the Republic, we think the Republic's good. And on the other side, we have a Republic that has a fascistic army that we've just been told uh, potentially has a Sith Lord lurking behind the Senate's decisions. And we don't like the Sith because they're everything we hate. So at that point, surely the, the decision the Jedi should take is like, we're stepping out of this war completely because both sides are bad. That is the decision they should have taken, but that's not the decision that they make. Right, uh, but in which case I don't understand the difference in the plus. tragedy. Let's wrap this up, guys. Okay. Yeah, fair. Well, Ashiv, I've spoken for ages, so Ashiv, if you want to jump in. No, I'm pretty much in agreement with you. I, I think we're kind of talking in circles at this point about the... Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had well, more okay. points. I had more I wanted to describe, but I lost all of it when my comment was deleted. So. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry your comment got deleted, man. But uh, yeah, like yeah. I said, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, so thank you very much for coming on. It was a pleasure and it was thought-provoking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was uh, I was waiting to hear what you had to say because you you know were pretty vocal in chat, so I was glad to hear you out at least. Yeah, I w wish I could be a little bit better formatted and uh, prepared, but uh, well, I thought you did well. Yeah, I mean, uh, considering you had such a time restraint, you know. Yeah, I do need to be going myself, anyways. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, I enjoyed it. I I have my own arguments, but uh, I'm glad that we at least had. Uh, considerable, interesting, and um, dynamic discussions. Well, thank you for coming <laughs> on. And, and hopefully, even if um, you weren't able to voice certain arguments that you had, that someone else might bring it up and we can talk about it. Yeah, yes. Um, well, and also the thing is, there are going to be things that we address, even if nobody else brings them up, like by the end of the stream, because there are just certain arguments that I feel like need to be hammered home. 
Yeah, and it, it's all it's. There's always going to be more. <laughs> yeah. This is, this like I said, I don't thing. think this is going to be like the final note, you know, in the in the discussion. Like this is just the last. No, I we're going to solve it. This, 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 we're going to solve this whole cultural talking point. We all disagree with us by the end. You're, you're just wrong. Solve, you're going to solve one of the two things alongside what how the Mandalorians were handled that cleaved through the entire yep. Star Wars community during. I'm going to um, bring peace, Wars. justice, and security to my new empire. <laughs> Your new uh, empire. Yeah, just heal that huge divide that split in that felony split through the entire Star Wars community during that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all anyway, right, then. thanks for coming on. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, now, one thing I will say real quick is I've gone ahead and deleted the link uh, pinned to the top. So, unfortunately, no one else will be able to join in. Uh, because you know we we do want to eventually be able to like end the stream, so we can't just infinitely have, you know, like indefinitely have people coming in. So the people yeah, that are that are lined up to come I'm in now, in cyberspace. <laughs> I'm trapped in cyberspace like a prisoner, but she actually has a life so, to go live in the yeah. material world. So so the people that are lined up to come in now are going to be going to just have to be the last people we talk to. But if if nobody brings up some of the arguments that we still wanted to address, uh, we'll we'll go over those real quick, and then uh, we can you know end the stream after that. Is everyone, is everyone cool with that? I will speak for them. Yes, it is, that's cool. We all and agree. Before we bring on our next guest, uh, we I did get a super chat from Crystal Customs for ten dollars. Thank you for super chat. Uh, counter to the node ships, sixty six being one of uh, one hundred fifty one includes Order thirty seven, which is execution of an entire civilization population, no survivors. As corrupt as the Jedi Order is, they wouldn't approve of that order or or. or you know, nor would they approve of 66. Um, I don't know all of the different orders, um, which of, of course we, I do want to eventually talk about the uh, contingency orders uh, at the 150 yeah. that are, uh, because there's a lot to say about that. I was waiting for someone to just bring it up. So I'm, I'm still going to wait to address that. Um, but yeah, like there are certain ones that I would imagine are extremely unethical that I just don't imagine the Jedi would have, would have been okay with. Yeah. And also that's presuming that like if you wrote the no chip scenario that you have to write that as one of the orders, which you don't have to do that, right? Order 66, you can rewrite the list of orders that Order 66 is a part of. Um, but in but any in any canon where you include the, the genocide order as number 37, yeah, I don't believe the Jedi are okay with that. Yeah, but like specifically 66, and we're going to get into that. But before that, let's bring on our next guest. We have Melatonin Overdose. Hello, am I audible? Hi. You are, yes, you how are. do you do? I'm doing pretty well. Okay, so I have another number of things to talk about. Overall, I am mostly in agreement that the chips make more sense than no chips. I have a various caveats, and in particular, things about how there are probably better ways of handling the chips than TCW did. Mm. Oh, for sure. Like we, we're not arguing that's the perfect. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, also, incidentally, very good videos. Well, thank you. Um, yes. So, first, a brief side point about the my lord thing. Um, okay. I note that it's not clear whether my lord is just a way that the chancellor is addressed sometimes. Mace calls him my lord at one point during their fight, but that's after it's he's out as a Sith Lord, yeah, so maybe it's that. I, he did um, also say it in a sort of mocking tone. He did, like, he did. You know, the secret's out, buddy. I know what you are. <laughs> she was just like, that's really hurtful that you would say it in that tone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can use that word. You are under arrest, Sheev. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, Right. There's something I wanted to bring up, which was in the video, you draw a contrast between the TCW interpretation of Order 66 and the old EU interpretation of Order 66. Now, this has come up some in previous discussion, but as, as I understand it, there are actually two different pre-chip interpretations of Order 66, which are substantially different. There's one which is the one you basically discuss where the clones receive Order 66, which is the content of Order 66 being the Jedi have betrayed the Republic and need to be destroyed. 
And the clones conclude, okay, presumably the Jedi have betrayed the Republic and need to be destroyed. We'll go and get on that. Um, and they, they don't necessarily know that anything is anything sinister is happening involving Palpatine. This was this was always the interpretation that I thought was the basic obvious one when I was younger, but mm-hmm. as you explain, it doesn't really work. That wouldn't be reliable enough. Um, and then there's the other interpretation, which is that the clones were fully in on everything from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> or at least in on a big yeah. a big chunk of the conspiracy. And that's so like the other interpretation is as I understand it, what's depicted in the Republic Commando novels. Battlefront 2 very, very heavily implies that the clones knew about Order 66 from the start. And it's presented very compellingly there because it has them feeling conflicted about it and and looking ahead at the future and I mean, still find it just absurd as a premise that they. Yeah, when you when you when you step back and think about it, that's absolutely fucking preposterous and doesn't work at all, Um, because you have an absolute minimum of three million people, and what's going to happen is that you have three million people who know about this and. Hundreds, maybe thousands of them are going to calmly explain what's happening to the Jedi on day one. <laughs> yeah, you'd think that'd be at least one person might go like, hey, I really like you, man. You've been a good Jedi general. Just so you know. You're coming to work the next tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're one of the good ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you have a few hundred clones independently talking about this, the Jedi are just going to go, okay, this is just true, and we need to act on it immediately. Yeah. I think if you have even one who is explaining it calmly, that's not going to be enough for the Jedi to assume it's true, but that's going to be enough to start an investigation. And I yeah. don't think this conspiracy is robust against investigation. Um, I mean, okay, it is contingent on the Jedi Council being as stupid as they're portrayed in both this show and the prequels, but a separate issue. Um... <laughs> Okay. So, yes, now the core issue here is the information security issue, and that's present with the chips too. It's not nearly as bad, but if you, if the chips contain the information that the clones are programmed to kill, it contains the programming to kill the Jedi then that information is in the chips and it might get discovered. It's not... Uh, I think your arguments in the video persuaded persuaded me that it's less of a problem than I thought it was. Um, But it's still a risk. The, The thing that I think is interesting here is that this information security problem ultimately is contained in Revenge of the Sith. The problem is that all Palpatine says is execute Order 66. Um, Or at least that's all he says to most of the clones. The the way I think the, the way I think that would be the proper way to handle this would be what the chip does is not specifically program the clones to kill the Jedi. Rather, the clones have a a conditioned, purely obedient personality that only cares about the chain of command and will obey whatever orders it's given. And then on top of that, they build more individual personalities over the course of the war. And then what the chip does is just disable their developed personalities and revert them to factory settings. And then Palpatine delivers a full order of, okay, you need to go kill the Jedi. And then the information doesn't have to exist anywhere but Palpatine's brain. Um, right. I, I mean, I, I guess the the thing there is like, if 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 it's only in Palpatine's brain and he has to give this order, that's like, okay, I activate your re- revert to factory settings, and now I have to give you all orders as well. You have the problem of simultaneity. Like a large part of the success of Order sixty six is going to depend on every clone trooper essentially right. attacking at the same time, because you know, well, as the because even with the synchronicity of the Order sixty six as one very quick code phrase. 
there's enough of a disparity in terms of how long individual troops take to kill their sort of their generals that Yoda starts sensing mm -hmm. the deaths before anyone gets to him. And, and that's, that's the reason he's okay. able to survive. Yeah. Yeah. He sensing you know, would... something's going on, yeah. My my assumption would be if you're Palpatine, you deliver the order and, you know, send a duplicate of the audio file simultaneously to every clone in the galaxy. The Revenge of the Sith does seem to imply that he's calling up the clone commanders individually, and that yeah, that doesn't make sense. No, because he... It, it, there are he too many of them. <laughs> well, no, he is sending duplicates. So, like, the, the hologram that appears on the pilot's desktop that kills Plo Koon, for example, it's a repeat of... Um, oh, okay. He said to, mm. to Cody. Like, for some reason... It Cody would have to be because, like, Right, he addresses Commander Cody specifically. I, right, that I was the thing. I can believe that Cody was, was, like, a special order because, obviously, like, he wants to make sure Obi-Wan dies. He's too... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, also, like, if he's phoning Cody, like, and simultaneously using the, the section of the Cody call to, to signal, signal out, he is effectively making the same call at the same time. He's just chosen to address it to Cody specifically, um, mm. the beginning of that. Um, it's still, you know, in effect, he is still addressing them all. It's just that he's chosen to give Cody a little, like, ring up first to be like, you're the one I'm going to start the ball rolling with. Okay. Um, I would so think then... you want to call Yoda's clones first, but that's a separate issue. Yeah, that's just... Uh, maybe so then Palpatine the issue with... concerned about Obi-Wan. The issue with the more complex command is just that it takes longer to deliver, and so it introduces more time lag. Mm -hmm. Well, there's that, but there's also just like the... Because you're like, oh, there's still a risk of them finding the information in this chip that concludes it's a kill order for the Jedi and all this. I'm like, yeah, so that is a theoretical possibility. But in terms of unlike cosmic unlikeliness, it is catastrophically... like if Honestly, like if, 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 if they had found it by accident like that, if I was Palpatine, I'd be calling bullshit. I'm like, okay, the writer's intervening because no, that's so <laughs> unlikely. So are you um, envisioning finding it out through a tup sort of incident or finding it out by looking at the chip directly? What, again, like how would, how would how you, know would you find like, it like, out by looking at the yeah, chip? How would you well, for one thing, there? you have the separatists who probably are very invested in in and who are trying to find vul vulnerabilities in clone biology. They would right, be looking very closely. Well, what I'm asking is like, well, also what I'm asking is like, what would you be looking for when look when studying the chip if you even find it? Hmm. Like, what about? Yeah, the that's chip fair. If you don't, if you don't, well, if you don't specifically know what. Yeah, if it's in, if it's encoded in a, if it's encoded if it's encoded in a format that's not obvious, you wouldn't necessarily know where the information is stored or how it's stored. Yeah, that's fair. Um, at that point, the only way you'd have a, even a, a chance in hell of ever finding it is if like one of the Kaminoans specifically told you that that was a thing that existed, and then you went looking in the brain all over. And even then, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, because what you we're need shown, a high level of expertise to find this. Yeah, because like what we're shown throughout every like every time they try to find the chip is that it's really hard to find even when you know what you're looking for. So like I don't I don't even imagine that like a separatist scientist doing some kind of brain autopsy would be able to just happen upon it. Or even okay. know that it is that. distinct from the like the rest of the brain if they do find it. And besides, even if they did, you have Tyrannus there to be like, that research is never seeing the light of day because we need to keep this hidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think you've persuaded me. Which is which is good because that means we get to have the top thing, and the top thing is cool. <laughs> um, okay. Well, what was there more? Um Wait, hang on, I just want to revel in convincing someone. It's a rare moment. Like, just, giving ah. this, just giving this golden second to be like a person on the internet was reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, my faith in humanity is restored. No, sorry, go on. Yes, was there? Uh, hang on, I wanted to address this one from Lord Wahoo. Sorry, I don't want to cut into your time. Well, I'll give you extra no, time fine. if you want it. If the Jedi refused, but the Senate forced it anyway, what could the Jedi do? If the Senate ordered the Jedi to fight, what could the Jedi actually do? Um, refuse not fight. Jail. Yeah, yeah. They, they could just leave. Would, they wouldn't be arrested. They would literally just be like, "No, fuck you," and leave. They, even if that causes them to like, be, like, no longer be in cahoots with the Republic and officials, like, officially, like, okay. They yeah. like even even if there's some law that says like the Jedi legally have to do what the Republic say, the Jedi order would be like, "No thanks," and just bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, are you gonna stick your army on me? Oh no, that's what I, we were trying to avoid. So. <laughs> Uh, right, yes, so me. the... Like, well, you, you and whose generals? <laughs> but anyway, uh, sorry, you were saying? Right, so the thing about getting 
contingency orders past the Senate, because of course then that's the that ties into the infosec issue. Um, I think if I was going to try to justify the contingency orders thing, I can think of a better way to do it than having to get past the Senate. It's a little bit shaky, but what I would do, I think, is argue that the Kaminoans did it before they were in contact with the Republic. And, like, as a cover story by Palpatine, have the idea be the Kaminoans programmed all this stuff into the clones, maybe maybe the this sort of practice of having insanely drastic contingency orders is something that makes sense in Camino and culture. And at that point, you're in a take it or leave it situation. It's shaky, though, because then you have new clones getting introduced and trained, so you could modify it if the Jedi don't want those anymore. Yeah, also, like, it, it, you would like to take it or leave it. I'm like, well, if I'm the Jedi, I'm going to leave that. Yeah, like, no, I don't want yeah. that. Because I don't know if, if Palpatine was like, I know this order is really bad and and, and just, it risks your lives, but you know you have to respect the Kaminoan culture. That's just their culture. I'd be like, to hell with that. <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, like, don't the Jedi ultimately have more control over what's done with the clones in the Republic? Because as far as the Kaminoans uh, like state, and as far as the, like the Jedi and the Republic know, it was a Jedi who ordered the clones. Oh God! So I don't. I don't. <sighs> There's been discussion of this on EFAP. I don't know if there's been discussion of this over in this corner. Attack of the Clones really extremely does not make sense. I agree. <laughs> it's, it's really remarkable to realize because people treat the prequels as a unit. But it's like, no, the Phantom Menace pretty much holds together. Revenge of the Sith pretty much holds together, except for it inherits problems from Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones is complete fucking nonsense. I, I think you're being very kind to Phantom Menace and Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> But Attack um, of the Clones, yeah, is... there's a lot to, like, you'd have to really get into the logistics, and that's a whole minefield, but, like, yeah. Well, we did, we, we did that video, right? We did a debate between Attack what's worse, what, what's worse, Attack of the Clones or Force Awakens, and, like, the conclusion we came to was, like, technically Force Awakens is worse, but really, we're, like, we are, it's it's the bottom of the barrel versus the, do the you know, the pile of dung just outside it. Like, this that is was, not a good comparison. That was almost a year ago today. Wow. Would you look at that? God, we're old. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and there's just so much stuff that is... <sighs> It's possible the Republic Commando novels go into this a bit. I've read a couple of them, but it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But there's so much stuff that's not addressed about, like, okay, what do the clones even think is going on? Like, before the Jedi show up, what were they told? You're being well, created because somebody had a vision? Well, I guess I just <laughs> like... I don't think you need to tell them that, right? It's just like you have been paid for to be the new Galactic Army I mean, for the Republic. That's going to be your job. Yeah, that's I sure. Think that's what yeah. For. yeah. But then... There are so many stories you can tell about that. They're learning about the Separatists for the first time. They've been preparing for this war their whole lives. And now they yeah. finally know what it's going to be. That that seems like it would be a big deal. Yeah, I'd like to Like, nobody ever addresses right. the very beginning of the Clone Wars for some reason. Yeah, I just if it were me uh, and I was rewriting the, the Clone Wars, I would definitely have, like, the first season, at least, just be all about the aftermath of Attack of the Clones and Geonosis. Yeah. I mean, I really want that, like, the comic cutaway of just, like, you know, Anakin and co are on the lat gunship chasing Dooku, and then we just cut, like, one clone in the middle of the battle, just, like, going, what the fuck is going on? Just, what like, are we ah! doing? Just running around. Just, Why am yeah. I here? <laughs> There's all the sand. I can't see shit. Oh, no, I shot, I shot Dan. No. Yeah. I also think that, like, the... The Clone Wars treats the clones as basically regular guys, and it's executed reasonably well, but I do think it's a missed opportunity. Because fundamentally what we're looking at here is 10-year-olds who've been indoctrinated all their lives and given guns and sent into battle who are all genetically identical. And I don't know what you get if you do that, but it's probably not going to look very much like a normal human. <laughs> well, you, you, would, you would not be able to function in, in society, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and again, like, that's a criticism that I, I, Steve and I, have in private discussions, a bit about Bad Batch. It's like, and actually, that Kenobi show as well. Like, how Disney have handled the clones as a concept post um, Revenge of the Sith is appallingly lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's so much that needs to be said that is just not being said at all. And it's actually really frustrating. To me. It's like the thing I hate most actually about Disney is how they just don't seem to acknowledge the clones' existence in any meaningful way. Yeah.
Yeah, like that's one, of the, that's one of the things about Kenobi was actually like a good scene is Obi Wan happening upon a, like a retired clone who's homeless and like begging for money. Like yeah. shit, tell me more, please. Yeah, I want, I want to see more of this guy. Please tell me. I want to see more of this concept. No, Just don't go after Leia. No. <laughs> <laughs> Make me float. <laughs> oh, shut up, Jolly. Don't do this to me. <laughs> um, but was there a, was there anything more that you wanted to uh, to argue? Well, so I thought that some of Punkle's arguments were very interesting. I thought he was mostly wrong, but I thought they were very interesting. Um, I'm I'm certainly a big fan of tragic structures and the idea that he talks about of, of sort of the the tragic sin that gives the gods an excuse to punish you. Um, I think it's perfectly feasible to get that to work with the chips. Um, because the thing is, the clones are conditioned to obey orders separately from the chips, and the Jedi know that. So if you wanted to, you could easily frame this as, okay, the Jedi accept this clone army that's been conditioned to obey orders. Oh, hey, look, cool. They're, they're perfectly obedient. They're so useful to us. And then it turns out, oh, surprise, they were a little more conditioned than you thought. And they go from being perfect soldiers who follow orders to, like, a parody of the perfect soldier. Yeah, we could have even had... I think... I mean, we see this a lot in terms of, like, I wish we'd seen discussions, but imagine... So, you know the episode where, like, Yoda is teaching them, like, oh, very individual in the Force, each of you are. Like, imagine he went back to the Jedi Council and then different council members were disagreeing about how much responsibility they have to, like, help the clones. Like, Yoda's there going, like, no, they're people, and we should encourage individuals, yeah. and we should encourage them to be treated well. And other council members are like, no, they're just, they're just flesh bots, and winning the war is important, and th this is a distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. Like the, the, the discussion about like maybe maybe the Jedi ultimately decide to take the general ships because they think that like they're the best place people to improve the lot of the of the clones by actually giving them that individuality, and then they have no idea actually how to do that because they've been raised dogmatically as well. Um, you know, yeah. there's all sorts of interesting comparisons and parallels between being raised as a Jedi versus being raised as a clone, and what who knows what about where and when and how they think and just. An incredible amount of nuance that is just not in the Clone Wars as a show. Yeah, I I do, I do like the show a lot, but man, it has problems. Yep, same here. Yep, I I, I don't feel comfortable calling it bad. I also don't feel comfortable calling it good or average because it's so heterogeneous. <laughs> it's like how it's this, the prequels are the same way. How do you evaluate this thing? <laughs> It's. I mean, I would just describe them both as mixed bags, you know. You yeah. Because, like, because, like, I think the prequels are bad overall, but like, there are so many criticisms that are leveled toward them that are just bad. Yeah. They're just terrible criticisms. Oh, well, when we say mixed bag, though, there's like there's the kind of mixed bag where you're like, oh, I've got some nice chocolates in with my with my awful sweets in Halloween versus yeah. I've opened the bag and there's a pile of gold and a live rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The... Yeah, like like only eighty percent of the uh, of these Reeses that I've bought are filled with candy or uh, with uh, razor blades. So with razor blades, yes, uh, twenty <laughs> yeah. of them are delicious. <laughs> I have, I have a rewrite in my head of Siege of Mandalore that at one point involves Ahsoka and Rex having an extended argument about whether they should use lethal force against the chipped clones, where Rex is arguing there's nothing. Rex is arguing in favor and Ahsoka is arguing against and is arguing like, okay, you've been you've been conditioned all your life to think of yourself and your brothers as disposable. I'm not going to treat you as disposable. And Rex is arguing like, okay, so we leave them alive. What then? They're they're not having a good time. I was chipped. I know what that was like. I didn't like that. Um, yeah. I don't I don't want to hurt you. And then Rex is like, didn't you just release more? <laughs> oh my god, he cut off he cut that one guy's arm off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, don't worry, he can't even cut beams. They'll be fine. <laughs> um, unfortunately, though, we have reached the twenty-minute. Okay. Point, so. But yeah, um, again, again, pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much for coming. Yeah, yeah. seriously, I, I, I've enjoyed this discussion. I did too. Uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Be fruitful. Go forth and multiply, and all that Indeed. jazz. Indeed. Gonna kick him from studio. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people left. Sam, Sam, why are you at the bottom of the roster? I was about to say, like, sheep. I don't know if we'll be able to do all seven, just because it's getting getting a bit late for me. 
Yeah. So okay. Well, I I, I want to be fair about this. So how do you want to how do you want to play this then? <laughs> Ibdip Sky Blue. No, I, I I don't actually know. Um, who's been waiting the longest? I guess they're they're the ones who so, get precedence. So Sam's at the bottom of the roster, but I'm pretty sure he's been waiting the longest. Um, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna hold off on him though. Let's try to at least get through um like four of the people waiting and, and if we don't get to you and you're in the waiting room i'm very sorry but you know it's it's pretty late for jolly at this point it's what like uh midnight yeah it's midnight and i need my beauty sleep because i'm quite ugly so so we're gonna try to go <laughs> for like another what 45 minutes to an hour tops yeah uh, that's okay like that. what, I'm, what i might do is if you bring the next person on i'm just gonna quickly go to uh relieve myself and things. yeah yeah um, actually, Sam yeah, has sent in a super chat, so I'll deal with that real quick first. Actually, I've, I have two super chats, okay? One All is right. from Cottom Noob Tuber for $2. Thank you for the super chat. Is this about the morals of Star Wars? Here's money. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, morals are fun. And we have the one from Sam. Internet went down. Yeah, okay. I'll, you know what? I'll throw you in next because I know you've been waiting the longest. Um, and you know, while Jolly's gone, I oh get Jesus! Uh, What's uh, up, man? I, uh, 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 hey, um, am I the first person here that you already like your friends with already before all this? Yeah, I, don't, I had never met anyone else that's been on yet, so except <laughs> for Jolly, obviously. Also, um, how, how's my audio? Is it is it good? Yeah, you're good. Oh, um, sweet. Um, uh, sorry, bit nervous. Never been on a live stream before. Uh, um, right. So, um, Jerry, um. Have you not been on any, on any of my streams? I thought you had. Um, not on live streams, no. Um, in recorded, I think I made like a cameo in your Ahsoka video. That's right, you did. We watched Halloween together. That was fun. Anyway, yeah, um, uh, you had uh, you <laughs> moving on. Uh, anyway, chips, um, right? uh, my yeah, I have like a few. Well, I'm not fundamentally against the concept of chips, but I have like a couple of questions about them. And some of them are just questions in general I have about Order 66. So my first one would be, um, I think people have mentioned like the whole like Lord Sidious being named in um, Siege of Mandalore, but in Revenge of the Sith, they also refer to him as my lord. Um, granted, they don't say Sidious specifically, but it does seem, but it's a bit weird to refer to the Chancellor as lord. Um, mm. I would say it's a bit weird that so I guess, like, to be fair to Clone Wars, it's not really its fault. Um, it's just, uh, I guess it's just a weird sort of... Including the chips does make that a bit weird. Um, I guess it's you could, not... have just could have just ignored it, though, right? If you're the Clone Wars writers, you could have just been like, we're not going to address that very weird line. In I mean, to be fair, they did ignore the fact that it's heavily implied that Obi-Wan and Grievous... I have never met before, so I guess, yeah. yeah. They, they are um, willing to just ignore lines if they find them inconvenient. Th that is true. My powers have doubled since last time we met Count, two weeks ago. Um, yeah, uh, then like, wow, one, really? Got... Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, but um, my next one, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. Um, it's Well, to be honest, this, these, these other two are more just questions I have about Order 66 in general, I guess, which is how do, like, so the Kaminoans aren't aware they aren't in on it as far as like they don't know this that they're, they're working with sith lords is this correct the i've Kaminoan, watched clone wars a long time in in the clone wars they are aware that tyrannus is their benefactor and that order 66 exists but they don't know that he's a sith right sorry it's been a while since i've actually probably watched the show um with um so they're not aware that you know of the, the jig if you will um mm -hmm. i will say i find it a bit like do they not have any questions about like having to program an order that uh, that essentially that effectively obliterates the guardians of peace and justice well the kaminoans aren't good guys i mean this is the yeah. you know, the kaminoans entire business model is they sell armies of, of living slaves to shady people um, yeah they i don't think often... they really care that much if that also means the jedi will die yeah, as far as they're concerned, they're like, we have a contract with a, with the original guy who who ordered this and his specifications, and we're going to fulfill that contract. And if he tells us to put in this order and not tell the Jedi, then that's what we're going to do. Yep. I guess, but I don't know. I feel like if... I'd be like... Because, like... 
oh god I'm trying to explain it oh god brain autism please please work properly um is that um if I was them, I'd be questioning why why do you are they not at least a bit curious like why do they want this order because like that essentially they're giving them like the largest army like one of the largest armies in the galaxy right so uh so is this um so like if they so do they not at least suspect that they might end up creating like an empire and if that's the case that doesn't that threaten their operation a little bit not necessarily. If anything, you'd be thrilled if the Empire then rose, because you'd be presuming that you're going to be carrying on supplying their soldiers, and that's a gigantic contract. Oh, like, yeah. The Kaminoans even do that, right? They leverage their position of the army makers to get, like, representation well, in the Senate. Well, yeah, we see that. We see in the Bad Batch as well that, like, they fully expected that the Empire would just continue doing business with them because they had contracts, and Tarkin kind of used the loophole of, like, yeah, well, those contracts were with the Republic, and we're not them. Um... I guess Which um, you can argue if that like that that was kind of that's kind of a dumb loophole, but I mean I guess it works. Well, again, like I it's guess. a loophole that, that, that you know it's not designed to be clever. It's just meant to be like a we can do this because we have the power. What are you going to do to stop us? Go, yeah. go to hell. I oh, yes, yeah. I, I I know it's just like you know it's ten years like created the clone army. Did it not go? Hmm. Are, are we sure about this, guys? Well, I mean, even again, um, like, even if they did think about it, like they probably were like, "Yeah, this will be hugely beneficial for us," even if they use this army to take over the galaxy, because they're going to keep coming back to us for the army. That's good. We mm. want that. Yeah, we don't care about the Jedi. We don't care about the, the Republic. We just care about like us doing well. Like we, we are shady business dudes. That's what. That's our whole shtick. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like yeah, how you have like the banking clan being like, "Yeah, I don't really care who wins the war." And conquers the galaxy because at the end of the day, whoever whichever side wins out is going to need the banks. So we'll, we're happy to supply for them. Yeah, it's like I mean, again, to take a real world example like the war in Ukraine. Like if you're a weapons supplier, if you're part of the military industrial complex, man, you just you don't, you don't care who's winning. You just want that war to go on as long as possible. Like, you don't, you don't, like I don't think I don't think like... Lockheed Martin and and Co give a shit about Ukraine or Russia. They just want to sell. Oh sell no, weapons. yeah, uh, no. Um... But I was just, I'm just sort of thinking, like, because like their corporation's shady. It's just like, do they not think, like, by working with the Republic, they they're not going to be able to, like, the Republic will allow them to sort of continue like doing business with like other contractors or like shady people? Why would? But again, why would they need to? If you've got like previously, they were they were scratching out. I mean, scratching out is a, a, a relative term, right? But like they were scratching out their things, presumably making small armies for independent warlords who had a fair bit of money but like nothing like a galactic government has oh, and, then, no, no. and then the republic turn up and like we have enough money to buy you if out they singly making, as a contract if they consistently making armies as big as the clone army i'd have a lot of questions on how they've remained quiet <laughs> yeah i don't well i mean i don't think oh. they would even be able to without the funding from the republic because like obviously cloning is probably going to oh, be an expensive yeah, venture. Well. yeah you need a lot of resources yeah. and it's probably quite labor intensive and all sorts of jazz oh yeah but like Oh yeah, I just, I know, I just feel like, I know at one point we did not think, okay, what if this whole contract with the Republic backfires horribly? Like we could end up like losing our business here. Right, but that's again, that's an execution issue. Like again, we, Chief and I have talked about this, where I said like the the you know in Battlefront, the original Battlefront two, there's the whole uh, yeah, story of the yeah. Kaminoans having like a reserve clone order so they can launch a rebellion yeah. and try and fight their way out. I think something like that should have happened in the main canon where the Kaminoans did oh, yeah. have some kind of contingency. Oh, absolutely. They were that. just completely unprepared for the entirety of the Galactic Army to be turned on them. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, because OG you... Battlefront's boss. Um, anyway, um, yeah, and then you can even have point. that as a as one of the reasons why Palpatine has to get rid of the clones so quickly. And because you know, because there's thing like the clones are really effective, and so like if you can just seize the cloning facilities and essentially make them for zero cost because you've nationalized the industry, which they can do. Um, why why not carry on using the clones? And I guess the answer would be a combination of the breakdown of the inhibitor chips in the in the existing clones drives them to be unusably insane over time and dangerous. And the Kaminoans might have hidden a backup routine to try and pervert the army to, to, in case it was ever turned on them. And in which case, you can't trust the Kaminoans, and you don't and you don't know the cloning mm. technology well enough yourself to to take over that gap. Well, I so guess get rid of that's them. more like that's more of a problem. Like Bad Batch, and you yeah. know, like the new Disney kind of just not really handling the clones well at all post Clone Wars. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a really. it, it's, an, it's an execution issue, not an issue, not an issue with the yeah. chips as an idea. Because like. <laughs> The, the new canon basically just forgets the clones exist after the Clone Wars, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, 
I guess my final point is more like a rebuttal to like um the idea the notion of like if if the inhibitor chips weren't a part of the design for clones, then why doesn't Palpatine use droids instead? Because droids are actually like programmed to obey orders without question. My rebuttal to that is that um he, Palpatine wants to ultimately wants the Republic to win. Okay. This war. Yeah, correct. So like I'm not sure he wants to build I'm not so he that and the whole thing about the reason why they choose clones in the first place is because they're superior to droids. Yes. But like so, we went um, over, like you you would uh, you'd make up for that by like sheer dominating numbers, you know, sheer weight of numbers, and also you've got a thousand, you know, ten thousand Jedi on your side. And if I've established <laughs> if I've established the Empire and I have an army of droids, like we can still phase them out with stormtroopers over time. That's fine. But I mean, is there like if I'm thinking it'll be easier? that they're struggling to sort of find, consider that they're oh god, sorry, uh, consider that um, have they? Considered that um they like the whole reason they end up going with the clones anyway is because they can't muster up an army in time to go up against the Federation. Would that not be undermined if it turns out they actually they still had like contract or they still had like something well, like the Federation on, that would make it like droid armies? It's, it's the other way around, right? Of the writing reason we have the clone like the the writing reason for the clones being usable in time is that they've been hidden for ten years and they could pop up when they're necessary. But like honestly, you could have just rewritten those movies. Like if you wanted to, you could have rewritten those movies to be like, well, within Republic space, there are corporations or, or Republic control facilities for droid manufacture that aren't separatists, and we've we've been building them up in a while because Dooku's been saber rattling for a few months now or a few years now. So we've well, had this as a kind of backbone of contingency, and all we needed was the Senate sign off to make it legitimate. Even even with what we uh, what we do have in the actual canon, like I severely doubt there aren't other uh, droid building. Uh, like interests, you know, in the galaxy, other than the Techno Union Trade Federation, those those types. Like, there's going to be other uh, commercial entities that have yes. droid armies of some sort. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that like this wasn't as well thought of as a point. It was literally just one I was just thinking about as we were talking. So, yeah. Sorry, that, that was a really great one. Um. Uh. That's but like um. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh God, Christ. Uh. Come on, come on, come on. Game face do you think? Um, but um so yeah, okay, that actually to be honest, that does just answer really my point. Um, because I was going to go into like like the reason why they picked droids was that they were, uh, picked clones, sorry, was that they were superior to droids. Because like uh, Palpatine ultimately wants the Republic to win the war. And I assume yeah. he wouldn't he wouldn't want to pick like an eat like an army that's Either inferior or equal to the droid army, in case like because you know part of the Sith rule is that the apprentice will betray the master, and you know very much Dooku could very much just go like you know what fuck it, I'm just going to like invade Coruscant. Or not, obviously not that, but like like he could just take him like the separatists could just take over and like win the war. Sure, but I guess like if you're Palpatine and that happens, you're still the Sith master, so like it, you still win in that situation. Um, obviously, that's not the situation he wants because th that's yeah, clunkier yeah. and there are bigger problems. Well, and I just but don't like, think that that would happen even if we did go with the droid army. Like I just don't, yeah, I, I don't, don't see that happening. Um, the, because obviously, like Palpatine is ultimately controlling both sides, so I don't think there is any real real expectation he's going to lose the war, even if the other side, even if his own side is also droids. Um, and also, again, like in this hypothetical, the reason they pick the clones is because they don't have an army and the clones are ready to go. And from Palpatine's perspective, the reason he decided on a clone army as the appropriate... Well, in fact, he didn't, right? sifo did, and they co-opted it. <laughs> but then, like, the reason Palpatine's uh, yeah, okay with the that... Yeah, the clone was makes that a lot fuzzier. <laughs> yeah. But let's, let's say well, Palpatine actually, was like... the one who, who picked this, right? And so, like, you want... You feel Palpatine, there's two things you want. Like, you want better troops than the, than the enemy, uh, and yeah, you want to have them have the clones. clones. But... If you, if you can only have one of those two things, like either better soldiers or a kill order, you're going to go with the option that gives you the kill order, right? Because that's the entire plan. I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess that more addressed it. I was just... These were just more so like... like Because I, I want to reiterate, I'm not like against the... I, I'm very much in favour of the of um, the um, inhibitor chip. These are more just questions I had about them. As well as all the 66 in general. Um, okay. But like ultimately, like I think I'm ultimately with you guys on the inhibitor chips because the other option just just 
presents a lot of questions. Um, uh, not to say the inhibitor chips don't, but um, just less. But um, anyway, yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to, to ask. Just a few rapid fire questions, really. Um, uh, nice chatting. Um, uh, big fan of the. Uh, uh, well, uh, are you happy with the uh, discussion we've had? Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, of course. And of course, I got uh, to shoot the shit with a friend, if nothing else. Oh, well, thanks. Um, uh, uh, sorry if I'm a bit like all over the place. No, uh, no, uh, no I, like I don't. Like, I, I've no, never done a live stream before, so I'm a little like. Uh, <laughs> it can be. It can be nerve wracking. But don't worry yeah, about it's it. Totally cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I haven't really got any more questions, and you guys said that you had like other people to ask and all that. So I'm just going. Yeah, that's yeah, right, man. We, just, we'll, we'll catch you another time. Oh, yeah, good night, yeah. We'll, we'll get that SpongeBob movie watch party going in my server at some point. <laughs> 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 my eyes. <laughs> well, uh, well, um, isn't it the next? Isn't the next one? C strapped us all down to watch. Oh yeah, we're gonna Transformers. watch Transformers. That's <laughs> okay. Well, I've I'm leaving you guys film. for that. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm not, I'm not doing that one. It's so I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you then. Okay, I don't. I I'll see you. Man. Want to think right, about yeah, that take movie care. Right now. Uh, pleasure talking to you. Clonal's video was great. Thanks. Um, a big fan of that video. Uh, both of them. Uh, take care, man. Thanks. Yeah. As well. You have a good one. Bye. Um, what, so what we're going to do is, uh, only, well, I only, I only want to do like three more. Okay. So I, I know there are a few people in the, in the roster waiting, but we are not going to be able to get through them all. I, I apologize. Alrighty then. Apparently still, like, um, the comments think that Star Wars theory is the next guest. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. She's like, Hey man, the next person we have is uh Straker. Hello. How do you do? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Is that a use on Vong profile picture you have there? That's a uh, Heroes of Might and Magic three. Ah, yeah. wow! Uh, <laughs> you failure that shave. Well then. Uh, first off, I wanted to say thank you for your work as a neuroscientist. We need more people in the Wild West. Uh, <laughs> I'm a therapist who specializes in ASD, oh. so we're kind of yeah. in the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, no also, problem. lovely, lovely for videos. Doing interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> um, in in my opinion. I really think both no chips and yes chips are kind of contrived for one reason or another, as has been exhaustively covered. I'm going to chalk that up to the prequels just being fundamentally flawed in one reason oh, yeah. or another. Uh, oh, d oh, dude, like seriously, the video I'm working on right now, like, uh, I mean, Sheev knows this because I've, I've walked in Fosmos here like epically, but like the amount of stuff I've had to like go, George had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Star Wars fans are more in love with the concepts than the execution. <laughs> for, That's for why people like the Clone Wars. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I wanted to say before getting into the, my thoughts on why I clicked the link in the first place is, in terms of narrative, the prequels are a fall from grace story about Anakin. He loses himself throughout the story, just like the clones do. Uh, there's nuance i don't want to say there's nuance to anakin but but he does make an active choice he is not mind control he's a bad dude he kills kids right you get right um, right well you say that i mean those kids could have been terrible i mean one of them was reva so to be fair so yeah that's true i wish he <laughs> killed her but she probably would have just come back uh, so yeah she, to be fair, he tried it just didn't work <laughs> yeah uh even as a kid you know it's, it's the midichlorians that's why yeah. she survived the the clones having chips from a, a narrative perspective i think it just makes them dissimilar to anakin and his choice to fall from grace like the clones being actively groomed from a young age seems like more of a thematic relevancy you know uh that's that's uh what i think on in terms of just what they were going for and why they didn't mention it in the movie Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't. Again, uh, this is kind of similar to the the point I can't remember his name. The guy a while back I had as well, which was, um, I'm, I'm totally fine with with someone saying like, well, I don't like this concept because I think it should have, it would have been, um, you know, neater thematically to tie it back into Anakin right. specifically or or whatever. And that's totally cool. That's not a perspective I'm here to shit on. Um, I will just say that like, I don't think that's any better or worse as an idea than having the clones represent some other thematic aspect of like the decline and fall of good people to bad people because i think the the prequels in general like anakin obviously is the embodiment of that as our main protagonist but 
the entire structure of the prequels is about like how good things go bad in the various different ways they do like corruption and fear right. and 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 lust for power and all these different aspects and anakin embodies each of them in one person but they're in, they're individually showcased more simplistically in other you know in other places as well and that sort of was was my thoughts on it is i as i think both are interesting and they serve different stories and having both options i think could very easily fit into the lore and we would be able to explore those eu concepts of like the psychological internal struggle and and having that uh, emotional choice of not listening versus having a biochip removed um and and all of that stuff and uh, you know i think you could you could kind of just say the jedi are generals of course but they're also connected to a different branch of the government they're they're like their own thing and we know clones are different they have different capabilities and personalities they have different ranks so uh, to me you could you could have both those stories of you know the good boy clones with the chips and someone like Commander Cody, who never really had a personality anyways, um, actively choosing to side with Palpatine because he is a commander. He uh, is then going to be entrusted with that top secret CIA information about killing the president or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and, and the Senate wouldn't need to know about that because the Senate in like the US, for example, doesn't know what the military is doing exactly. And, you know, once you become a commander or a commando or whatever, your chip is removed, you gain the ability to activate the order yourself, as we see Commander Cody do uh, after Palpatine calls him personally. And, you know, you could even gain the information about Palpatine being a Sith Lord and calling him that. I don't know how you guys would feel about just why not both, you know? Well, I'd agree with you. I think you can have, I mean, I'd, I'd have approach it just slightly i mean this is just a personal preference i would write that slightly differently than having like chips removed when you become a commando but like i agree you can have both both yeah. stories and like the thing is i think they tried that right that's basically crosshair and bad batch where he's like right. no I, I had my ship Except reduced it was, removed it was ages ago bad in, in all ways and that show was not yeah. very good yeah they executed it poorly but i guess it's a neat idea right i mean the way i would have done it for example would have been like that depending on how committed you were to you know to that ideal the the degradation of your inhibitor chip will will you know as as the as the chips degrade from their being activated all the time some clones are going to like wake up to a certain extent and like feel really guilty and like what the hell did we do what the what the fuck did I just do right. and then some clones are like no it's totally cool of course we did that like the Jedi were traitors yeah and it's just that's, that's going to depend on what their thoughts were before the chip was activated and then they're all going to get laid off and become homeless people like we see in and Kenobi. In, yeah. in Kenobi, where they're in the, all in the show that shall not be named in the present. <laughs> um, Make me float. We all float down oh, here. Oh. But yeah, that's all I really, uh, that's what I wanted to say. I mean, I just, I think it's, there's a lot of people who are like, it needs to be this one way, or it needs to be this, like every clone needs to have the chip, or every clone needs to be in on Order 66. And I just don't see why that's necessary, personally. No, I, I think you I could agree. totally tell both stories in the same universe i, mean, I think you mean, yeah you'd have to you'd too. have to do some qualifications for, to make it work right. but yeah you can yeah i mean i mean to, I mean, to be fair that's what she and i i've been arguing right it's like one of the reasons we we defend the inhibitor chips as a concept is that so many people are like no it can't be the chips it just it doesn't make <laughs> right. sense i'm like so why why not there's nothing wrong with the, the story there's line. nothing wrong with the chips like you know i mean some people in the comments were, were talking about how it's like well the chips are really overpowered and, and Filoni loves to create really contrived, overpowered technology and just kind of insert yeah, them he, into things. He does. And, oh, and, so, I hadn't heard. and so, yeah, and so people, <laughs> people uh, are sort, we're sort of saying like, well, why can't you just put the chips in the Jedi? Wouldn't that be better? You have a Jedi army uh, that you can, you know, and oh. things like that. And it's, it's, that's when okay, it just no, becomes I'm, like i'm really glad know. you brought that up because yeah because now we can use that to address that <laughs> that's an argument that people have made people have a asked um like if this technology exists why can't it be implanted into like jedi or vader or whoever else um 
and the only answer we really have there is why do you think that that is possible? Because what, what what's right. established in the show is, you know, that, that it has to be like put into you at the earliest stages of development possible, like ingrained into your biological structure from infancy, like from before infancy, from like when you were a, a, a zygote in embryo. Yeah. Um, you cannot just like, there's nothing in the show that tells us that you can just take any random, like fully developed adult or like child or teen and just put a brain chip inside of them. Right, in fact, right. we are even shown in uh, season two when Palpatine has Cad Bane kidnap those, uh, those four sensitive children that like they have to go through very specific slave conditioning. Um, that's typically not even recommended for children that young and Palpatine's only doing it because he's desperate. If it was that he could just implant a chip in their brain, like he, I get, w wouldn't he not have just done that? He, he clearly doesn't know about the Geonosian worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and my assumption on that has always been there. There's a reason they're also clones and not just people they take off the street. Is I'm assuming the biochip is specifically made to interact with that set, that like cluster of DNA that they are using as a baseline. And he functions, you know, Django functions as a ho as a good host for a variety of reasons we're not privy to. I also make the assumption that even if you, you know, grabbed and kidnapped Mace Windu and, and took his genetic code and then made a bunch of little clones of, of, uh, of Sam Jackson, would they all be force sensitive or does the force oh, work in mysterious completely, ways and that's that a completely be. separate discussion because like the yeah. new canon doesn't seem to want to like explain how that's supposed to work yeah i have uh, an entire section of my video dedicated to how the force has been broken <laughs> i will i will be yeah the force is uh it's one of those things uh i think it's on the train to breaking probably since like kotor even though i love those games um the uh, the kind of like total handles it all right it's mostly the, the prequels where it all starts going wrong right well yeah the midichlorians the, i mean like um one of the big excuses with the sequels was well force healing was in the star wars video games uh, you know things things like that so it's like that's you know i don't know it, it's it, that's a whole other thing that has nothing to do with this um but yeah that's that's all i wanted to say so we can we can move on uh, actually one one more thing to, to, i would say for the 150 orders or whatever uh there's a very simple explanation as why the jedi would agree to uh, to the extremely stupid orders is the sheer uh sigma aura of palpatine <laughs> would kind of it would just they, you know the the beta jedi would half they'd be compelled to follow that you know oh yeah even just even the, if it harmed them just because he's such a he's such a chad he's just know? an alpha just like he's, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're in his office, they're going over the paperwork, and they're like, so we wanted to talk to you about this whole, like, kill the Jedi <laughs> order, and he just slams, like, some sunglasses on, and he's like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Tate walks in, gives him a LaCroix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God>. All right, <laughs> like, take care, guys. Yeah, right, yeah thanks for coming on. Um, I, I do want to address the um, the 150 contingencies at some point. If someone doesn't yeah. bring it up in the next few, then we're just going to have to end the stream by talking about that, and a few other arguments that haven't been made yet. Yeah. Um, but our next guest is Morden. So you are here. Oh, and you're using an actual uh, camera. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, here, hold on. There, there we go. go. <laughs> That's better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a really cool uh, image as well. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, that I made that on a. a, a um, was it? Oh, it like a Photoshop kind of thing. Anyways. Um, Two things, uh, pretty much. The first thing I wanted to address, and I've been waiting hours to address this, actually, was the whole um, Palpatine mind trick thing. If you watch Return of the Jedi, and I'm not sure if this was in the original or in the special edition, um, because before me, but um, after Vader chucks Palpatine down the tube, it cuts to a shot of the TIE fighters chasing the Millennium Falcon. And you can see the, the pilot in the TIE fighter is like shaking his head. Now, that could be any number of things, but it's been interpreted that Palpatine's death was like fogging him out of that, that, that 
he did have some kind of like to a degree influence on them because there is that shot and there's never been another explanation for you know why the you um, know, I mean I'd have to check the movie but like I don't yeah. obviously know what you, the thing is like actually um, in terms of uh, alternative explanations um, if we were to go to the EU route there is such a thing as uh, Jedi battle meditation which is what a lot of force oh, yeah. will employ during a battle to sort of like boost the cognitive uh, abilities of their of their of their troops to try to help yeah. them in battle in any ways that they can maybe that's yeah, what that was who knows yeah yeah bastila and uh in yeah. coder um i'd also say that even coder. if that like you know that one tie pilot shaking their head after palpatine dies is not nearly enough yeah i wouldn't something I wouldn't so conclude. drastically world-breaking as, as the idea that you can mind control galaxies of people and even if you know if george lucas was like no i, I put that in there specifically so that it, it would imply that he's like mind controlling everyone in the empire be like you're a you're a fucking asshole, aren't you? You suck yeah, at your George, job. George, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking. I no wonder Gary Kurtz left during this movie's production. <laughs> now, as far as the chip versus some kind of brainwashing or indoctrination, as much as I hate to admit it, um, the chip again makes far more sense, even though I find it to be narratively weaker as far as like story potential for what you could do. Um, because even in, and I know we're not, you know, I know it's dumb to apply real life to science fiction, but brainwashing is so incredibly difficult. I mean, even with people who've been in like cults for a decade, have grew up in them that, mm -hmm. it, they, it can be broken um, by, by you know, um, emotional connections, by that. And so you've got to imagine that, like, with someone like Rex or Cody, who spent three years fighting with Obi-Wan and Anakin through, I mean, there are some, like um, Jabim, if you've ever read the the story of, of the battle of, of Jabim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was some, that was like a hellhole fight. That was like their Vietnam almost. And it's like, if he was simply brainwashed, I, I, I think he would have broken through that. I mean, it, it's so, just, so you're arguing in favor of the chips here because yeah, like it makes a lot more yeah. sense if in that case, that Palpatine would rather have just a chip, you know, flip a switch and it causes them to, to override whatever personal feelings they have. Yeah, because they would have, like, they spent three years in the muck with these people. They're going to build, even if they're, even if they are, like, like a Manson family indoctrinated levels, they're going to develop feelings. They're going to have conflicted feelings to some degree. And as you've already pointed out in this, that puts the whole thing in jeopardy. Because even if, even if, let's say 10% of the clones, keep it small, 10 or even 5% of the clones, you know, had that change of heart that would destroy the whole point of the exercise. It has, it's an all or nothing yeah, gambit. Yeah. yeah it, it, it has to be to that extent. Now, I really wish that Filoni was a good enough writer to make it narratively satisfying because it's just the way it, the way it's been handled though afterwards it's like you could have had so many storylines where it's like, like when Jedi like Kanan or even Obi-Wan encounter these, these former clone things and confronting them and going, you know, uh, understandably having some anger and issues about you killed most of my fellow pet. They could, you know, be like, well, you know, we didn't have a choice and, no offense, but you were pretty willing to let us die because like the Jedi, another hit in the Jedi's morality, you know, column of issues is they witnessed these clones going out there, whether regardless of whether they thought they were slaves, whether they thought they were child. So, you know, that thing, it's still the Jedi watched so many of these clones be mowed down, killed in just such a grandiose um, degree that they should have had like some things about going to the chancellor and going, yeah, we're sick and tired of watching this like factory of human suffering go on. 
when you know that so that's another hit in the like against jedi like practice like they should have had far more of an issue going we've watched like probably again i was just gonna say like millions that may be hyperbolic i don't uh, you know but it's like that's another hit in their you know thing about you know the jedi code and morality it's like should have been like a lot sooner going back to him saying, we got to change course. We got to do something else. Cause these people are getting, you know, they're lambs to the slaughter essentially. And you're using them as lambs. And we're not, we're not comfortable leading the lambs into the slaughter. Um, now, when you, when, when you were talking about with these, um, with the Jedi, with all these orders stuck in the heads of the clones, the only justification I can think of is the arrogance of the Jedi. Like, even if they saw Order 66 and Palpatine was like, it's in case, you know, rogue Jedi like Dooku or Krell or Barriss Offee or like in case of things like that, I think the Jedi would kind of go along with it because they would think, yeah, because at this well, point, it, it, it's established that one of their biggest weaknesses or biggest flaws was their arrogance, overconfidence. They would think. Sure, okay, but the, the, the thing um... is, the thing is, I don't think you can argue that the parameters of Order sixty six, as the Jedi would have understood it if they were looking at this list of contingencies, is that it only applies to rogue Jedi and not the entirety of the order. Because in order for the clones to carry out this order the way Palpatine wants them to, they have to know about it with the understanding of it's it's meant for every Jedi. Uh, when the order is given, all the Jedi must die. So if the clones know about it, then the Jedi have to know that that's the, the, like those are the logistics of the order too. There's no well, way you can have one or the other. If you're a Jedi, if you're the Jedi and you're like, okay, so you want a contingency against rogue Jedi, can you not have an arrest? Wouldn't you not be argue that it should be an arrest order rather than a kill, like a straight up kill? That's true, um, but you got. But I would also say that they're working within that political system during a time of war, where okay, then, then step out of it, then just then just leave it. Yeah. If, it if, if it's if it's threatening your very existence, then just leave that. Structure. The thing I mean, is that, like, other... yeah, people people keep saying that, but like the Jedi can recuse themselves. Like I don't see why they wouldn't if they if it, if if the the stakes are high enough that like we our entire order could be fucking wiped out. We don't want that. We've been around for 25,000 years. We're not going to stop now. But I mean, like, even Mace Windu in Revenge of the Sith came around to, he's too dangerous to be left alive. So I think they could have, like, I think yeah, Palpatine... For, for, for a Sith Lord, for, like, the Sith Lord is organized like a galactic-scale conflict yeah, where trillions of That's control of the Senate and the courts. And again, that's True. not presented as a good thing. That's presented as Mace falling off the deep end. That's like that's one of the things that tips Anakin's decision making is that Mace is pulling exactly what Palpatine pulled at the start of the movie with Dooku mm -hmm. of he's too dangerous to be left alive. It reinforces Palpatine's narrative of that you know the Jedi and the Sith are exactly the same. Yep. Um, I, I yeah, I can understand that. I also think that a bit of when it comes to the Jedi ego, I would think that in their mindset, as much as yes, they would you know. Uh, obviously object to uh, 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 a Jedi killing order, they would probably think, well, they would, I, I don't think they would think of it as a Jedi wiping out order because in their minds, they'd but probably that's think what it we is. can, we, no, no, but in their, in their arrogance, they would probably think we can handle Well, hang on. It. So in, in their, well, in, in, hang on, they, in their arrogance, they think a thousand or 10,000 Jedi can take on 200 million plus clones. I don't believe you. Well, but, well, well no, I but I don't. Are, I, even if there are only 3 million clones, like 10,000 Jedi versus 3 million clones, who do the Jedi think is winning that? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I mean, Jedi, like, like, this is this is just defaulting to the the Jedi are stupid argument, and I'm like, no, this is like that is not well, that is a hand wave. I also just don't like it, it, stupidity and arrogance are the same kind of thing when you when you want to argue um, in terms of like what a character is is like characterized to do. So like for example, a lot of the criticisms that I've heard for like Andor can be explained away with, well, you know, the Empire are arrogant because they are. That's just consistent with the OT. There, there's no getting around that because they are. The Jedi are arrogant too. But in certain ways that, like, you cannot use to justify these these decisions that they would have to be making in order to allow the contingencies to exist. Yeah, and uh, to take the Andrew example further, right? Just in case anyone misinterprets what we've just what she've just said there, 
the arrogance of the empire is a, is a structural thing. It's a systemic thing. Like most of the empire is comprised of competent people who are good at their jobs. But the nature of being an oppressive hierarchy is that you're going to have like bullies and halfwits in the lower ends or, or farmed out to the edges. And they're weak points that you can target, like the like the commander on the Aldani garrison. Yep. Um, and it's or a very specific kind of arrogance. Yeah, exactly. Um, similarly to the Jedi, like if the Jedi are arrogant in the ways the prequels have presented, you know, like they 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 overestimate their abilities to to anticipate what the Sith are going to do, or they over uh, you know overestimate their own abilities in straight up fights. That's consistent. But if but if someone goes, the Jedi Order is so arrogant, they think they can single handedly take on the entire galactic army of the Republic <laughs> and win. <laughs> I just don't believe you. I'm sorry. With only ten thousand soldiers at your uh, like behind you, yeah. Well, I like I wasn't like basically what I'm saying. I don't think the Jedi envisioned that Order sixty six would come down in quite that. Like even if they saw it as the potential danger, I don't think in their minds they would think oh he's going to do it when, when we're in the middle of fighting the separatists they'd be like you just you've just been told by dooku that the sith lord controls the senate and even if you even if you don't necessarily believe him and you just think but but you at least think that's a possibility because we're shown that they do think that that's a possibility windu is like we need to keep a closer eye on the senate and then by revenge of the sith they're like mm, actually this palpatine guy is really dodgy something's <laughs> not right there at that oh point, no! You're, I, like, I, I, you're not you're not sticking around in, in an army that has a kill order on you when you think that army is ultimately controlled by a man who wants you dead. Yeah, like at that point, you're sending out a fucking order to all the Jedi to like just abandon whatever battle you're in and go home. <clears throat> well, I mean, it, it through that, I think I think that's a larger flaw in the prequels overall. Is I think even even removing the order issue, I think the Jedi should have realized much much sooner that Palpatine was either either was the Sith Lord or was just as much of, of, of an issue there because, I mean, like you said, Tyrannus, I mean, yeah, it, whether they believe Tyrannus or not, it begins to make sense where Palpatine is pushing more and more for war, not, not interested in peace at all, not interested in any kind well, of diplomacy. Interestingly, this is actually one of the examples where like your arrogance comment can actually be used to justify things pretty well. So one of the reasons they don't suspect Palpatine for ages is that like they routinely like Yoda and Windu and the High Council regularly sit in a room with this man and they don't sense that he's a Sith Lord. And they're like, well, we would definitely sense a, a Dark Lord of the Sith if we weren't sitting in the fucking room with them. So because they overestimate their abilities, they just discount uh, Palpatine until later in the war where they're like, okay, He's acting really weirdly, actually, and like if he's not, you know, he's not the Sith Lord, but he's definitely like influenced by the Sith Lord, or something weird is going on there that we need to keep a track on. Um, but the problem is like realization comes too late, and it's too uncertain for them to do anything about it until until the last moment, and by that point, it is just too late. Um, well, yeah, and I think that that's that's still kind of it's it's the way I, the way i would explain the jedi's arrogance with relation to the order if if they did know about the order and and that is kind of similar to real world things like how in like 1939 america was like oh this this hitler guy he's you know yeah he's he's you know starting stuff over in europe they're having a bit of problems but he's no threat to us he's no you know, we can hand like there's been there's been numerous instances throughout history of well, people I don't, I don't who have be, been. I don't want to be that guy, but unfortunately, that's not the reason the U.S. stayed out of the war and for ages. Like the, a large part of it was a good portion of the people in power in America agreed with Hitler to an alarmingly to an alarming extent. Like the largest Nazi party outside of Germany was the American Nazi Party which was directly affiliated oh. and run by a, a Nazi official. But I don't want to get into, like, this is not a World War II discussion where I start pointing fingers at America as being oh. uniquely evil, because that's just not the case, right? Britain had its own oh, no. issues, France had its own issues. The simple fact is, though, that, like, that is not a good historical argument to be using if you... Like, that is not the example I would be picking if you want to use an example of, like, oh, sometimes countries can just arrogantly assume that other people are handle handleable, especially when that's a, an imbalanced example because the U.S. is a massive, continent-sized superpower and therefore much better equipped to handle itself against another country than, say, a 10,000-strong order of Jedi against an entire galactic republic. Well, yeah, and it, well, it just kind of, I, I was just saying, like, there has been plenty of such times in throughout history where it has been that scenario where 
a, a, a threat is ignored because you are so confident in your abilities and that, that you go, we'll find a way like, yeah, they might attack us, but we'll figure it out. We'll, you know, we'll make sure it's on our terms. We'll do it. It's kind of like, I don't know if you, uh, if you guys watch Star Trek at all, but it's actually yep. the, the explanation for the Romulans that they give on the show is that when the Romulans first appeared, the Federation were like, they're just a gang of thugs. It's literally, there's an, ep I, I'd have to find the episode. Um, it's, um, I think it's in Deep Space Nine where they say that. The, oh no, it was in the movie. It was in um, Insurrection, the one about the the. Well, I, hang on. I don't want to get too bogged down into in the specifics of Star Trek because a I don't know the example well enough, but also b yeah. that could just but be another they, example of bad writing. I, you can't just point to like another yeah. example of this of this trope. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it exists elsewhere, therefore it this justifies it. No, that could also be bad. Yeah. I have no idea. No, no, I, I, I don't know the media. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to use it to justify. I'm just trying to use it to kind of explain what I like kind of use as an example of my thinking of where uh, 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 um, a very powerful force ignores a, a, a growing threat or ignores the possibility of a threat because they honestly think even if they do attack us, we got this, we can hit handle this. I and I kind believe. of, I, I just and, don't and believe that, that they're, they're arrogant enough to think that. Yeah, I mean, because again, like you're, you're you're referring to examples like of large empires ignoring internal growing or external growing threats. Like they have the hegemony there, right? That's why they're arrogant in that way. The Jedi do not have the hegemony here. There are ten thousand people with limited influence in the Senate and the and the galaxy. Like literally, the first conversation we see of them having with the Chancellor in Attack of the Clones is Windu being like, "We do not have the strength to police the galaxy. We we don't have the numbers to do that. Yeah. If it comes to war, we can't do that." So not only do they not believe it, we're explicitly told they don't believe that. Well, maybe they could have. I mean, I guess you could have kind of fixed it with if they if Palpatine like, I mean, this is all speculation because Filoni and Lucas originally never bothered to give us, you know, the scene where the Jedi see these orders and show their reaction to that. But I mean, Palpatine you know, it, it, at least in the early stages of the war, which is when we would assume the Jedi would see these orders. It would have been kind of like a debriefing, kind of end of attack of the clones. Here's the clone army. Here's the info on them. They go to Camino, like, like learn some stuff. Uh, Palpatine could have been like, well, this order is in there because the Senate are, ner you know, are nervous because we've had like Dooku you know, break with your order. He became a Sith Lord. He raised up this army. Right, so why would you accept that? Why? Why is it like again? Like that doesn't explain why the Jedi would be okay with that. Like if, Palp like, if Palpatine comes along and goes, the Senate really want this for X, Y, Z reasons. The Jedi aren't going to just go, oh, okay. They're like, no, actually, we're not comfortable with the Senate having a kill order on us. We literally just got told that there's a Sith Lord in there. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I I guess it would be kind of like it. Like the only I'm not. I'm not like, I'm just saying, maybe he could have, like, made it sound like, you know, it's there for, it's there kind of not, like, not entirely for show, but just like, look, like, the Senate wanted this, but I'm only going to use this in the most extreme, because at that no, point, I, they wouldn't know. I still don't think the Jedi would accept that. I just don't think that would like you're talking about ways George could have fixed it. And I'm like, honestly, I'm going to give credit to George on this one. The only way that you can have this work is if the Jedi don't know about it. And that's basically what he presented that the Jedi didn't know about it. Now, you can argue the logistics of like the ins and outs of exactly how that comes to pass, but that is what we are presented. And I'm going to give George the credit here. That is the only solution that makes sense because otherwise the Jedi are not getting involved in this war. Yeah. Yeah, it just I'm I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it work in my head because there's no narrative a way I because there's no way that I want to avoid us going be... around and I want us to avoid going around in circles. I will say though, if yeah. you're interested in a historical analogy that is much more similar to this, you should look into the dissolution of the Knights Templar in the 14th century because that is much more like a small order of disproportionately power wielding people were essentially rounded up and executed overnight because they gravely miscalculated their 
their standing in power wise compared to rivals who wanted them dead. Um, that's a much better example. But again, in that example, the only reason that, that they got killed like that was because the, the the kill order was done secretly and then unleashed all at once. In fact, I wouldn't even be that surprised if that's where Lucas got the idea from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like a Three Musketeers type situation. Uh, out of I mean, yeah. novel. So like a re yeah. real life, not fiction, but yes. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I admit. But yeah, it, all in all, I think, like I said, I think the inhibitor chips is the only was the only way to go because the idea of brainwashing is just too unreliable in general, but it limits the narrative, the narrative possibilities. You could do so much more narratively with brainwashing than you could with the inhibitor chips because you'd have a much better, well, you'd have a much better argument between the, like, again, if you have those situations where Kanan or Obi-Wan encounter former, um uh um clones it'd be a much thing you know the jedi would have a much stronger argument to be mad about because they're like you you chose to kill us as opposed to you had know, like realistically I feel like, I feel like the like you have something in your brain that could turn you into a killer that might stab me in the back at any moment is just as much reason to distrust them as you were raised to hate us well and i also no, no, I, I also i mean this is a personal thing but i find it more compelling that Kanan has every have as every emotional reason to hate Rex, but like rationally speaking, with the information he has, he knows he can't actually blame him for it. And so there's there's all that conflict in him about what to do with these feelings. Like I think that's a lot yeah. more interesting than just oh fuck you, you're evil, kill. Especially when is it Gregor or Wolf who then turns them in because Gregor's afraid that like, uh, that. Wolf, I think, does it. Okay, so yeah, so Wolf turns them in anyway because he's he's so scared of the Jedi's reactions to the things that the clones did that he's like, well, they're gonna fucking backstab us or something or something terrible or bring the Empire down on us. So we need to get out ahead of that. So he does do it anyway. So yeah, Kanan has every reason to be distrustful of clones in ways that are very nuanced and and carefully considered and and actually very interesting. I don't I don't buy this argument that like having the chips removes the nuances of these discussions at all. I, I I just I, I I it's just I guess then it would just come down to personal personal preference in this situation. I would just it, it, it to me it just seems more compelling though to have it be a thing of like that the clones were deceiving. Not no, I mean, I, and I would still wouldn't say they would qualify as evil because they would be brainwashed and indoctrinated, and they would be. You know, so you could still make an argument about free their free will in the decision a bit. It would just be lessened and it would create more of a gray area than you had a chip in your head that turned you into a Terminator. Uh, and that, so that's where I, I see the brainwashing, even though it's completely unfeasible, because like I said, brainwashing, even yep. in real life, it, 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 which I know we're not talking about real life, but is so such a delicate such a thing like even even like if so, for something like the manchurian candidate which was brought up earlier they have what's called a handler because that needs to be constantly reinforced that needs to be you like no matter how brainwashed or conditioned they are over time there's so many things that can weaken that so the chips are like uh, I would say, hey, hang on, hang on. So sorry to cut you off, but we, I, I am going to go ahead and have to wrap this up because you've uh, okay. you've gone over your time limit. Oh, awesome! Sorry about that. Um, but right. yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, it was great talking to you guys, even though we we disagreed on some stuff. I, you know, it was fun, fle you know, fleshing it out and that, and I appreciate that. Yeah, of yeah, course. And like, so like may, look into things like that nice temple thing. Because even if you even if you don't care about the dog is going forward, it's just interesting history. So like I always recommend looking into oh, stuff yeah. like that. Um, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like I've read I've read Three Musketeers and Dumas, I, you know, stories and stuff like that about with that is I think probably what was based off of that. It sounds like the Knights Templar kind of thing. Like he probably got I don't know if that occurred before no, the, or after. No, the Musketeers were a real force. But... The Musketeers were their own thing as well. But um, anyway, yeah, we're going to have to wrap this up so, to get things yeah. going because it's awesome. one o'clock in the morning here for me. Yeah, and I, oh, and we, I actually am not going to be able to take any more guests because um, there are oh. some closing things that need to be said um, and then I have to go take okay. care of some stuff. Sounds good. Thanks, care. guys. Please, niece. All right, night, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. I appreciate on. it. No problem. Um. Yeah, so just to round this out, like I think we need to talk a little bit more about the contingencies and just all the reasons why I don't think that's a good argument. 
Um, yeah, I agree. That's the one thing we really haven't covered so far. I, could, I mean, we've we've definitely talked extensively enough about the fact that the Jedi just would not accept that um, as a as a thing, and like, there's no way that they don't see it and know about it and understand what it is and what it means and all the all the parameters around it. You know, so there's that. There's that point. I don't think that the Senate would approve of that order either. Um, I mean, yeah, people like Padme and her delegation of 2,000 would not be not be chill with that. Like, Padme is dating a Jedi. I don't think she's cool with the idea that the Jedi could be gunned down by a <laughs> Chancellor. She doesn't trust at any moment. Yeah, the thing is that, like, like I understand that a lot of these different bills might even go through um, on the list, but, like, that doesn't mean every single... It's not an all-or-nothing thing. They're going to vote on each one of these contingencies, surely. It's not just, like... Um, you know, it's not like all the amendments in our constitution were just like thought up overnight. And, you know, they, they're going to be added and subtracted depending on like what the Senate believes is the best course of action. Yeah. So the, the, the question is like, because okay, in order to get this through, believably, you have to convince me that Palpatine not only has enough of a supermajority to pass all of this without having to compromise on any of it, um, but that he has such an iron grip of that majority that he, n no matter what he does or says or how problematic or red flaggy he's, the things he's raising are, they're never going to deviate their votes. And not only is that just not how it's presented at all in the prequels, but I just don't believe you. Like, there's a reason why, even after he becomes emperor, he has to keep the imperial senate around for at least for a little while, before, whilst he's consolidating power. Yes, yeah, to maintain he control them. over their territories. Yeah, they have bargaining power here. He has to he has to pay them off. He has to get them to do things. He has to like give them fat contracts or like bribe them in some way or appease people who have pr principles. Like, yeah, that's just something he has to do. That's the political reality he's faced with. Or at, at the very least, like what, what we see with Mon Mothma in the Senate is like you have to mire them with so much busy work that like they're never able to actually deal with you per particularly. They, they're so like bogged down with all sorts of different things that they have to deal with, you know? Okay, I just want to address this because people are pushing back on like, oh, well, he has emergency powers. I'm like, okay. And they're like, you don't, you don't understand emergency powers. No, I do actually. Like, let's, let's go over this. So. First of all, we have no idea what the extent of these emergency powers are. So let's just say it's, it's full on that Palpatine can just declare that this is how it's going to be. Let's let's run through the PR fallout of him doing that, right? Of just declaring like the mild mannered Chancellor who's staked his reputation as like a fatherly figure and his likability on being like, oh, he's a good, reasonable man of moral principles. He just wants what's best for everyone and he tries to compromise where he can. Like obviously that's bullshit, but that's the persona he's built up. And then he goes before the Senate and goes, I have unilaterally decided that we're going to have this order that kills all the Jedi at the push of a button. I I don't know. <laughs> I think you're going to provoke a significant outcry in the Senate. Like, even if you can legally ram that through, you've just created a hell of a lot of opposition to you. Like, Jesus Christ, you've you yeah, just like built up a The thing is that Palpatine resistance. kind of needs to be popular within the Senate for the, the ending of the Clone Wars to happen the way he wants it to. Yeah. And he's just but kind of like out the gate, problems. just completely fucked himself over. Yeah, you can't just go full dictator, like just straight out the gates. That is that is obviously going to get pushback from a Senate who are quite used to not having to deal with that. Like yeah. even just for the ones who are greedy little bastards, right? Who just want to line their own pockets. That's really hard if like the chancellor in charge is telling you what to do at all points. Like that's why they liked Valorum um, for as long as they did and tolerated him for as long as they did because he, he took bribes and was like prepared to like acquiesce to the, you know, and turn a blind eye to corruption and bribery. And it took a massive scandal to bring him down. Yep. Which, by the way, if that if if you think like ignoring Naboo is a scandal, what the hell do you think declaring the Jedi like immediately <laughs> like killable is going to be? Yeah, it turns out that the Senate still has enough power to vote you out, even if you have emergency powers. Like, I don't. Who do you think gave him the emergency powers? Yeah, they they could just revoke those emergency powers, presumably. Like, and the, also the issue that the delegation of two thousand have is that they are a minority in the Senate, and like, even though they want to remove the powers, like the majority of the Senate don't, and that's because he's popular. Because he doesn't, he didn't just straight up go dictator the second he got these powers. He did it yeah, slowly and systematically. Yeah, he has to do it incrementally. By the end of the war, he's the, the reason the delegation of 2000 start going public and in the deleted scene start planning the, re the rebellion is because by that point, he's, he's left the constitution in tatters by slowly and incrementally adding more and more amendments or taking out certain provisions on the basis that it's, you know, the war demands it. And he's slipped those in piecemeal by piecemeal because that's the only way to get the Senate to accept it. Like, if he just done the whole thing from the way off, then, like, no, they would never... Like, if he can do that, if he can just walk into the Senate and go, I can kill the Jedi, then you can just declare your emperor, yourself emperor right there and then. Like, at that yeah, point. Yeah, you don't even need to do... You don't even need to do the Clone Wars. Like, just use your army, kill the Jedi, and you're the big boss. Who's going to stop you? But yeah. it's a little more complicated than that in real life. Yeah.
it's, um, I, I just, I, I just, I mean, even even within the military, right? Like, there's going to be ambitious like moffs and generals and admirals who like might even like you know at this point, I imagine Yularen is quite faithful to the Republic. I don't know how well he'd take it if like the Chancellor just went full dictator. Yeah, like the reason that they accepted him as their dictator eventually is because they thought he was doing it out of their best interests and not just because it's what he wanted. Like, good luck maintaining the empire once you have it if everyone just fucking hates you. Yeah, like and also. But the context here, they're in the middle of the, of the beginning of a war where the Republic is already split between a separatist faction who, who think the Republic is bad and the Chancellor's like lot of the Republic. So if the Chancellor then comes out and goes, I am a dictator, just like Dooku always said I was, a bunch of those planets, like the delegation of 2000 might just like split off and join the separatists at that point. Well, fuck, I mean, screw Civil War, like the, the people that would remain in the Republic at that point would be so outnumbered by the people who were on the side of the separatists at that point that the separatists would just take over. And then Palpatine's yeah. fucked. Well, I mean, or at least Palpatine oh. then has to hide in the shadows while Dooku is the public face of rule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is not what he wants. And, and, so, and you can't get rid of the Jedi because that, that ship has sailed at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, like, the other, the other thing about the contingency is, like, people have brought up Order 65, which is, like, um, the, the order to either execute or at least detain uh, the Chancellor. And the thing is that, like, with that one... The people behind, like the people who are able to enact it are either a majority vote of the Senate or the um, Security Council. Um, the thing about Order 66 is that apparently the Chancellor just by himself can enact it without Senate or Security Council approval. Like, is yeah, that what we're saying? Apparently. Um, because at that point, like, there's still a huge power imbalance that's just not being addressed here. Why is the Chancellor allowed to just turn on a fucking hologram? and say a few words and suddenly the entire Jedi order is just gone overnight. That can't possibly fly. I don't think the Senate's okay with that or the Jedi or the security council or anyone in the Republic. Yeah, like I imagine yeah. Palpatine proposing that bill and just getting himself laughed out, like just, just laughed out of the Senate. Yeah. I mean, and, and then, you know, if you're the Jedi and you're like, so what is the power about? Yeah. What's what, what who, who decides to kill, to get rid of the chancellor? And they're like, well, it's either a full vote of the Senate, which is heavily in favor of Palpatine, and he basically controls, like, okay, uh, who else? <laughs> and they're like, well, the Security Council can do it. It's like, cool, who's on the Security Council? It's like, people that have been hand-picked by Palpatine, including Marsa Maida, the Deputy Chancellor, who's mm -hmm. also Speaker of the House, which, by the way, means he gets to control what votes come to the floor. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> so, like, that's, that's not, that's no bueno. Um, I think... One last thing I want to address about this whole contingency orders thing, because I see people in chat doing this. I'm like, well, you, you don't need chips to get people to do genocides. It's happening right now. And I'm like, yeah, not overnight it didn't. Like, <sighs> you, have to, you have to like convince systematically a population of people to view others as dehuman and bad over like decades. And in order to really get that, like 1945 Germany, like the Wehrmacht who are willing to go out, or the SS, Waffen and FS who, who are willing to go out and murder Jews and, and gypsies and, and homosexuals and all that lot. They didn't just wake up one day thinking that, right? They didn't just like spend one year of Hitler being like, they're the bad people. I mean, I they did, had, but... uh, well, you know, they had centuries of anti-Semitic like culture and, and, you know, homophobia and an entire world war and an economic fallout from that. Um, and a whole narrative of a lost cause. Like there's so much that went into why those people were willing to do what they were, did. And even then, like a lot of people were not willing to do it. It's one of the big problems they had. Um, it's actually really hard to get people to commit genocide en masse. Um, you'd be amazed at how many soldiers just disobey that order or find ways around it or like fuck off if you're not really careful about how you do it. Um, mm -hmm. The idea that you can just walk into power and just demand people to start genociding their neighbors and it just happens is, is I don't know, I don't, that's insane. I don't know why you think that. That's lunacy. Even when the Empire is fully in power, like you got to imagine there's going to be like stormtroopers. Um, like when they hear like, you know, a Moff or Lord Vader himself say, go wipe out this entire population, there are going to be stormtroopers who are like, no. Han, Bodhi Rook. Han, Bodhi, yeah, like, just just no. <laughs> um, lots, of, lots of things like that. I just, yeah, there's a, there's a level, of, and the thing is, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be a little fair. Whether you're arguing for or against the chips, I think this, this tendency to oversimplify things in media is just kind of universal, right? Like, it's, I'm not necessarily criticizing people doing that intrinsically. I just think that like when we're talking through things on this kind of very precise mechanical level, <laughs> we need to try and move beyond these kind of simplicities. <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> you card. That's because you're that's because you're Satan. Yep. Um 
But yeah, so that's the uh, that's those contingencies. Like, like that's apparently established in the in the Republic Commando novels. So that's something I would say is a tick against those books, unless unless like I'm missing context and it was somehow written in a way where that actually makes sense. Because from what from where I stand, it really doesn't. <laughs> I, there's the other thing here, which is like, if it is public, right, if these orders are public, and this is a thing you can do, um, the chance I can just turn on a hologram and kill everyone. And let's even say that the Jedi, for whatever reason, signed off on that. The Separatists never tried to make use of that. No Separatist general ever thought, hmm, if I fake a hologram, I can get the, the, these, je these um, clones to kill their Jedi general and win this battle. Yeah, like happens. you think... Because, by the way, like if that happened even once, then every time, it, like, then the next time the order's given, even if it is by Palpatine, you can have a boy cried wolf scenario where loads of the clones go, mm, no, it's a trick. Yeah, we you, you don't forget what happened on on Plimbus Nine uh, when, on when actually it was when it was General uh, Snarlin from the Separatist elite who who ordered that and, and made us think it was Palpatine. Like we're never making that mistake again. When it was General Evil Moral Morals, I don't know why they named their generals things like this. It's a bit of a giveaway. Someone said there are 150 orders. They didn't necessarily all come out come about at the start of the war. So you're not hearing us. Like th the thing is that the Senate would still have enough power to veto like the bill if they see, oh, this is an order where like you can just kill all the Jedi without even consulting us, apparently. No, sir. That's not happening. Yeah, and even if they don't legally have the power to veto it for whatever reason, the the public outcry and the immediate swapping of sides and the Jedi just being like, We are not signing on to this, that would happen. Yeah. Like you can't just drop incredibly authoritarian, dictatorial, genocidal orders onto a Senate when you're theoretically representing the morally good guys and expect no one to... <laughs> the names that I came up with, I'm sorry. I'm not a, I'm not a Star Wars writer. General Snarlis. General Snarlis. Snorlax he's actually, 3. He's actually the, um, the, the guy who oversees Grievous's doing, so he's actually like the big man in charge. Yeah. Big man they, on they, I just like how all the villains and on the separate side, all the generals have like really evil names. You just get that like, <laughs> are we the bad guys sketch from Mitchell and Webb? <laughs> like... Uh, it's like the Plinket bit where it's just like, oh, also on the ship are uh, Captain I'm a bad guy uh, and uh, Admiral I got a bone to pick. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who's this man? This, this, this is Captain Thomas Genocide, sir. I <laughs> beg your pardon? <laughs> um... What else is there to say though about the the chips that like hasn't been brought up by someone else yet? Uh, they're delicious with dip. True. Nice. People have said that they're people have just assumed that they're like uh, easy to scan. Um, I don't which, know why. I, mean, I addressed like that. that in the video. I don't. I don't know. They're not, they're organic, and like we've already gone over all the reasons why like we're willing to accept that. So I'm not taking arguments for that. Really. Let's let's, let's do an appeal to authority fallacy. I, as a neuroscientist, am telling you that that's reasonable. There you go. <laughs> Oh no, what is gospel? The very thing we swore to destroy. <laughs> oh no, order 67 time, kill all the jollies. Is, uh, but is there anything else? Because otherwise I'm going to have to go ahead and close this out. Uh, I don't think so. I... You wanted I to talk about there's... The, uh, the going ons of your video, right? Right, yeah, that's that's thing. That's that's a good point. Um, actually, sorry, just one last thing before I get to that, which is like the, I think the chips also help explain the breakdown, like you don't need them, but I think they help explain the breakdown of the clones and why you rapidly move to a non-clone force, but we've kind of covered that. Yeah, yeah. So yes, my video, my video. Well, everyone's been very patient, very, very good boys and waiting and girls waiting for it. So I wanted to give an update, which is I had a finished video on hyperspace back in October, like a couple of weeks after she first shouted me out in part, I part was it part one? Um, or yep. was it even Ahsoka? I can't, I can't even remember. Ahsoka and, and also part two of Clone Wars, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Still and not so one video, had, you lazy bastard. I, let, let me explain. So I had a 30-minute <laughs> video waiting to go on just the hyperspace stuff. But as I was about to put it out, I suddenly kind of like realized that I wasn't really satisfied with the scope of what it was talking about. Like the thing that was really bothering me that I really wanted to get at was just like one, this was just one small aspect of that. And I needed more time to kind of dive into it. So I have since then been working on a gargantuan, like at this point, it's going to be like four or five hours video where I treat Ahsoka as like a microcosm of everything that's gone wrong with like Disney Star Wars, but like also with the way in which large streaming companies like put out media, like all these sequels and all this crap that we're getting, like the Avatar, Spam, Remake, and all this kind of like diatribe of nonsense that we can pick out examples of endlessly. Like I'm going to use Ahsoka and all of its flaws and both in and out of universe, behind in and out of production to explain where it's all kind of gone wrong for media. So that's the video that's going to come out. And hyperspace is still in there. It's in my world building section, which is the, the first section after my intro. 
But we now have like world building, characterization, the behind the scenes production stuff, choreography, um, you know, production and and the way in which uh, the financial system, the, you know, the financial incentivization system that we have builds certain media. That's all going to be there. And I hope it's good. I've shown Sheev's portions of it. So Sheev, maybe your best as an outside party place to call, to talk about Stuck scores ass. and levels. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> um, so that is going to come out soonish. Um, this month is going to be tricky just because I have my PhD viva at the end of this month. So I will be Dr. Jolly, hopefully, at the end of the month. And I will be um, referring to him as Dr. Jolly in the rest of our streams going forward. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Um, <laughs> but... I am hoping to have that video out, the big video out, by first week of April-ish, around then. I won't give a precise deadline just in case, but around then. I'm also going to try and take uh, a few of the very small kind of five-minute, ten-minute sections that I couldn't fit in the main video that I wanted to talk about and make them into their own little videos that I'm going to try and release in between then. So I have one on the lightsaber stab for Sabine and how actually that is defensible. Um, and actually, is is not a criticism we should be making of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have like, a little... Yeah, and a lot of two minute. I have like a little two minute video on the Talzin sword, which is just a little meme. Um, and I might put together a little five minute thing about whether you can use, um, you know, using Violet and the Incredibles and her powers to talk about whether you can use thematic stuff outside of a universe to talk about, th you know, to explain things in the universe. Um, which, yeah, that, that might also be coming. But yeah, big video on the way. Thank you, everyone, for being very patient with me. I understand you've been waiting a while. So thank you very much for that. I yep. really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's happening. I told you guys, like he's he's got something cooking. It's just it's it's developed a lot over the last few months. Okay. Um, oh, you're waiting, waiting for an answer there. Like the chat's gonna go. Okay. Yeah, I was waiting for. Did you not hear them? They all collectively said what? it into their microphones. Did, did, you not, did you not hear those voices, Jolly? I, do you I not heard those voices? Do you, do you not <laughs> hear the voices? I do, but um, I just, they're just the ones in my head that I normally ignore. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go now because I'm gonna go see Dune. Um, hopefully, it'll go be and see the worm movie. Not horrifically awful. Um, I will, actually, I'll be looking forward to tell you, telling me what you think of it because I I'm yeah. gonna go see it next week. But um, I'll yes, watch it now. thank you very much, everyone, and uh, I hope you found this interesting. Um, I did have, certainly. I, I'm yeah, not just saying I, I that because so. it's my stream. You know, I think it was productive. But yeah, thanks very much, everyone. Have a good night, and uh, we will see you some other point. Toodaloo.